waiting for. Welcome everybody! It's the final round! Twenty twenty four FIDE candidates. Let's go. Although oh my God. there is some chance that time. we'll see you again tomorrow and there will be more. <laughs> little, little <laughs> what chance. a time to be alive, huh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh boy. Sorry we made you wait, guys. We were hump we were we were pumped up and, and hyped as well. New word, humped. We, we were humped up for this. We were chuffed for this. We were hyped Dude's and pumped. So hyped. Um, so pumped. But, uh, yeah, you know, we just had to send some little tweets and this and that. I was just sitting here singing welcome to the dojo to myself, getting really pumped up. Does that ever happen to you before a chess game that you've got way too much energy, Kostya, and you're afraid yeah. of, like, moving the pieces too hard or hitting the clock too fast and you have to sort of bring it down a notch yeah before a big game i feel like i gotta like breathe and get into it get into the zone oh man what a, i honestly couldn't wait <laughs> i i had a little i i mean i usually don't have trouble sleeping but i had a little trouble sleeping just like i'm so excited yeah. <laughs> for tomorrow um because what a day i mean okay first of all thank the lord that the four leaders are playing each other. Yeah. I mean, if any of them were playing one of the four outsiders, it'd be a very different vibe today. Because mm -hmm. it's just weird when one player has everything to play for and the other doesn't. Yeah. Um, Which happens a lot so, in tournaments. You know, that's what matches avoid. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and usually tournaments do not have this kind of setup we have now. It's really as if scripted, but obviously not. No, no, I think chess.com put a lot of money, you know, and FIDE into the script and, you know, they did a good yeah. job. Uh, well, yeah, hats off in that case. I mean, the whole Gukash storyline was a shock. Yeah. Um, Gukash has been the, yeah, sensation of the tournament. Um, I was talking to uh, a GM earlier, Miro. Grandmaster Moroshnichenko, yeah. who's been doing the St. Louis commentary. And I said, you know, like, I felt like Gukesh is playing the best chess out of anyone in the tournament, just from objective standpoint, like the best chess. Mm -hmm. And not just because he's leading. I would say that even if it was, like, equal, like if, if he had equal score to everyone else. Yeah. And I think Miro agreed. He agreed so quickly, I, it seemed like I would said something stupidly obvious. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 to me, it wasn't obvious. Like, I had to think about it a bit. Like, who's been playing, like, the best chess? Yeah. And I really feel like it was Gukesh. Even the game he lost to Faruja was kind of an accident. Yeah. Like, he was controlling that game. I mean, that's the thing about, like, the gap in, like, playing level is, like, some people have had moments where they got really lucky. He basically had a moment where he got really unlucky, you could say. Now, I don't, like, ascribe it to luck or whatever, but, I mean, he lost a full point in just, like, a couple seconds there you know yeah so okay we only have um three minutes so we gotta we gotta break down the situation then we need mm -hmm. to try to predict the opening because so for everyone watching gukesh is half a point ahead he's playing naka with black bobby and nepo are also half a point behind gukesh and they're playing each other okay so there's a couple scenarios here the simplest one is if gukesh wins then the tournament is over he wins the whole thing which is possible because naka is definitely going to be pressing very hard for a win today um, if Gukesh and Naka draw, and that gives either Fabi or Nepo the chance to catch one of them. So Fabi and Nepo are hoping for either a draw or a Naka win, because then they can win themselves, one of them, and mm -hmm. try to make the playoff. Yeah. So the big question everyone's been asking is like, what's going to happen on this Fabi Nepo board? Because it's kind of like a mutually assured destruction kind of thing. You know, if Fabi goes e4. He's going to be worried that Nepo is going to play Petrov against him, and then very hard to create winning chances. Yeah. So what do you think, David? Well, I think one thing is Fabi and Nepo don't need to watch the other board, right? Because if Gukesh yes. wins, it doesn't matter what they do. And on either um, other result, they need to win, and drawing is more or less pointless or, you know, yeah. 
So they don't need to do that thing where you're like checking how's the other board going. And if you see them doing it, it's just psychological weakness. They should really be honed in on their own board. That's what I want to see. I expect it from Fabi. I think he's got the huge psychological initiative. Um, and I expect him to bring some opening prep against the Petrov. Right. So, so you're expecting E4. Yeah, I don't think the Petrov is unpokable. Um, you know, we've seen several interesting games in the Petrov this tournament. Actually, it's not been the sort of death knell um, of chess that it has been at other times. And I think he's got, you know, he's got every initiative, you know. So I think he'll come into it confident with some prep. And I don't think Nepo has time to do something other than, oh, I got the, that opening wrong. I was D4. I was going to guess D4. No. I was going to say I felt like it's a D4 day from Bobby. Okay. Damn. Dang it. <laughs> okay. D4 day. Wow. Into the Nims. This makes sense. Because you're, well, with D4, it's like a bigger a bigger fight usually. Oh, and Nimzo. Going for, no, no Nimzo. Yeah. <laughs> no Nimzo. <laughs> yeah. Shoot. Yeah. Solid. Exchange Queen's Gambit. Fabi's been, Fabi played some good games in this recently. So I'm confident in him here as well. You want to guess, um, did you guess that Hikaru would play E4 or, or did you not guess that yet? That was someone in chat saying, does Gukesh play the Berlin? Yeah, I was thinking like either D4 or C4 from Naka. Okay. Uh, it looks like chat is saying he played the QGA. So sounds like it was D4, C4. Okay. Queen's Gambit. Cool, cool. So um, should Naka play E4 on move three? I think Naka knows this opening pretty well. Yeah, yeah, Naka has experience with QGA um, as uh, as black. Uh, E4 definitely is the most critical move. It's also the most concrete move. Mm -hmm. So if Naka believes Gukesh is well prepared, then he's he's not going to go for that. And yeah, indeed, he goes for uh, the classical knight f3, bishop c4, mm -hmm. take my pawn back. And uh, bishop e7 from Gukesh. Okay, so that's a bit unusual. Mm. Normally, what, right? a6 and then c5? A6 or c5, yeah, I think would be normal, especially a6. Uh, Gukesh obviously predicted this based on the speed. Yeah. Um. I, If I had to guess what Naka's intention is seeing this opening, I would guess his intention is to play something like an IQP. He probably has good feelings from the game with, um, from the game with Fabi, and just he'll want something like a little bit dynamic and difficult to play. I don't think he would DC five against Gukesh. I mean, it's the oldest player in the tournament against the youngest, I believe. So there's an angle where you go, oh, DC five trade queens against kids and grind them, but I don't know. Gukesh seems to have the best end games in this tournament so far. And definitely, I don't think that stands out as like a weakness for him to just sort of prolong the game and grind him down. Yeah. Um, I feel like we won't see a quick end game if I had to guess, but who knows? Uh, to me, this does feel like a very winnable game for Naka. Mm <laughs> hmm. Because he's got white, he's got the experience. You know, I was thinking about it, he's like twice the age of Gukesh. And I feel like he'll he should be able to navigate to some position where he's able to kind of outplay the kid. You know? Mm -hmm. Uh he's just got so much experience, it feels like he'll be able to create to generate chances. And sure. I think at some point the game is gonna get very sharp. And uh, so far Gukesh has performed very well <laughs> in most kinds of positions. Yeah. Um so it's kind of a toss-up, but but it feels like Naka will have his chances. Oh, look at this, Kostya. Yes. Faruja Vidit. Shame. No, why shame? I support this. Okay. I I I think that like Vidit uh, against Abbasov yesterday. I think it's very conscientious of them. 
to, to just all right just we'll put sensei's tournament. disagree but i'm with those in chat saying they should be fine for it i mean it's just it's just absolute Ugh. let's not talk about it today well on the other hand uh prague went for the king's indian so prague is making up for actually the one and only king's indian in the whole tournament if mm -hmm. i remember correctly so go yeah. prague go prague Go Prague. Okay, yeah, maybe they should take 3,500 euros from Bruges and Vidit and give it to Prague. And exactly. Just... Give Prague some money for not for being for being a great example to humanity. Yeah, and and Abbasov, he didn't go for some exchange Kings Indian. Mm -hmm. He's uh, he's definitely playing for advantage. Um. Wow, Nepo Fabi game is is sharp. So, okay, at first glance, I thought. QGD from Nepo was kind of uh, like a cynical choice almost. Mm -hmm. Like he's just gonna he's just gonna play solid stuff and and force Fabi to uh, to take all the risk. But uh, no, their position is oh, well, he went for one uh, of the sharpest Rogozins. Yeah, Muli Bravas, and and it's not even a full Rogozin because White didn't commit the knight to f3, which is usually supposed to be advantageous to White because the knight can still go to e2 and mm -hmm. support uh, the bishop on g3, knight on c3. So this is, uh, I mean, I'm, I feel like this is a very theoretical line. I could, um, I could pull up the book if, uh, if folks want. Mm -hmm. Well, I think on the three games that are going, the openings uh, are likely to still favor white. Normally around move 10 in a lot of games, I change the evaluation from, you know, slightly favoring white to equal. It's pretty typical that I favor white the first, you know, five moves or so and then somewhere around move six to twelve i feel like blacks equalized but i think all these openings are still reasonably promising for white oh yeah no it's gonna be it's gonna be fun so let's see h6 g5 bishop g3 it's 94 mm -hmm. queen c2 and then h5. Okay, so yeah, h5 is the main move in that position, so still tons of games. Mm -hmm. um, top game I see is a Giri Gukesh in 2022. It's an online game, but there are some couple of games in 2023. It's a Gukesh game? Back. The one that pops up for you? What's that? It's a Gukesh game, the game that pops up for you? Yeah, that's the top game because it's like Giri Gukesh. They're both like 2700, mm -hmm. and 2022 is fairly recent. Um. But there, there have been a handful of games from this position. Like Mamed Yarif has played the white side of this. You've got mm -hmm. Noterback on the black side. Um, it's like Hans plays this as white. Maksudlu. Mm -hmm. Spidler was white here against Dubov back in 2019. So this line, it feels like it's been around for a little while at least. And uh, let's see. Fabi here hasn't really spent a lot of time. So yeah, he goes F3, which is the main move. And now most games have gone knight takes g3, hg, which is very logical. Usually black takes this bishop. Um, and then looks like black has a big choice. Gukesh played bishop e6. There's also queen e7, uh, which looks like the maybe the most common move. Uh, but yeah, this is uh, definitely really, I feel like, kind of uh, tricky structure. Like there's a lot of... Uh, potential tactics and uh, I feel like it's also kind of like a fresh one like, like this is not a structure you learn in Soviet textbooks mm -hmm. this is new age stuff so lots of room yeah. for um, adventure here and action I uh, studied it in December but already forgot everything <laughs> for which color any color oh I see Oh, we met our follower goal on Twitch. Yay. We got to 30,000 followers. What a oh, day. Beautiful. Thank you, folks. Ooh. That took two and a half years <laughs> to get from 25 to 30. Thank you, MD Knight, for the donation. <laughs> All right, Bishop E6, right, a la Gukesh. Next goal. 40k who was the 30,000 I think it might have been Filetto. I mean that was the last one I saw mm -hmm. if someone else would like to make a claim speak now or forever mm -hmm. hold your, your peace 
Yay. All right. Um, yeah, so bishop e6, that was uh, what Gukesh played. And only five games in the base. Mm -hmm. um, got Amon Hamilton on the white side. Okay, Geary Castle Queen side. Mm -hmm. And by the way, this was an aim chess rapid game they played. It's part of the uh, Champions Chess Tour. So knight d7 was that game. Geary played a3. Bishop d6. e4. Knight b6. E5, bishop E7, F4. Sorry, you want me to play out the whole game? Oh, I don't know. I can stop whenever. Um, but Gukesh eventually won. Nice. But, That's uh, all I needed uh, to hear. <laughs> <laughs> so you're saying he out. won the candidates. Great. It's pretty sharp. Um, I know. I have no idea if he was winning the whole game, but he ended up winning. Uh, in the final position, he is down a queen and knight for a rook, but Geary resigned. So, To me, yeah. there's two different places Fabi could put the king, right? You could try and tuck it at b1 or at f2. Mm-hmm. Um, and there is a big question of white, what white's overall plan is. The pawn structure being weird, it's not so obvious. Um, I'd like a good square for my knight on g1. Not really seeing any. I yeah, think... let me um drop the cameras for everyone in the chats. If you guys want to follow the players, you can uh, check out Fide's uh, YouTube channel. They're streaming all the boards. I don't see anything promising for white to do here. Really? Castle's queen side and then e4? Mm hmm. But it looks like Nepo has won the opening battle in terms of prep. Because Fabi looks like he. I think he's familiar with the position, but it's not clear if he's familiar with like bishop e6 exactly. Mm -hmm. So he probably knows something about, he definitely knows something about this line, but because he played F3, I mean, all this stuff was the main line, but maybe yeah. he's not specifically remembering what he's supposed to do in this exact position. That's that's the feeling I get. Yeah, two minutes to play F3 is very little. That kind of shows most likely some knowledge versus no knowledge or clear knowledge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, guys, we have to do some things on the program other than just listening to Kostya's Ferruja <laughs> impression. Yeah, but you know, I I definitely don't want to Become, saturate it. You know, it's, you don't it's, want to just be a one-trick pony. We've got other things to do too. Yeah, and you know, he's not having the best tournament, so I don't exactly want to kick him when he's down. <laughs> your 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 impression he's is. Out. Is not a not kick. more than it's nice. I, I already uh, have. <laughs> <laughs> it's not more than you already did. <laughs> bishop bishop d3. d3. All right, so the f5 square. Well, you want to say the obvious or should I coast yeah. <laughs> um, Why don't you take it this time? <laughs> the f5 square is a little bit weak. And um, yeah. in general, when we lose our dark squared bishop, it would be logical for us to look if we might be able to make progress on the light squares. Um. So. Okay, should we check out the other game? Or should we evaluate this one? I'm trying to think of plans for white. Hmm. I assume black's king is going queenside because that's where they've got a lot of pawns.
Black's got the bishop pair. Nice, nice space throughout the board. Just wondering, what does white have? Well, I think for white, white you usually like play for some kind of central expansion. So um, either e4. with f4 or with e4. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, okay, f4 with the idea of knight f3 to e5 looks nice to me. If white played f4, as black, I would be scared of knight f3, actually. So, yeah, you, we'd probably see f4, g4. So I might play g4 to try and keep that knight under wraps. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, that's already an interesting thought. And then we could go knight e2, f5, knight f4. That's already some kind of a square. Yeah. Hmm, okay. That's a little bit interesting to me, this f4 idea. I think the big brain move mm -hmm. is, is for Fabi to start playing for a draw. <laughs> Try to get Jan to start, you know, pushing. <laughs> <laughs> and then look for his chance. Wow. I don't think he's thinking that. I think he's more thinking like, you know, how do I get a good position kind of thing, but... <laughs> The old school I approach would, to chess. I would, you know, it'd certainly be. Uh... Neko said something so interesting yesterday in the press conference. He was like, you know, they asked him about his position because he's playing black and he's also in a must win situation, which is super fascinating, by the way. Like, I don't remember the last time we had a mutual must win mm -hmm. um, in, in such a context like this because you also have knock in a must win. So you have like three players in a must win out of four, which is uh, very cool. And Nepo, because he's playing black, he said he has no options. <laughs> or he said he doesn't have many options, something like that. Um, which I didn't understand if it meant like, you know, it's up to Fabi to create all the risk in the position is what he was saying. Or if he is just saying like, he has one repertoire and he's sticking to it. <laughs> like, <laughs> he literally has no options. Like, Which would be just, really weird at that level too, right? Like, you know, I've played for uh, the world championship. I've been rated twenty-seven ninety-eight, but I only know one opening. So, you know, what am I gonna do? <laughs> well, I was thinking about it, and like, you know, before the tournament, you prepare a solid opening with black. You know, you prepare your main repertoire with white, but then you probably also prepare like a must-win with white kind of option. At least you think about it, and right. a must-win with black. But I don't Generally. know if you would prepare a situation where you're playing must win with black and your opponent also has to win. Because you would kind of assume like they're playing for a draw in that case or whatever. They're not playing for, for anything. Mm -hmm. um, so, so this kind of both must win situation is a weird one that personally I've never thought about like what uh, what I would do if I was if I was playing black in such a case. Yeah. I would just play good moves, ideally. <laughs> I don't think I overthink situations that much. Or, I don't, overthink seems judgmental. I don't think I think about the situations that much or vary how I play very much. Like, I just tend to play the game. Yeah. Um, but I think there would be moments where it gets tricky like hypothetically you know if we get some kind of equal end game and you can either make a draw or you can go into a situation where it's like i don't know 20 percent winning chance 80 percent losing chance mm -hmm. so normally i would imagine you make a draw in that case but with the tournament on the line okay i guess the question is at what percentage do you go for it mm -hmm. Because I was thinking, like, if it's 40% win, 40% win, 60% lose, you definitely go for it. Because, okay, you might lose, but whatever. Like, losing is the mm -hmm. same as a draw. But if it's 10% win, 90% lose, at a certain point, okay, you're just throwing the game. You're not really playing for a win. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. I don't think... Oh, I think, actually, I, I bet different players would handle this differently. I, I don't know what the exact percentage would be. It's also not like during the game you know the exact percentage. of You're always guesstimating anyways. Yeah. Hey, Ludwig. 
Um, I think even without any kind of tournament on the line, I have tended to go for it on a 20% chance of winning. I think that's Dang. tended to be my... <laughs> even if you feel like mo. you're more likely to lose? Yeah. Oof, that's rough. <laughs> yeah, I kind of okay, close so. my eyes and pray or something. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah, G4 is an interesting idea in these positions as well. J Radis, I was thinking of that one too. Um, and after G4, I expected that... Oh, I'm going to take back castles just to show the idea. So G4, the idea is the rook is... The rooks are lined up, right? So black's going to play H4, presumably, to save the pawn. And then I want to go knight E2 to G3 to F5. But here black could step out of the way, and the knight still doesn't really have a root. Um... So I thought that if I wanted to use the g4 idea, that the move order, if I wanted to use the g4 idea, J Radis, that I would use this move order of knight e2 early on here. And then if black leaves the rook situation, which they probably do because the rook's defending the pawn, right? If they play something like knight d7, then we could implement g4, h4, knight g3, and play that position. And that seemed playable to me. I've been thinking about it, and I think the permanent berserk mode may have been one of the things that limited the success of my of my own chess playing career back then. You think it limited? I think it may have like hurt me quite a bit. Um, I think there's a lot of, I think I think over pressing and and making too aggressive choices. Um, must have probably hurt me a bit because also very occasionally I've played uh, chess as if I didn't have like a nine to one need to win. Occasionally I've played as if like I could just let the position happen and if my opponent makes a mistake, try to win. But if they don't, just keep the position okay. I suspect that might be how the majority of people actually play, but only occasionally have I played that way. And when I did, I feel like my results were much better, which also mm -hmm. makes me think that maybe my normal way of playing was was costing me. Yeah, I mean, uh, I guess you don't want to be a madman. And it's also the thing about like remembering that your opponent is also going to make moves. So. Yeah. There are definitely many situations where the right approach is not to do anything dramatic. Yeah. At least just be patient um, for a little while. Yeah, I think just like many people, I was just forgetting that there's an opponent with this whole approach. You know, just yeah. assuming that if way. I got things complicated, I could outplay. Assuming it was on me to make things complicated. And that even if I did so at the detriment of my position, I could make up for it by playing well and... That makes sense to me. Um, so 97 from Nepo. Mm -hmm. And Fabi is again thinking. So yeah, definitely. I mean, Nepo could be out of book here at some point. He spent mm -hmm. some time, but uh, likely not. Okay, so here there's F4 and G4 come to mind as again. And specifically with F4... Can black even play g4 at this point? Or is this sort of a, a no-go right now? Right now it looks like a no-go. Okay. So if black can't play g4, then f4 becomes particularly interesting because we're kind of ensuring knight f3 and knight e5. And... Well, maybe f4 black wants bishop g4. Okay. And then let's say knight f3... Yeah. Maybe we take on mm -hmm. f3. Yeah. And queen e7 or gf gf? Ooh. Like queen e7, yeah. Argue that uh, black structure isn't worse. Mm -hmm. Ooh, white could go e4 though now, right? I mean, they've got... Got a lot of center. 
Huh. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what's happening here. Um, Me neither. I've never seen this pawn structure in my life. But I've got like a small inkling like white might be a little more pleasant in this position. Oh, we got um, Eugene here. Oh, nice. Well, let's, let's let let's, him in. Let's bring him in. Hey, guys. Hello, hello, Eugene. How are you? Good, good. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Yeah, what a... What a day, huh? Final rounds. Yeah, I haven't had a chance to look at the positions yet, so you'll have to give me an update while I'm bringing all my all my stuff up. Yeah, there's been some interesting stuff. Um, actually, we've mostly been looking at the Fabi Nepo game uh, for now. They've got a pretty interesting opening. Looks like Nepo has won the opening battle. He knows more. Um, mm -hmm. Naka Gukesh was uh, Queen's Gambit accepted. It was a weird one with some early bishop e7, right? Exactly. Yeah. 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 I don't and, understand that move. What he was trying to avoid end game or what? No idea. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we haven't looked at that one too much, just because it's it's still a pretty quiet position. It's still very much developing. Whereas the Fabi Nepo game, they they've kind of already set their battleground. Yeah. So to speak. Also, the, the Nepo Fabi is a pretty unusual structure, this Rogozin thing. So we immediately had some questions to try and figure out about, you know, what are the plans and right. how does the structure play and so forth. So we were immediately kind of thrust into it. Yeah. Oh, maybe Vidit or, or Ferusha might join some commentary since they're already, <laughs> already done. Oh, they're already done? They... Yeah, they finished. They got out of there. All right, so they've had <laughs> they, enough. They've been this. done for a while, I think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so let me see. What is the current position? Ah, with knight d7 in the five. My position is knight d7 was the last move. Okay, so this looks like a standard Ragozin. Black is thinking of castling queenside. Um, white is thinking of playing for e4. It's very double-edged for sure. No easy draw for any side. Mm -hmm. um, Fabi is white. Yeah, Fabi is yeah. white. Um, yeah, knight g2, king b1, e4, right? right? Some kind of plan. Mm -hmm. And black will just get the queen out and castle queen side. So knight g2, Hard to say. something like queen... E7 or F6 or A5. I mean, she could go anywhere, but I'll just put her somewhere. F6. Yeah, so we have to think about where is it best placed when E4 is played. Mm -hmm. Is it be best placed on B6 or on E7? Hard to say, right? Or E4. Yeah, yeah even knowing that Generally question, speaking, I had a position similar to this against Wesley So when he played this E5, F4 plan. Mm -hmm. mm. You were black. Yeah, so that's kind of one plan you have to be watch out for. Otherwise, you can kind of get run over if you don't have c5 in time. And then mm -hmm. f5 is a big threat there. But sometimes you allow this e5, f4, and then you play bishop g4, and it turns out that white is overextended. Mm -hmm. gotcha. right? yeah, I was thinking so that the this... queen might be okay on this square over here on g7. Mm -hmm. Yeah, after like e5, queen g7, can go, yeah, or well you can wait for e5 or go yeah. immediately there. I'm kind of looking indirectly through at the g-pawns if white ever tries to play f4. Yeah. I'm I'm ready to fight Here you have a tactical squares. problem with e takes d5, so you need king b8. Right. First. Yeah. So you don't have this e takes d5 with knight takes d5 tactic. So maybe king b8, e5, queen g7, f4, bishop g4. Something like that. So this gets like pretty interesting double-edged. The question is, is this good for white or bad to overextend your pawns? Because you don't have the bishop pair, and if the game opens up with, like, eventual c5, things could get bad with those knights. What does Hikaru say? These knights? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't know. Maybe. 
These knights. These Welcome knights. Welcome back, everyone. <laughs> the knight on e2 is not a very happy customer. No. That's clear. Like, in my experience, this is the kind of position that black can play for a win. Like, white usually overextends, and then some c5 happens. The game opens up, and then these knights are not happy. <laughs> yeah. All right. How about a, how about I just ask you about this question? I was thinking of maybe f4. Uh, the goal is to make the knight happy, right? So I'm trying to play knight f3 to e5. Yeah, I've seen that plan as well. Um, and then sometimes you even follow with like e4. Maybe. If you can. First, I want to see if I can um, get my knight to a square. Also, f5 is a serious threat, by the way. Yeah. So, right. so I guess... previously we thought, you know, g4 to stop the knight, but in this specific position, we just trap the piece, right? So f4, black doesn't mm -hmm. have a million options. So the question is, do I allow f5 and hide the bishop back? Mm -hmm. Would like knight f6 or knight b6? Mm -hmm. Or do I just play bishop g4 to use the tempo on the rook? Bishop g4... Yeah, feels like more logical because you're really behind with time. Yeah, and that was what we were looking at. And then we got this weird structure where we played bishop f3, gf3, queen e7, e4. No, 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 you never play bishop f3. Right, because this would be nice for white now, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That gives, yeah, up, yeah. gives who, up the who bishop played bishop f3? That must have been like a chat suggestion. I forget. Some, some idiot yeah, from yeah. chat suggested it, yeah. Yeah, weird. Yeah. <laughs> Um, on the other hand, like, how do you deal with this e4? You haven't castled yet. And then there's knight takes d5. Mm -hmm. Like, queen e7, king b1, castle, knight d5. Oops. Right. So we're not even ready to castle here because of this little tactico. Um, and queen e3 is not yet it because of rook e1. Rook e1. And it's done. So you're kind of looking at bishop takes c3, queen c3, castles queen side at this point, and it feels like white's better. Mm -mm. I don't know if white's better, but white did get to force black to give up a bishop pair. Maybe black will play f6. Mm -hmm. F6 now to hold. And say that, what's the big deal? Mm -hmm. mm, yeah. I don't see black being. Like, I don't think white is clearly better. I think it's still a game. Mm -hmm. I don't, like, yeah, knight on d7 can go to b6. Mm -hmm. King can go to b8. I can see knight get into c8, d6, and slowly get into e4 outpost. Right. Um, so he did go f4, um, but I just had a question, because we, wow. we might go down this path anyway, so we can keep analyzing. Yeah. But was bishop mm -hmm. c3 necessary? Like, maybe black could have started with... Uh, knight b6 or something yeah i don't want bishop c3 if i don't have to play it if you have to provoke me maybe mm -hmm. i'll play it okay so knight b6 uh, so now castle long is my plan sure. yeah although is it there's bishop f5 check take take and then maybe g5 pawn may get weak mm -hmm. yeah or i can even start with bishop right f5. or why even wait for black to castle why, yeah <laughs> yeah let's play bishop f5 right away <laughs> Your opponent's yeah, making yeah, you fancy maneuvers, so... You don't want to get caught with your uh, king in the middle of the board. No, not the here. If no. four happens, then you resign. So yeah. This should be interesting, because Nepo is still kind of, like, implying that he's in his book, based yeah. on his speed of play. Yeah, up to this move. Oh, I doubt he's in the book here after f4. Right, but up to knight d7, Kosti means he'd spent, like, two minutes on one move or something, so he was really... Looking like but besides ninety seven, you don't have any other moves. Like even if you are not sure, you have to play ninety seven and think later. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah, and after f four, this is a very serious decision. Like, how do you deal with this? At least I would say white has clear initiative at the moment, mm -hmm. and if black can safely castle queenside, he may be okay. Yeah, let's put it that way. So this f four idea is pretty interesting. I I thought that f6, bishop g6 check would probably be bad as well, getting the king a bit confused. Oh, yeah, yeah. You don't want to weaken your light squares, nor do you want to have the king with f7. Nor have king the... issues. Yeah. So we can sort of assume that's not great. Never going to happen. No. Yeah. 
Never going to happen. Okay, so Never super bad. Happen. Super bad. Super bad, yeah. Okay, so well, the G4, question is... G4, F5 is worse. So it's basically bishop G4 here. Um, there's really yeah, unless, the most logical move. Unless we can make knight B6. Yeah, I just think is knight B6 an option? Like F5, bishop D7, like extra provoking you mm -hmm. into playing for E4 and hoping I will castle, but... I don't believe in this. <laughs> so f5, right? Bishop d7 and e4 or some kind of yeah. Yeah, this feels like black is kind of really behind. Mm -hmm. Again, like unless there's something concrete I'm missing. Like maybe you can just take and take and queen c7 and, and yeah, maybe take on c3, Oops, take sorry. on e4, oh, uh, and just queen c7 and castle. Yeah, Nepo's thinking here. Knight b5. I think you should have ta taken on c3 to, okay. to be safe. But then I would have d5, maybe. But d5, then I just cast along. I don't care about d5. Okay, let's see. So queen c7, like, d5. Like just take, you cast yeah, along. And queen somewhere, I don't know where. You only have maybe. one square. C7 or F6. Maybe F6 would have been oh, better. Oh, sorry, previously. Okay. I was like, I'm sending your queen to B8 no, here. No, no, no. Yeah, you don't want to allow this D5, D6. <laughs> okay, you're doing this now. Yeah, I just want to castle now. If D5, I just trade. Mm, yeah, I don't want to trade queens. Uh, black is one move away from completely fine position, right? Yeah. Potentially. So I got to prevent that with queen A5. Yeah, but queen a5, I can even sack the a pawn. Okay. Perhaps. Just to get quick counterplay. Like maybe castle, king c7. Because mm -hmm. you're playing without a knight and rook a8 is coming. Yeah, I'm playing with very few pieces here. This feels like rook a8 is a serious threat and my pieces are coming in with tempi. Mm hmm. Yeah. Touche. Touche. My only tac move tactically to even keep playing is d5, but I don't really believe my position, so I'm going to give up instead of calculating. Yeah, like I don't have high hopes for this knight b6 plan because it's so slow. Mm -hmm. By the way, there is this uh, argument in chess. How much can you? is one pawn worth in the opening in terms of time? How many tempi? Mm -hmm. What do you think, Costa? This is from my Gambit's course. Every Gambit well, refuted. I've always heard the classic uh, pawn is worth 3 tempi rule. Yeah, I think that's incorrect. Here's what I would oh. say. A pawn is worth an average amount across different kinds of position. Closed, open, semi-open, mm -hmm. and flexible. Flexible, think something like Peart's or Modern where it's not yet closed or open, right? Like you go either way. Okay. So if a pawn on average is worth about three tempi, my feeling is in an open position, it's worth at most two tempi, sometimes only one, or sometimes literally none. It's just so important to play developing moves in an open position, right? Mm -hmm. um, so zero to two moves in an open position, maybe three moves in a semi-open position, and four plus in a closed position. Wow, four plus. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if I would, if it's such a simple classification. I think it, first of all, depends if it's a central pawn or not. And second of all, can your yeah. opponent castle in how many moves? So in this example right now, I guess we can call it semi open or closed. Uh, semi open. Black, right now. black needs how many? Two moves to castle, right? Mm hmm. Well, Two moves to castle and it's white's turn. Mm -hmm. uh, the action is on white to open up the game and just be as crazy as possible. Mm -hmm. So that's how I would think about it. If white gives up one pawn to uh, force black that one more tempo to stay behind, I'd say do it if there's a way. <laughs> Gritty Pons in chat says black and castle in one move here, guys. 
Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's game over. I mean, <laughs> and then resign five or some. Yeah, <laughs> he's he's joking. He's a good player. Um. Okay, I think there's something good for White here that's actually simpler than f5, e4, even though I understand off Tempe you want to open up the center. But we can also just try and make progress against Black's weaknesses. So just play knight f3 here. Exactly, tempo. You gain a tempo and they can't tempo. go queen c7 because g5 hangs. Right, and I developed a piece. So I'm just doing something basic. I'm developing a piece with the tempo. And that's why knight b6 feels wrong to me. And then you go g4, because... for example, I go knight e5. You play a queen move right. like queen c7 or e7 or something, I will play f5, bishop d7, maybe knight takes g4. It's not my only option, but just to show that I'm basically already a pawn up. Mm -hmm. um, just off of the time that I gained first black lost. Caruana is a happy customer. He's probably not at the board now. He's probably walking around. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he is. Okay. Yeah, that's how I would uh, feel. Like, if I'm white, I'm just walking around. I cannot well, remember a time in nice this entire moment. tournament, yeah. Eugene, where mm -hmm. when we asked Kostya, he didn't say that the player was walking around. Like, I have not heard of a single player <laughs> sitting at the board on their opponent's time yet in this entire tournament. And I'm surprised because I always thought that there were certain positions where it's really useful to, to think right. on your opponent's time. I think the only person who only sits at their board all the time is like Gukesh. Maybe yeah, let Vidit. Me Vidit maybe. Those well Vidit is done, so you can't check him, but Gukesh <laughs> yeah. probably sits at his board most of the time. <laughs> yeah, Gukesh, I usually see him there. Yeah. He's thinking right now. But it's a couple things, David. Number one, you know, walking slash stomping is a legal way uh to put pressure on your opponents in this stomping. <laughs> <laughs> Because it's you know the floor is a little creaky you know and just so you, you have to walk around. Number two, the snack situation is very good from what I've heard, right? So there's a lot of incentive to grab some, snacking. some snacks. Mm -hmm. um, and they have monitors anyway, like all over, so they can just. Uh... You know what Alakine lost like to do, guys? Uh, no, no. While his opponent is thinking, he would get up and go behind his opponent and look at the position from his opponent's point of view uh, nice. to get a better feel for his opponent. He's he's responsible for this. Yes. Because my opponents only do it to me when they have a better position. That's the only time they do it. <laughs> <laughs> and it's always just like, oh, come on, man. Like... You're better and like you have better habits than me because you're doing this Alakine thing. Like, okay, I get it. I get it. You're so good. I get it. <laughs> so responsible. So Jan needs a good advice here. Right? Because this F4 move with the idea of knight F3 coming looks surface unpleasant. Yeah, also if bishop G4, can I just play... Rook e1 on e4, like a crazy maniac. Mm -hmm. It's not not insane. Like if knight b6, my idea is e4. No, they got to move the queen here, right? Mm -hmm. They've got to yeah, start queen f6, castling. queen f6, and... Ah, but wait, queen f6, you can't castle because knight takes d5. Right. Mm. So e4. Mm-hmm. I got to win with white, right? I mean, this is how you, it, you do it. You got to go crazy. feels like you're about to win. Wait, yeah. but here can Black Castle? Is which, knight d5, which direction? There's queen d4. Okay, castle's queen side. Knight d5. Yeah. yeah, yeah queen queen so. d4. Oh my gosh, you're almost losing to queen c6. Oh, but white had, white had e5 though, so it's kind of... e5. But okay, my rook is pinned on e1, so e5 doesn't win yet. Queen g7. Ah, uh, true, true, true. Yeah. The game continues. I think white is still better somehow, mm -hmm. but it's not. It's not like winning on the spot, Stush. We've got a move. He played bishop g4, the move we expected. Oh. Yeah, we're predicting yeah. every move here, guys. Yeah. All right. Let's see. And Jan's away from the board. <laughs> Just Rook immediately gets up. <laughs> Rookie one is not Fabi's style, guys. Mm -hmm. Knight of three is more his style. Yeah. But rookie one is not totally crazy. Mm 
Yeah. No, Rookie Just, One's very concrete here. It does something. And Fabi's style has is reasonably diverse. He could do it. But what do you think about for a position to play for a win with Wei? This is a dream. Like, I would sign me up if I need to play for a win. Yeah, I really didn't know what to do until we came up with the F4 idea. And then I started thinking like, oh, I see some some potential. <laughs> Somebody's asking, if you're predicting every move, is that a good or a bad sign? <laughs> it just means we're being thorough. It means we're not engaging in long side conversations about, you know, shoes and jackets and stuff. So that's kind of good, at least, to me. Um, we could probably check out the Hikari game at some point. It's just that, um, yeah. yeah, that one, like, the opening is still very much developing. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I mean, I guess there's plenty to talk about, but yeah, this one definitely has like the more interesting structure. That's why we've been kind of focusing on it. Yeah, before I look at that game, let me look at Fabi's face and see if I have any tells. Okay. Yeah. So he's like pretty happy based on his body language. Um, pretty relaxed but has no idea what to play yet. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that means he's going to go into a deep thing. I predict at least like 10, 15 minutes. So he's still very open to knight f3, rookie one, or whatever else he comes up with. Yeah, it, I think he hasn't really made up his mind yet when bishop g4 happened. So this is like a sign that he's going to go into some deep thing here. I wonder Which could be bad. Sometimes you overthink. I wonder if bishop e2 is even a candidate move. Nepo is surprisingly calm. He like walked and drank some of his tea, whatever he has there. Mm -hmm. But maybe that's just kind of on the surface. He's probably very nervous. <laughs> yeah. All right, we can go now to Hikaru's game. Yeah. Let's do it. We're going to leave this as advantageous for white right now as our sort of human evaluation. Mm -hmm. Um you know it seems it seems promising. It seems like an actual opening advantage, perhaps. And we're gonna go over to Hikaru and Gukesh. First we're gonna recap the moves and then we'll get into what we think of them. So Bishop E7 was Gukesh's prep, and there Naka stopped and thought for a couple minutes before knight c3, but then Gukesh also thought a little bit before c5, so they may be out of any specific prep. I mean, they'll know the structures and the position, but they might already be out of, you know, move by move variations at this point here. Um, so A3 was played by Nakamura and somebody in chat said it was a novelty. Um, I mean, if, if black played CD4, ED4, you know, we could certainly transpose to theoretical positions pretty quickly with a pawn on A3. It doesn't, it's not out of place. Yeah, but keep in mind that c5 is usually played before bishop e7, and a3 is not that unusual move. Mm -hmm. So I don't think we're in the novel ter territory. There's most likely a transposition happening. Yeah. So castles, castles, a6, queen e2, b5, bishop a2. And this is typical for black in this opening. You know, the bishop on c8 is going to try and come out on b7. You know, the e6 pawn is not moving. It needs to be there to deal with d5, to deal with the bishop on c4. So black plays a6. Um, you know, here Naka could have gone for a d takes c5 kind of move somewhere around here if he wanted to, um, with or without But he's in a must win situation, right? Exactly. I was thinking that he was unlikely to try a d takes c5 line today. I thought he right. would prefer something with. I don't think he wants to decide everything with. An opening confrontation because if black is prepared and deals with it then you release the tension too fast but I also don't think he just wants something equal to grind forever because Gukesh's endgame has looked really good at this tournament so I think he wants something exactly like an IQP something with long with sort of medium term dynamism and possibilities to outplay 
By the way, is Gukesh, for people in the chat, they may know better, is he typically QGA player? I'm not aware. Gukesh plays a huge variety of things. A lot of Queen's Gambit declined. Um, okay, but this is a totally different type of structure. Yeah, QGA. and semi-slav and so on. But, but what he's getting here, it's not too far off. You know, when I played the Queen's Gambit Accepted for the first time, I got this kind of position, and as a semi-slav player, it made immediate sense to me. Because in the semi-slav, mm -hmm. at some point, you play D-takes C4 in a lot of right. lines. So, you know, and this A6, B5 is sort of the main plan there. He's thinking here, they're even on the clock. Um, in a lot of lines of the semi-slav with D-takes C4, if white... Black would have a pawn on c6, and if white doesn't play e4 before black plays c5, then black often feels pretty comfortable because they you can always answer e4 with cd4, and white never gets a full center rolling. So, uh, my yeah, instinct cd4 here is, is very committal, right? But, but so it's like we we keep the tension as black in this kind of position, yes. If white plays e4, we will take. Um, and meanwhile, bishop b7, knight d7, queen to b6, and uh, I think it's a very, very smooth position to play for black. Yeah, like you can play knight bd7 first, wait for e4, and then cd4. Mm -hmm. um, or bishop b7 first. Yeah, bishop b7 first as well, which is what I expect him to play. Is bishop b7. But, uh, by the way, bishop b7 allows dc5. Bishop takes c5, b4, bishop b2 with the tempo mm -hmm. gain. I'm not sure if that tempo is going to be a big deal or not. Bishop here, for example. Bishop here with the tempo gain. And yeah. then I can play for either bishop b2 or e4 right away. Maybe e4 right away is also uh, an aggressive approach. Mm -hmm. So in some ways, if I'm black, yeah. I don't want to give white all these options. Mm -hmm. So with knight maybe B knight bd7, knight bd7, you could always take on c5 with the knight. With the knight, so when b4 happens, I can jump to e4. Mm -hmm. And if white goes e4, you immediately hit it with bishop b7, e5, knight e4. And white grabs some space, but your pieces are dancing around it pretty well so far. Yeah, also I can play instead of bishop b7, queen d3, if I'm really looking for an endgame, then e5 loses its merit without the queens. Queen d3 against e4? Mm -hmm. Just to force some kind of an endgame. Yeah. Okay, reasonable. So dc5 doesn't feel like Hikaru wants to play with knight on d7. Okay, I see some merits to knight bd7 then. Um, in the move order here. So yeah, knight bd7, I can play rook d1 or e4. Mm -hmm. Yeah, guys, I was just listening to this stream about I I would think bishop b7, dc5 followed by e4 would be nice for white. dc5. Okay, sorry, bishop b7. Where did bishop b7 go? Okay, bishop b7, dc5. Often in these positions, black plays knight d7, but with the a pawn, you can't because of mm -hmm. b4. But in a lot of other, you know, semi slot positions, you just wait to capture it with the knight. Um, but here we can't, so we have to take with the bishop. e4 comes in, and then, yeah, I guess it gets a little dramatic, but let's say we play knight bd7 for black. Mm -hmm. So... If you want to play e5, you have to be sure that you're okay with bishop takes f3. Right. And I also have knight g4, you know, threatening a later bishop takes f3. I can start with bishop g5. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it just feels like uh, for white, the main problem is the dark square bishop. And if you can get it out actively, then and you get this e4, you always... Because black, I think, is very hard for them to play e5 successfully giving up mm -hmm. the d5 square, but we always have this e5, like, it's a very aggressive advance. So, I mean, it's sharp, but it feels like white can get an initiative like this really easily. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, this knight d7 you guys were mentioning, that sounds 
interesting. My instincts that tell me black has a, a way D5. to. My instincts tell me black has a way to equalize here. I know it's bishop g5 too. Hmm. Not so easy. I think white is still pressing and the rooks come into c1, d1. Queen does not have a clear square. e5 ideas. Feels like white has a pretty nice initiative. Typically, black gets much simpler equality than this in the QGAs. So somewhere black messed up. It Fair is. enough. All right. Well, so black has options in the main position. What, what, what about this B4 push? Is this a move? Where is that? In the main position that he's thinking of right now. Live game, B4. B4 for black, kicking the knight? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, because he can't go to E4. It would have to go to a4 probably to put pressure. But isn't the knight on a4 is kind of totally out of it? I don't know. I would include a b4, knight a4, and then feel very happy because it it feels like black lost their c5 break in a way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then I play bishop b7 and claim that maybe I get the e4 outpost and maybe I'll play knight bd7 and try to play a5. Mm hmm and claim that I'm playing against the bishop on c1. Yeah. I don't know. I kind it's of a like little this. unusual, but I think it's an idea. Yeah, yeah it's unusual. Yeah. It looks like an idea. Here's another idea from chat. Chat was asking, what about c4 from Gukesh? Could that be played to try and sideline the bishop on a2? That gives me the free hand to play e4. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And then once I get the bishop rerouted to b1 and get maybe bishop f4, rook a d1, bishop b1, uh, black is on the verge of central collapse there with some d5, e5 push. Yeah. With so many pieces on the board, this feels like not quite the aim of this opening. Now a3 feels yeah. like a good move. The center's too good, and a3 is now a good move because it's stopping b4. This idea of c4 does get played sometimes if white has messed around a little bit. But it gets played in the context of a position where black is kind of controlling e4. And it's hard for white to quickly play e4. Uh, not that white could never play e4, but normally you'd have b4 hanging over white's head, bishop b7, and you're sort of threatening with your majority faster than white is with theirs. So. Yeah. yeah, I don't think C4 is going to be on the board. CD4 feels like an option, though. What about CD4? CD4 right away? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's uh, you're trying to get into some kind of classic IQP. Mm -hmm. So ED is almost certain, unless Rook D1 he wants to insert. I don't right. quite know the point of Rook D1. Yeah. And now what? Bishop B7 or Knight B7? Yeah, let's say bishop b7. So how do you know your IQP classics? Why rook um, one Bishop b6? Bishop b6. Mm -hmm. Maybe knight c6 now. So I can say my instinct is this is going to be a tough one for black. I agree because knight on b8 does not come into c5 to d5. They've played uh, a6 b5, which tempo wise is a little bit expensive this early in the game. Yes. The bishop on a2 is making threats against e6, but we've played bishop b7 quickly. So we're going to have to, our options as black are going to be limited by defending e6 sacrifices. And um, yeah. If the knight goes to d7, it probably allows bishop takes e6. If the knight goes to c6, it blocks the bishop, but it can't go to b4 quickly. So it's going to hurt our control of d5 for a little bit. And, uh, you know, white's going to play something like bishop g5 and rook d1 and start threatening d5. By the way, I don't know if knight b7 is necessarily allowing bishop takes e6. I may have a trap for you there. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
So the idea is bishop e6, f e6, queen e6, rook f7, knight g5, right? Mm -hmm. So what if I do a little intermezzo? After bishop takes e6, I play bishop takes f3. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Oops. <laughs> you can miss this intermezzo. Yeah. And then uh, now it's lost. Yeah. Because then true. after rook f7, you don't gain, there's no knight g5. That's true. So let's play knight g5 first and just absolutely telegraph what we're about to do. Mm -hmm. Very concrete. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have to deal with this threat. It either crushes or it's stupid, but I think it's good here. At least there's no easy way to stop it because... Uh... <gasps> oh no, he took on d4. Ooh. Oh no, what? Are you a well, Gukesh not, fan? I mean, it's not so obvious that this position is going to be... I am a Gukesh fan. Great for white. Oh, that's why you said or no. Yeah. Because you don't like Black's position after CD. <laughs> I, I think CD must be wrong. And I liked Black's position before it and don't like Black's position after it. So to me, it's like, it's significant. It's not mm -hmm. just a tenth of a pawn or a matter of taste. I really, really don't like it. I feel like it's not so bad. Um, it's either, you know, directly losing or black is okay. Yeah. That's right, PB. Definitely an unusual way, just like knight g5 and say, what are you going to do? What do you play? After no, I said knight g5 is a very unusual idea, but it, hmm. may, it may just work. I've, I've seen it before. But well, PB about, Corporeal is uh, right. You'll be able to read Gukesh's evaluation on my on my face and in my voice today. That'll be a very, <laughs> very human eval bar. What about King H8 for black? Wow. Mm -hmm. Provoke and you sack on E6. <laughs> Jeez. Then I get two minor pieces for the rook and two pawns, which black should be happy, right? Oh, sorry, go uh, back one move also. Sorry, knight bd7. What happens on d5? Very standard idea. That's, yeah, much more annoying. Hmm. Yeah. This is very, this is like IQP 101. You learn <laughs> just d5 pushes in every position. I feel like we should try knight c6 for black because I feel like that's not that uh, crazy. Is this d5? Uh, yeah, I think if white gets this in, then that's good. Oh, and I think a lie might be right also. I know it's not like necessarily super relevant, folks, but a lie might be right also that after knight g5, king h8, the move knight takes f7 might be very strong. Mm. Rook f7, queen e6. Oh, the rook is semi-trapped? Well, yeah, I mean, it's attacked, and yeah, and if it goes to f8, queen e7, rook e8, queen d8, avoiding back rank mate. Two extra pawns in that position, at least. Right. Yeah, this should be an easier one. Um, but also d5 without knight g5 looks <laughs> pretty simple. Yeah, d5 is easy. So... Uh... So that's why, in my experience, they try to get that knight out before... The bishop comes to b7 yeah to keep the e6 guarded yeah uh, ah yeah, so yeah. In, in some ways bishop b7 may not be the autopilot move right you might play the move knight c6 in this position trying to say you're threatening knight d4 but oh eugene i just know this position's wrong for black there's no way but this is okay <laughs> based on my experience this is like the simple. good version of iqp meaning that Hikaru should be happy. Yeah. Very happy. Because sometimes white even plays pawn on a4, gives up b4 outpost, and still white is relatively happy with this knight b4 ideas. Whereas here, the pawn is on a3. Right. In other words, you could have black's pawn on b7, white's pawn on a4, and black already has knight c6. Right. That's like and very common IQP position. Like a standard, yeah. A standard. Like, you know, if you're a Slav player, position. David, you probably face this A4, A6, and then some similar. Yeah. But I do think concept. Black's fine in those positions. I don't think those are 
I think those are not threatening. I mean, they're playable. Exactly. You can, but, you can but, get a game. But White happily goes into those positions, meaning that yeah. if White is happy there where Black is fine, then here White should be extra happy. Yeah. So yeah, Naka is a little would... better, the question on the chat. I would say, objectively, I'm not 100% sure if he's better, but I feel like he's maybe practically better. Yeah. I think in this chances. What's yeah. that? Kosa? I don't really think it's that bad. Okay. Like this D5 idea now is very annoying with Knight on C6. Yeah, against Knight C6. Something has I, gone wrong. I would play Rook D1. Um, Oof. Maybe Bishop B7 allowing D5 and just like by some miracle hoping you can just trade and just move the queen out of the way. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe it's doable. Mm -hmm. Bishop B7. But like black is hanging on by by a thread in these lines. Right, you have to defend the bishop on e7 here. <clears throat> yeah, even here, by the way, sure. I did expect a much bigger clock advantage for Naka. Mm -hmm. They're quite <laughs> Naka's even. all about the clock. <laughs> Naka, every game yeah. he, uh, I don't know if you listen to his recaps he's like every game he's like remember guys there's no increment <laughs> in the first yeah. time control mm -hmm. yeah okay um chat wants us to back it up quite a bit which is very very reasonable um and explain why are we so certain that naka will take with e takes d4 i mean he's even been thinking for a while here right so the question becomes even more relevant we can explain why we're certain about it and then it'll be even funnier if we're wrong right um the main reason is it lets the bishop on c1 out. That's basically the, mm -hmm. the main, that's the number one reason. I don't think the position after knight takes d4 or rook d1 would be bad for white. It looks totally playable as well. But e takes d4 is a more aggressive option because it lets this bishop develop and because it plays for d4, d5. And I think that if white wants to show that Gukesh spent too much time on a6, b5, and didn't get that much out of it in this opening, then e takes d4 with the possibility of exploding the game is going to be more potent than knight d4, for example. Plus, Hikaru, even though he claimed that he barely read any classic chess books, mm -hmm. he should know that inclusion of a3, bishop a2 favors white versus a6, b5. Yeah. That's sort of like 101 fundamental knowledge that in all of the standard IQP positions, this a3 bishop a2 is almost always played, and a6 b5 is not automatic. Um, yeah. I think he knows that. Gukesh did not turn on the engine until he became a GM. That means he read books. He knows that as well. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Right, so I think they both know that after e d four, White has the this slightly better version versus the classic IQPs. White's got an uh, initiative. Yeah, I do think if he's thinking about anything, it's probably Rook d one, mm -hmm. um, which is thematic. Right. But you're gonna play e d four anyways, and you're not sure if the Rook wants to be on d one or on e one. Exactly. That's the only question I have. So to me, this rook d1 move is slightly bad for flexibility. It definitely doesn't gain a tempo, Lou, because you move the rook and then black gets to play a move too. And you didn't make a threat that keeps black from playing a move they might want to play, like knight to d7 or, you know, queen or to d6. Or bishop b7, queen any to move. Six. So, yeah. um, because even if they play bishop b7, you're not going to say, ha, rook takes d4, I got a tempo on you. You've just put... You know, you just spent two moves putting your rook on a weird square in the middle of the board, and you don't have e takes d4, d5 anymore, so black just moves the queen, which needed to be moved once in the opening anyway to develop, right? And then, yeah, you haven't won a tempo. You actually spent two tempi to make black do something they would have done anyway. This very this principle that I think is becoming more and more recognized in its importance is this idea of flexibility. So playing the moves you have to play, but saving your decisions for as much information as you can get from the opponent. So when we play e takes d4, Eugene says the rook might go to d1 and it might go to e1. And so that flexibility 
that black doesn't yet know where you've spent your time and what you've committed to changes their ability let's say for example to play bishop b7 where you can then say oh we're going rookie one and we're just going straight through the e-file yeah so naka did take with the pawn and yeah i don't really get how what the advantage was of rook d1 because whatever move gukesh plays white can go rook d1 there and mm -hmm. we'd basically get the same uh position yeah did gukesh just play b4 instantly oh, e4. instantly Ooh. so when he thought when he thought for 15 minutes and played this horrible looking c takes d4 move i mean it but may be the, it may be the wow. wrong move but he was but he was thinking right i mean he's a good player and he had some reflections so there might have been things he didn't like in knight bd7 or bishop b7 he understood that cd4 had some risk and he had a plan for what he was going to do with c takes d4 i was thinking he was going to go like knight c6 and then b4 to try to get the knight to b4 and ah, but there was d5 yeah. in termezzo maybe costa no i mean yeah it's free. super concrete but he but might still b4? play knight c6 costa right oh on a b yeah, that yeah might, maybe that's his idea that might still be the idea it's very hmm. concrete bishop he's like b4. inventing ideas in iq because bishop six b4 feels so wrong then the bishop g5 you have right. to lose a huge temperature to come back. It's a lot of time you're spending, right? So I mm -hmm. suspect the plan is knight c6. Um, now, if that knight just goes to b4 with a tempo on a2 and controlling d5, everything could be fixed for black in a moment. All is forgiven. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, then we're in the back to the classics. Knight is on b4, yeah. d5 is controlled. Right. Um, so like rook d1, for example, knight takes b4. Okay, we've got a game. B4 X clam, maybe yeah. I'll say. Right. So instead, let's say white tries to do something, a critical line would be what? D5 or B5, right? Yeah. Let me look at Hikaru's uh, body language. Okay. He's going to be looking a little uncomfortable. Well, Gukesh is very comfortable. He just got up from the board. Yeah, even Gukesh is not sitting at the board. Uh, wow. No. This may be his prep. Maybe he remembers his prep. <laughs> He suddenly uh, remembered his prep. <laughs> prep, man. Yeah. Somehow feels unlikely. Possible. I'm with Patrick on this one, answering Slow Joe's question. Who is more likely to have had this position in prep at this point? Neither. There's, it's just too far afield. But just from a Hik pure number Hikaru standpoint... is extremely confused. Yeah. <laughs> Hikaru has definitely had more IQP positions in his He's life. He's like, what just happened? <laughs> yeah, a new move. A new move was just unveiled. B4. And maybe he doesn't even have to take it. Maybe he makes a knight move, right? If he doesn't want Black's knight on B4. Mm -hmm. if he doesn't yeah, have knight E4, counter. maybe. For he me, doesn't... this is actually a new theme. Like, have you guys seen this before? Like, B4, knight C6? Mm, not really. This is like a strategic novelty. Yeah. Mm, I've Hikaru never mumbled it. something to himself. Mm-hmm. And now he is deep in thought. Did he num did he mumble to himself? I guess that's welcome to the dojo. <laughs> <laughs> did you guys see some of the clips where he's looking for a mouse? Yeah. Yeah. That's, so that's amazing. Yeah, I think it provides some insight into the mind of Hikaru. Not happy, he's not happy, shaking his head. Yeah. Okay, so let's look for a counter to beef to um let's look for a counter to knight c six and then we can come back to alternatives to a takes b four if there is no counter. But I just need to I mean I've never seen this idea, I just have to see if it holds weight or not. So let's say white well, plays b five. Hold on, apparently they're still they're still following a game, Sadler Sokola from two thousand. From twenty the famous Matthew Sadler years ago? Yeah. Fascinating. So Sokolov. The man who uh, wrote... Which one? Andre or Ivan? Probably Ivan. It's 2000. 2000, uh, probably Ivan, yeah. And, uh, yeah, I hope it's that one. Because, yeah, he wrote he wrote the book on these structures. <laughs> yeah. Sadler wrote a book, too, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But he wrote a book, I think, on uh, QGD. Yeah, yeah, I don't know exactly. All right, so I'm going to try out a move. B5. Knight takes D4. So, why knight takes D4? I don't know. 
my knight was attacked by a pawn. <laughs> <laughs> I was spurred to take a central pawn. I was down a pawn. Yeah, maybe knight d4 is okay. Knight d4 just feels a little bit too... Uh, giving up a tempo mm -hmm. that the queen may get harassed. Yeah. Can I play AB? You could also maybe play AB. Um, AB looks looks like the move. Really? Okay. Yeah, because on knight B five, Black has knight B four. Should pay six. Okay, Which looks fun. So maybe let's take the pawn with the queen. Queen B five. Yeah, maybe knight B four anyway. Knight B four. My idea is bishop a6 at some point. Yeah. It was my idea. <laughs> but yeah, it could be your idea. <laughs> right. It's like pretty decent compensation. And the best tradition, so the bank was just give up a pawn for counterplay. Mm -hmm. Plus, you're all pinned down there on the A file. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. This does not, not feel good for white at all. Okay, I believe it. Interesting. Okay, oh, and Carter let's roll his eyes. <laughs> let's also look at knight c6 d5. So I have to take. Let's yeah. say ed. Okay. What's your idea? I don't know. Just looking at all the moves. Because rook d1, the knight takes b4, then somehow I even guard the d and Everything works perfectly. Mm hmm. Yeah, black has to be fine after that. Looks great. So now I'm thinking B4 white might want to do something other than taking it. That's how good it looked. Yeah, because the problem with if you allow knight takes B4, A5 structure, then bishop A6 becomes a new threat. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah, I mean, the maybe knight, knight on b4 is amazing. It opens up all kinds of play. So maybe I play knight e4. Knight e4. Yeah. That looks good. Because it also helps me remove one of the guards, guardians of your king, the defender knight on f6. Yeah. The best piece on the board for black, right? Defends d5, defends the king. You definitely don't want to take on e4 and give me a free tempo with queen takes e4 hitting the rook. Yeah. I so I assume it's either bishop b7 or knight bd7. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's go bishop b7. But then maybe your ideas come into play. Some e6 gets weak. Mm -hmm. So uh, knight e g5? Knight e, probably knight e. Ah, but then you have bishop d5 just in time. I would have to play bishop b1 and just try to maybe set up some kind of a sack. Mm, yeah, but with e6 solid, it feels like not enough. Feels like this is already not quite. I mean, yeah. if I'm playing for a win in a practical game, I kind of throw pieces at your king and hope for the best. Mm -hmm. But this does not feel objectively the right strategy here. Yeah. Is Magnus commenting? People are saying in the chat. Oh, it's exciting. Don't and more importantly, is he using the eval bar or not? <laughs> <laughs> That's one person who knows all the classic IQP games by heart, Magnus. Yeah. Magnus seems drunk. Wow. Magnus is on Magnus chest is terrible. 24, they say. That's fun. If it's chest so, 24, then yeah, I guess they're... Guys, who would you think Magnus rather play if Hikaru wins a match against Ding or if Gukesh wins a match against Ding? I think he'd rather play Gukesh. <coughs> he played Hikaru so many times already. I mean, I'm sure they'll they'll do a match at some point. It should mm -hmm. be great, but I feel like playing the fresh fresh blood would be more fun. Ali Reza. <laughs> Yep. Yeah. 
I had a I had a scientific study done on my Twitch, not sorry, not Twitch, Twitter. Uh, if Magnus would come out of retirement, if he car beats Ding, mm -hmm. do you know the results? Very scientific. <laughs> um, the stats. Fifty-five <laughs> percent. Out of 168 voters said no chance. 44% mm -hmm. says yes. Mm -hmm. He'll come out of retirement to play Hikaru. Oh, Hikaru bits, bits ding. Yeah. I mean, I think... That's just what the fans want. <laughs> I, I, I agree with the thought that it's a little bit unlikely that he would want to slog his way through the candidates to play a world championship match that he oh no he won't playing. no no they'll they'll just play outside of the feeder oh well uh, that's some kind of like sure i think, yeah, yeah, I think they will like... play uh with like you know the, the whole thing with like rapid and blitz and like two games a day sure whatever magnus wanted to do they'll play that format i think that's very likely that they do that regardless of whether hikaru is the candidate or not or whatever right for them to play a good match like that sounds like fun and they were very close to doing it already so it right. seems likely but, I mean, I don't know how that answers the coming out of retirement question because Magnus is not retired, right? He's playing in lots of tournaments, just not the World Championship cycle. Mm -hmm. So that would also be outside the World Championship cycle. So I don't see how that would be any dramatic anything. I mean, it would be a dramatic and exciting match to watch, right? But I don't think it would be a change in terms of what Magnus has said he would or wouldn't do. Yeah, yeah, I doubt he's going to go through the whole FIDE cycle. That's not right. my read on Magnus. He'll probably yeah. play some kind of a new format, mm -hmm. whether it's versus Gukesh or Hikaru, whoever wins, uh, whoever beats Ding. But it's probably going to be outside of FIDE. Yeah. By but the way, Magnus 94 played. Kind of, uh, yeah, 94 on the board. Magnus did say that he's no longer interested in playing like these regular round robins, like the Sinkville Cup, mm -hmm. Norway chess, stuff like that. Yeah. But he's signed up for Norway chess. He was already okay, signed Norway up chess, for it. He said it might be the last. Like, the last one, I see. Hmm. Yeah. But yeah, so it feels like he's kind of, he's quiet quitting the classical. Mm -hmm. Well, he's got his, no, his whole brand new uh, Fisher Random chess organization, right? Yeah. <laughs> and they play classical. So I think that that's a great series of tournaments. And if he's pumped about that, mm -hmm. then that's what he should be doing, right? People should be doing what they're pumped about. Yeah. All right. We semi predicted 94. Yeah. As the fighting move. Yeah. And uh, let's see how quickly Gukesh reacts. He'll probably go into a deep tank here. Yeah. Also, we didn't mention it yet, but it's possible that he could throw in B takes A3. But it's risky because Hikaru could potentially sack a pawn. But, like, if you wanted to play like Knight BD7, then obviously you're getting less happy about white taking on B4. So then you start thinking about taking on A3. Oh, yeah. I'd rather allow white take on b4 and develop than take on a3 and lose a tempo. This is right. black is already so far behind in development. You can't afford. This is where I would be happily second upon. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is white. So bishop b7, knight f6, bishop f6, a takes b4, knight c6 again. And probably it's. Fine. Yeah, definitely full compensation. Yeah. Okay. So in that case. I think B A three is pretty unlikely, and he's kind of going to be looking at Bishop B seven as like a first or Knight B D seven and Knight yeah. B D seven as a as the as the alternative. Yes, I agree. Shall we take a look do. at Nepo? Yeah. Uh, Nepo. I think it's a great time to pop over because we sort of have an idea what's going on here. Um. Oh, but we could update our evaluation before we switch, right? Just so people who pop in and haven't heard. Mm -hmm. what's going on here we'll know sort of about where it stands um my sense is that with the spiffy new b4 move that gukesh is okay now yeah i think it's either equal or unclear i need to see more from gukesh i'll say why it's a little bit better still okay. uh, closer to equality would probably objective play but still you got to develop those pieces mm-hmm Right. Um, okay, so we disagree on Naka Gukesh at the moment, or we could just wait Eugene's opinion twice since he's a GM. No, we haven't done that for Jesse, so. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, I think I think like Yeah, you're right. Gukesh is down an extra move, so it's not totally clear just yet. Alright, onwards onwards to Nepo and Fabi. Knight F3 was played here, but he did think about it for six and a half minutes. Queen E7. And E4, of course. And E4 there. And he quickly took on C3. Takes back. With the queen. With the queen. And now he's thinking here. Wow. he Because you cannot take on E4 twice because oh, oh spaghettios. Yeah. Using Hikaru's language. <laughs> <laughs> because spaghettios. <laughs> Do you guys remember that uh, commercial when you were kids watching the cartoons? Of course. It's burned yeah. in my brain. Same here. <laughs> okay, queen takes. Uh, oddly, think... he, he thought for six and a half minutes on queen takes c3. What's um, What else would he have been considering here? B BC? BC? BC is a truly? close alternative, but... Definitely not as principled. Yeah. Okay. So he goes queen c3. D takes e4. I suppose d5 would have been a candidate move there as well. Maybe queen f6 is what he wouldn't have liked. He took on e4 with the bishop. Oh, no. We're just at queen c3 for now. Sorry. Just yeah. queen c3. Yeah. He didn't take on e4 yet. Right. Yeah. He might. He might. Yeah. Uh, oh, they're both at the board. Oh no! Finally, just Nepo. I'm not sure if I, I think Fabi's ah, still okay. there. Okay, Fabi's still walking. Actually, they need to change the camera angle. But I think I saw Fabi at the board. Nepo is not happy. Bishop f3. Oh yeah, Fabi was gone. Oh, he just took on f3. Sixteen minutes. I think White has a nice center with the, those uh, three pawns. Oh, yeah. yeah, this is tremendous. What what motivated Bishop takes f3 when the knight couldn't move yet? This move is a surprise to me. Mm hmm. Hmm. What is he trying to achieve? Is he afraid of but he hasn't recaptured? I feel like it was kind of a surprise to Fabi as well. Was he afraid was of like trying Fabi's to reaction? What he wants before he uh, before he takes back. Right. If you expected this move, I mean, you just play G takes F. Because there's definitely no other move, right? There's not even. Right, right. right. Fabi's just kind of like <laughs> sitting back, enjoying his position for a bit. Huh. Okay. Now he's taken, but it it is weird. So. If he had castled queenside instead of taking on f3, would e takes d5 have hurt pretty badly? I'm assuming that's what he was afraid of. Okay. So if that hurts, then he may have thought that he needs to take on e4. So let's compare that. So gf and now castle. What is the difference? Well, maybe the difference is going to lie in d takes e4, not in castles. Yeah. Oh, you think D takes E4? I think maybe he thought oh, that he can't. D castle. takes E4 feels so wrong, giving me that big center. I know, but let's look at D takes E4, Bishop E4, and what would he have done next? By yeah, the way, he's played... just played D takes E4 in the game, right? So. Oh, he already played it. Oh, yeah. Wow. So the reason he made these trades is because there was something about D takes E4, Bishop takes E4 that he didn't that he didn't like, and then he came around and traded the knight first. So. Bishop e4. Let's say you castle. What's so bad about it? What did he fear? It'd be like rig the e1. Okay. Rig right, now you take g5 threat and bishop c6 threat, maybe. Okay, and against bishop takes f3. Can I insert bishop takes c6? I'll go queen e1 check and bishop takes c6 and you have d5. Mm -hmm. d5? 
So bishop c6. Looks like an annoying move. Wow. Okay. And otherwise, I move the queen and I drop the g5 pawn. So maybe that's why he decided to take one of three first. That's the only yeah. logical explanation. So he figured he can't allow e takes d5. He can't get castled. He's got to concede d takes e4. Therefore, he calculates d e4, bishop e4, castles queenside, and notices rook d e1, and doesn't see a solution tactically right there. And it, it's not obvious that he doesn't have a solution. You would expect black had a good chance to find some move here, but maybe not. Yeah, very unusual indeed to take on f3 and then take on e4. If the engine approves and says that's brilliant, then Nepo is one of the best defenders in this tournament. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's definitely shown that. Um, but I don't see that. That's not obvious at all. Yeah, optically just looks nice for white. Big center, good bishop. It's like a dream, yeah, if you can get that center going. Yeah, maybe just F takes E4 at the current game position and just mm -hmm. say, I got those three beautiful pawns. Three Ps. Three Ps and maybe you play play it for black and say, I can defend. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I can understand what he's done now, right? We've, we've, we managed to to go down the trail and figure out what did he not like with the basic moves and how that forced him to give up the bishop on f3 without losing while giving Fabi, you know, basically the full time. Um, yeah, this is a tough choice. Bishop takes e4, or f takes e4. f takes e4, I would play it an instant. Mm-hmm. But bishop takes e4 is very concrete, aimed at trying to meet castle with some kind of d5 or something. Mm -hmm. Right. So both have merit. Right. One is concrete, one is more positional. This is not an easy choice for Fabi. Yeah. And he could play d5 with the pawn on e4, of course, chat, right? Because the c6 pawn's pinned. But the bishop on e4 puts more pressure on c6. So, for example, if black tries to bail out with queen to c5... If you've got a pawn on e4, you can trade pawns on c6, and it's just a trade. But here you can mm -hmm. take on c6, and you win a pawn, and your bishop is kind of becoming a star. This is like a great uh, puzzle mm -hmm. comparison. You know, from my book, Evaluate. For your book, Bucky exactly. Jr. Evaluate. Compare bishop e4 versus f e4. It's not an yeah. easy one. No. Yeah, no, and Fabi's thinking about it. So clearly. He feels like it's a pretty Cause, uh because fe4 pretty castles d5 queen c5 and the end game is closer to equality than because black doesn't have any serious weaknesses which which end game eugene oh if the game f takes e4 castle along d5 queen c5 happens mm, yeah some kind of an end game like that maybe black can hold yeah looks okay playable but Massive trades may happen at some point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To me, it looks like Black gets nice counterplay against the center. Rook h8 coming at some point. So that could be the argument for bishop takes e4, because then after castles d5, queen c5 drops the c pawn. Yeah. And Black still has to go queen c5, probably, because they're walking into a huge attack otherwise. Oh, here's an interesting point. After, can I play knight c5 here? Instead of queen. Uh, yeah, but I think it's trying to set up this mini mini trap. If you think d6 wins, mm -hmm. with rook takes d6, queen takes c5, and then rook takes d1, I win. Right. But what if instead of taking the knight, I looked for an even better move? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look for a better move, guys. Black... Mm -hmm fell for a trap himself that he set up <laughs> the trapper trapped yes the 911 caller placed in an ambulance themselves they want us to lock in the prediction before the move happens i think that's that what they want 
I don't know who's doing the Twitch predictions, but uh, yeah, I'll leave that up to them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so several people in chat got it right. Queen takes H8. Whoops. Other side. So the D6 move might be good, right? By the way, what's your average uh, rating of chat? 3,600. Without the engines? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we've got everyone. We've got yeah. from 100 to, uh, to 2,600. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, there have definitely been some strong grandmasters who have confessed to me that they enjoy the no engine stream. Which we really appreciate it. Mm -hmm. um, but they're too uh, they're too strong to chat. <laughs> <laughs> they don't want to get into. It. Oh, we got GM Zerk. Hello, hello. <laughs> A GM so is this forward. the the stronger the stronger chat versus some other streamers? I would say maybe. Yeah, it's probably on the higher end. Probably. But look, we've got somebody who just joined the zero to three hundred cohort, so we've got people rated, you know, mm -hmm. all over you know, the map. One one hundred chess.com online and stuff like that. We've got the full spectrum, um, and we try. We try to include them all. I mean, you look at the chat, Eugene, right? It's just like a random string of numbers. Yeah. Right? Every single number is there. <laughs> Every number is there. This is good. <laughs> yeah. Magnus just called Gukesh a very clever boy. <laughs> it's so funny. What, because of the B4 point push? <laughs> I don't know why. It says more about Magnus than about Gukesh, I think. <laughs> uh. yeah. By the way, did you notice in this tournament, other than the Firuja game, Gukesh has been defending really well? Against oh, yeah. Prague, yeah, and against Fabi. Yeah, I think Gukesh has played the best chess. Yeah, yeah. But my take on it: if he feels he is one step away from becoming a World Chess Championship challenger, and he's seventeen, he's never been in that situation. He's gonna crack. Maybe. He doesn't I mean, have to crack. Uh... He might also just keep playing good moves. He didn't crack last round or the round before. Yeah, or the round before. That's, <laughs> but that's still like, he's still kind of thinking, okay, that's far away. Now he's like, if I win this game, I'm playing Ding. And that thought starts to play with your mind. Just mess you up. Yeah. I, it, it, like, oh, Ding is not in good form. Feel it. Right. At Ding is not in good form. There's a good chance I'll beat him and then I'll become the world champion. And then... From that point on, you can't unthink it. <laughs> everyone's everyone's got their own mind, you know. It's hard for us to guess like what goes in, it, what gets into his mind, and how long it stays there, etc. I mean, people who are playing for the world championship candidate spot in the last round of a candidate's tournament are already just likely to be different in their minds than the rest of us, right? Yeah, they must be good at feeling the pressure. But I mean, they're also human, like generally we do see more i don't know what's it, like mistakes in the candidates tournament right like than other super tournaments maybe it's because players are taking more risk but also i feel like there's more nerves and stress and the time control of course affects that as well and i feel like last rounds tend to be quite dramatic with like yeah i would uh, uh separate the, the candidates tournament in itself than the last because the last round is a different category remember the famous mag magnus and kramnik yeah the double white yeah. loss Right. I, th I think the last uh, round, you know, there's definitely more nerves and, and 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 all these things. And yesterday I saw a video after Gukesh uh, won that game against Faruja, which was absolutely like a brilliant victory because mm -hmm. he was also under heavy pressure in that game. Um, they were like chanting his name outside the tournament hall when he left. They were like, Gukesh, Gukesh. Gukesh. So, if he wasn't thinking a little bit about the world championship, that'd be odd for me. You know, it's like I mean, you get this like Beatles like reception, you know, outside the, the hall. So yeah. 
Oh yeah, Kramnik had to play the perk because he knew that Magnus is gonna win, and he tried to win as as well too. But they both lost. That's true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, it's possible that he collapses, but none of these things are ever guaranteed, right, Eugene? It's like there's a percent chance on everything in chess. There's a percent chance, but it's. Uh, I'm reading in the chat. Magnus is gonna join the coconut stream. Is that the our stream? That's our stream. That, that's right. us. He may remember our game that we played in the Isle of Man. Yeah. Well, Foster was about, there. I was there. I remember that game. It was uh it was so fun to watch. I'll 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 keep an eye on my DMs. Yeah. <laughs> he wants to join. <laughs> Maybe he got sick of the eval bar and he wants to join a real, that's right. the real, real commentary. <laughs> yeah. Did you guys see the video with the eleven-year-old Gukesh? Yep. Right. Yeah. When he was like twenty-three, sixty. Super cool. With a double bishop sacrifice. Oh, maybe you're thinking of a different video than me. Well, I didn't see. That. Um, I saw the one where he's like, "I want to be world champion." Yeah. Where they ask him like, That's... "What do you want to be when you grow up?" And he's like, "I want to be the youngest world champion." Right, the youngest I think that's an older video. There's a earlier one where he is interviewed by the Chess Base India guy. Uh, what's his mm -hmm. name? Sagar Shah. Sagar Shah. Yeah. And then he's like, he played this like G5 move, this brilliant attacking idea, and he saw this double bishop sacrifice in some national, I don't know, India under something championship. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Sagar wrote a very nice tearjerker post about Gukesh yesterday. I was reading this like, oh, he was just like so, so proud of him. By the way, wasn't it in Reykjavik a few years ago that Gukesh had a promising position against Prague and then he lost in like two moves? Like horrible blunder? I forget exactly what happened in that game. He that, was wait, uh, what? Day, he or? allowed this knight d1 tactic, right? Knight takes f2 mate idea. Oh, I don't remember. I'm having a hard time. Maybe people in the chat can mm -hmm. correct me if I'm wrong. I felt like Gukesh is prone to horrible blunders, guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, not for that level, blunders. I agree. Right. Uh -huh. I think he's exceedingly confident. And he may sometimes double check his calculations less than other people. Oh, Fabi took with the bishop. Mm -hmm. Wow. That is surprising. Wow. That's some, um, that's, I would say that's a move, a uh, 20, 2700 plus move. Yeah. Most of us, uh, chump GMs, yeah. Jesse would say, <laughs> would take with the pawn. <laughs> Yeah, just play right. FE four and say like I've got a great center. I must have a small edge, and yeah, Bobby's by just every, like every every strategic principle, right? Like yeah. bishop is better than knight with the moving pawn formation, all that good stuff. <clears throat> Interesting. I predict the <laughs> Fabi win, guys. I'm gonna go out on a limb here. Yeah, 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 Fabi definitely winning, 100%. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Fabi wins, Gukesh draws. That's kind of where I'm leaning right now. Is this the current uh, position? Gukesh draw. Yeah. Uh, yes, Gukesh is closer to draw than Fabi is to win. Right. For sure. If you were to put on money now, those are the two results I think are closer. And that hap what happens in that case? Then Joe. Fabi Gukesh playoff. And Fabi wins the playoff. Okay. Well, we'll see, but <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I think uh, Fabi I'm... is much better than Gukesh in shorter time controls. Like I don't I've never seen Gukesh at the type top of the title Tuesday or any of those rapid and blitz events. He doesn't waste yeah, his yeah, time he... playing blitz online. <laughs> he just doesn't even play. He doesn't finish at the bottom either. <laughs> right. Yeah, he's not like like Noterback, but Think about like World Rapid, like Noterbeck has done super well. World Rapid yes. and Blitz. Gukesh, I think. I don't know if he even played it. Um, Kostya? Yeah. I um I switched in stream elements the 
the name from Jesse to Eugene, like when he when he joined us an hour ago. Oh. Uh-oh. But it's not there. And when I look in stream elements, it shows it correctly. But everybody in chat seems to be seeing Jesse's name still, and they're yeah, yeah. I can uh, take a look. Getting weirded out by it, and I don't, I don't understand. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe um, maybe they didn't save or something. Yeah. I click to save it and within stream elements it displays with Eugene's name. But Yeah, yeah. I got it. Thank you and sorry. No, I'm good. Uh see did that work? Yeah. You did? Okay, it? let me look at yeah, the at the tell of Nepo if Nepo has any tells. He's gonna be sweating. You're gonna see gleaming beads. <laughs> he did not expect that move for sure. Looking at his body language. Yeah. Um, probably he has no idea what to do. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. Looks like he's gonna go into a deep tank here and think. Well, it's uh, yeah, big position because. Your king is in the center. Let's just say the obvious, guys. Rookie one is coming. So you're going to have to castle in the next move. move. <laughs> like, you got to start <laughs> evacuating the e-file, right? Like, either you castle or you're playing, like, queen f6. He could play a queen move, yeah. Um, but, yeah, either the king or the queen have to move here, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Yeah, I'm with you. Queen d6 and queen f6 look like the candidate moves. Um, queen uh, queen d6, I play d, uh, d5. Isn't that just game over? Maybe so. Walk into dc yeah. tempo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So then that leaves so queen, queen f6. f6. Okay. But queen f6, I can maybe... I have options, right? I can take on g5 with the tempo. Mm -hmm. Or... Or black what takes else? back with the tempo as well. But then I play G F four with the tempo. I win a tempo. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but then Queen goes back to F six, and it's where we started. <laughs> tempo, tempo. They're trading tempo, tempos tempo. as if they were coconuts. We have a lot of coconuts trades. And then did I gain anything with this? Well, H pawn is now weaker, so I feel like uh, we could go I back mean, to my move that you hated long ago with Queen A five. Mm, very clever move. Yeah, now this makes much more sense. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, mean, I like it queen stops a5. queen side castling, and it also stops king side castling. And, and rook takes h5, h5 ideas. Yeah. Oh, this is a brilliant move. Yeah. Queen a5. I mean, it makes this sense we've got something, position. right? White's pieces are just raking the whole board, and black's like, uh, my king's hoping to limp off into a corner while my pieces are still passive. Yeah, queen a5 may be game over. That's an easy move to overlook, although intuitively I would feel allowing all of this tempi is bad for black. So maybe Nepo will see it or will feel that that is wrong. Mm -hmm. But so far we couldn't find anything more useful. We don't have any other candidate moves for him just yet. <clears throat> and I mean, is it uh, so bad... I don't know if it's that bad after queen a5. After I queen feel like five. there is more. All right, let's go yeah, back to that Yeah, because I position. feel like black has some options there, like maybe knight b6. Mm -hmm. Right, so against rook h5, you just play down one pawn, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm not saying we're not possibly losing a pawn here. Right. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I guess I, I'm not clear how uh, how big white's advantage is. How Definitely it seems is. like white is okay. better. So... Rook takes h5 is going to be plus 1.4 or something. Like, probably technically winning, honestly. You just plop your queen on e5. You've got bishop versus knight with an extra pawn. But let's try to make it beyond a reasonable doubt, shall we? Yes, that's what let's... I would like. Yeah, there's no other easy, obvious move because... Bishop f5 doesn't do much. King let's... of 8, maybe. Let's play d5. Queen takes b2. Oh, Jesus. Tricked. I'm already in the dojo, <laughs> nice. Kostya. You don't need to welcome me. 
I Welcome to the you. dojo. That's Jesse. That was so lucky. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, so I mean, in this final what... position might still be good for White. <laughs> it is still good for White, but it's not better than Rook takes H five. Yeah, it's not what we wanted. Oh, a move's yeah, been played H5, already. Would... G takes oh, F four. Went... G F four. All right, uh -huh. that's a serious move. It's very principled. Yeah, so he, he yeah, clearly very didn't want to allow F G and F four. I mean, that, I think that was definitely good for White. So. So the now big he's question is: D five is not a problem. D yeah. five or G F? Those are the big. Dilemma. No, 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 Wait a second. There's question. also some. Remember, you guys it... said he's got to move the queen or the king because of the e file. Right. So yeah, there's right. some kind of a uh, rook d1 idea. Wow. Right. Yeah, yeah I forgot about our immediate conclusion. So there's rook e1 and bishop takes c6. Right. Our kind of candidate moves that. Bobby is like a kid in the candy store. <laughs> yeah. With a hundred dollar bill. Oh my mm -hmm. god. Oh my god. This is so bad. For I think rook e1 is the move. I think rookie one is the move. I don't like bishop takes c6, uh, like rook c8, for example. And then if rookie one, rook c6, and if d5 castles, kingside or something. So the idea if d5, moves, then right? queen rook c5. One, d5 and bishop c6, yeah. So I think d5, he can try to escape with like queen c5 at the earliest, right? No, no, no. Rook. rook. Oh, it's pinned. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh my god. Dang. Okay, so like, d5. How does that line go? Queen c5 take. takes, takes, takes. If pawn takes, bishop takes. Oh, you've got castle's queen side to unpin. Yeah, that's my oh. idea. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, you're going to lose that knight like NN against Morphe, but no. But GF and White still up uh, pawn and super bishop, right? Yeah. Yeah, but that's not the position you want as White. The 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 better move would be G four instead of G takes F, I think. Okay, maybe G four is better. I don't know. I have H four. Oh yeah, you don't have to bring the rook King over. C seven and miss, all I of a sudden it is something basic there too. Yeah. Oof. Okay, no, this looks wrong. We don't want to trade queens, right? I mean, rookie one's the move. Rookie one. Let's look at rookie one. That seems like the most uh, <laughs> violent. And it might just win. Right. Which is a great characteristic in a move. Rookie yeah. one. I don't know which one. I just put one of them there. We can revise it later. Mm, feels like D effort. rook is better, but yeah, this is not Point, obvious. Yeah. All right, we'll start with yours. At least the other one is doing something useful. 100% he has some idea here. Okay. King of eight. Okay. That, that's a move. So my idea of bishop c6, I just play some... Queen move. Right. Uh, which one though? Uh, I was thinking queen d6 maybe. Okay. Queen d6. Let's take the pawn and find out. Yeah. Take the pawn and find out. Queen d6. We'll take the knight. Wait, wait. Because we can throw in d5 also. We can, yeah. Yeah, you always have d5 in Termezos. Yeah. But if we start by taking the knight, then we have to deal with uh, rook c8. So I don't know. Well, the bishop's Maybe covering c8, right? I was going to transfer well, the queen I mean... to g5 here. Oh, okay. Well, let's look at it. Yeah, let's just look at one line. So take, take, queen c5? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, Eugene, would you agree heavy piece endgames are all about king safety? In yes, your black it's all about king safety and black is getting busted. Dead lost, right? Like, just horrible. GF. <laughs> Well, yeah, you have you to be a little bit careful with rook c8, but gf works because rook takes h5 is made, actually. So oh my should, god. Should yeah. out to the chat. I'm a genius. Yeah. <laughs> you are a genius. <laughs> oh boy. Well, yeah. as we said, I mean, king safe. That so was... instead of king f8, let me cast along. Okay. So king f8, we just, we just played the most obvious moves and basically checkmate. 
So here, other move. What are we gonna do? Castle queenside. Yeah. Castle queenside. Bishop chops. Right. We just chop, chop, yeah, chop until something doesn't work. <laughs> what? And then queen somewhere. D six mm -hmm. or F six. I don't know. Okay, this makes more sense. And now, not obvious which square. D6 now black's or F6. sort of alive. Because I play king b8, and all of a sudden I'm back in the game. Yeah. So bishop takes d7 forces me to take with the king. Mm -hmm. That's the only way to keep the king from hiding. You got to keep me from, yeah, king b8, I'm completely for safe. Okay. Now rook c8 is a serious threat, so you got to either move the king or the queen. Right. I also have the move rook e5 to go to c5. Maybe. Yeah, rook weird. e5, maybe I take on g3 and... It gets those pawns get quite 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 annoying. Yeah, yeah, they're queening in like one move. Mm. Oh, that's gonna be a nice messy position with those pawns and the king in the center. Yeah, so I suppose king b one is a move we have to play. Let's just play a simple move, king b one, and you also do walk into queen g six and tremezzo at some point. Right. So, I'm not sure what's going on actually. <laughs> Guys, can I ask another question Very if we go to the to live say. position? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, how about, we were looking at, we thought bishop takes c6 will be met with rook c8. Mm -hmm. But what if white goes d5 there? And what's the idea if I keep playing king b8 or something? I'm hitting the rook. Oh, sorry. No, no, no. I thought I cast a long instead of rook c8. Oh. All right. Instead of rook c8, I think I cast a long in my head. Oh, bishop c6, castles long? Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. Anyway. Yeah, that makes more sense. So I'm trying to transpose to the same before. concept. Mm -hmm. uh, if you take on d7, king d7. Right. Uh, this is a better version for black because queen is not protecting f4 pawn on some lines, maybe. I mean, for white. Uh, but can mm -hmm. white take advantage of this? Because if you play bishop e4 check, rook b8, rook c8 becomes a threat. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is a very nasty idea if this works. Castle right into discovered check. Yeah. Very devilish trap from Nepo. Yeah. Yeah, this GF4 could have been really smart and probably spending a lot of time. So it feels like he didn't think this was possible, you know, like mm -hmm. as we did. <laughs> like we didn't, <laughs> we thought queen or king moves. Um, hmm. Wow. So GF4 and okay. Fabi in the tank. I'll be back, guys. All right. Okay. So GF4, Fabi in the tank. Jan is in great position time-wise. They're at move 19, and he's used well under half his time. So he's doing fine on time, and Fabi's working here. The rookie one moves we played were just not that convincing. Wow, Black's just going to castle queenside. What if we played king b1, Kosi? That could be another candidate move. I mean, we're letting black take on g3. Mm. Ay, ay, ay. g4 a yeah. suggestion from Kreuzfahrer. Yeah, that looks possible too, g4. I was um, thinking about g4. I yeah. thought black will just go h4. And I didn't quite see what we're getting there as white. What we get out of throwing those moves in. I mean, basically, we're avoiding f takes g3 in those other positions. So we could then return some to some of the lines we just played, Kostya. And okay, g4 played. Maybe there's a little bit less um, counterplay. Yeah. On g3. Whoa, g4 just got played? Mm hmm. I mean, I understand that it's possible, that, but that was a little bit surprising. Jerry is saying that against h4, we'll go king b1 again. Mm. 
Riyadh says Gukesh is doing well. But we're probably about to pop over there and, and update that game. G4 and Yon thinking. You would expect H4, right? Um, yeah. But there's no hard and fast rule that he couldn't just castle, allow white to take on h5, and then play knight f6, right? Like, the geometry is there that that could be playable as well. Just At this point, Jan can make any move, and I'd be like, oh, that looks playable. <laughs> it's true. He finds the resources everywhere. Right. Everywhere. Yeah, he really does. Yeah. Um... Yeah, and please, if anybody has seen engine evals, if you've looked at engine evals for any of these games, just don't even talk because you're going to accidentally say something. You're going to let it slip. You're gonna, Yeah, you're going to. You're going to be like, I'm not going to say anything, but I'm very happy for Naka right now. <laughs> like, yeah. No, none of that. <laughs> yeah, we All just right, don't want to know. Basically, keep your mouth closed if you know because that's not what we're here for. We're not here for perfect knowledge. All right. Yeah, it's so much more fun not to know. It really is. So we've got G4 on the board, and I think what we need to do, difficult as it is, guys, is guess the evaluation on this board and then pop over to the other one. Uh, I still feel like white should be better, although I would give it unclear. I also still think white must be better somehow. But Which this... position? The Fabi position, he's just played G4. I don't know by how much oh, he's wow, better. Oh, wow, G4. I don't know how much he's better, but I think he must be better. Oh, yeah, white is definitely better. Yeah, the question is by how much. Okay. So we'll leave that as white better. And we're going to go over look at Nakagukesh, which last time we were there, we had to put a Sensei's Disagree evaluation on that board. Knight e4 had just been played. We thought Gukesh was choosing between bishop b7 and knight d7 to contest the e4 square. But he took on a3! Oh, oh God. A move which Eugene was pretty confident would not be a good choice. Cookie. Mm, yeah, I didn't like that move somehow. The not position, developing. The position's so open, and then Nock obviously is not forced to recapture, so he can gambit that pawn for more time. But, but maybe White does not have a useful move. He took back. We got away with that. Like, what's alternative to take it on A3? I don't see a clear alternative. Like, what else White would do if not that? Yeah, like, if there is a move that right. creates any threats, I don't see a move. I Bishop mean, G5 does nothing. It could take be, it on F6. It could be Knight E5, maybe? But what's your threat? That's the thing. Like, you're yeah, not maybe, creating any threats. Maybe my threat is Knight G5. Mm. With the bishop on c8. Yeah. Well, just then not maybe so you sure. have to leave your bishop on c8 forever. I don't know. Yeah, you're right. It's not much of a threat in black Not a, six, yeah, huh? D4 is a little weak. I can take on b. It just opens too many options. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I think take it on a3. Just he didn't have a clear alternative. That's my well, guess. That's good nice news for Gukesh as well, right? If Nock is not actually threatening anything particular at that phase. Right. Um, okay, so he took back on a3, So and then Gukesh played bishop b7, which is also the most desirable move, right? So if he's getting mm -hmm. away with these moves, Eugene, then it's good for him, right? Because trading on a3 is desirable, and bishop b7 yeah, is desirable. Yeah, I think he's definitely getting closer and closer to full equality as mm -hmm. he's developing more pieces. Interesting from Naka. He brought the knight straight back to c3. Fighting for control of d5. Yeah, that I don't believe white has any advantage now. Interesting. But it's an interesting idea too, no? Yeah, because he's preventing any like anyone going to d5 potentially. Although, is he preventing knight d5? Yeah, he played knight, knight d5. d5. Knight Naka, d5, I can play knight e4 back. Naka thought a while on knight c3, by the way. And you can see he's behind on time in this game, which is really... Oh, wow. 
Yeah. Very, very rare for him at this tournament. Knight d5, bishop d2. Gukesh trades, develops knight d7. Mm-hmm. Looks like oh, the, no advantage for white whatsoever. Yeah, like it's the last moment black, to play right? d5. Bishop on c3. Unless he has something concrete like d5 pawn sack. Yeah. If I play knight f6 next, you have nothing, I think, for white. Okay, we've caught up with the live position, folks. And I was just thinking, like, this is the last chance to play d5 or black's got a good game. Um, Maybe that's oversimplified. Maybe rook b1 is also a move. But even even mm-hmm. rook b1, bishop d5 doesn't look like black would be bad. Yeah, it looks totally equal. Right? I mean, they may not be able bishop to play d5. for a win, but pretty solid yeah it's pretty solid I feel like he's got to go d5 but I also think that black should be fine there mm-hmm. yeah I feel like Hikar is going to do something and if he plays d5 which is pretty dramatic Gukesh should take with the bishop right to not get it blocked yeah yeah, on yeah. remove one of the attackers yeah and then I mean I just don't see like an immediate tactic landing so I don't know black's got no bad no no I don't see his problems yet. No problems whatsoever. White really needs to right. find some initiative stuff. Yeah. Yeah, this whole knight c3 backwards move followed by the trade feels totally wrong. Mm-hmm. I would have rather like started throwing pieces at the king side than hope for the best. <laughs> Eugene, let's let's get a reading on Naka. Oh, the body language? Yeah. Uh, let's check. Meanwhile, I'm not updating. happy. Unhappy. Not happy at all. Now, one point I want to make um, that might be interesting to think about, like, so for Naka, he's in a must-win situation, but I don't think a loss is the same as a draw for him. I think uh, obviously he'd rather draw than lose in general, but like Naka said a couple times, if he doesn't win, he's rooting for Fabi to win. And oh. if he wants Fabio to have a chance, that means he's, you know, assuming he doesn't win this game, he's going to have to draw the game. He can't just throw. That's a good point. Yeah, yeah, he can't. He can't just... And I, uh... I think he is genuine. I think he does want Fabio to win if he himself can't win. Because then it's like an American. Maybe the match is hosted in America. That's good for chess. Like, I think that's actually important for <laughs> He's all about uh, content. He's good content. <laughs> yeah. Growing the game in the american streaming chess market <laughs> <laughs> so i feel like that's gonna push him against let's say like self-destructing going all out you know just to get a small winning chance is he trying to play bishop b4 or something i can't quite look like a4 to me from the camera but i don't know a4. definitely was a queen side something on the queen side right like either the bishop b4 or a4 so, yeah that's what i was thinking Bishop b4 feels more logical than a4 because the bishop on c3 is just buried. Yeah. Bishop b4 is like a try to hold the game move. And a4 is like I'm making more weird weaknesses because I lost it. <laughs> yeah, a4 is like I'm trying to lose it for Fabi. <laughs> um, yeah, bishop b4 keeps uh, equality. There's also this little trick, bishop b4, a5, bishop takes e7 and d5. Maybe kind of like a lost trick using the pin. Sorry, tell us that again, Eugene. I put it on the board. Oh, bishop b4 inducing a5. Mm-hmm. Um, and then bishop takes e7, queen takes e7, and then d5. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's my lost trick. Then at least I can claim some kind of... Uh, edge <laughs> yeah yeah but against bishop b4 to me the normal move would be knight f6 yeah exactly I and mean, then it's, it's boring but it's normal <laughs> yeah some yeah i don't think i have any tactics on e6 so right. i just need to play some normal moves like rook fd1 knight e5 and nothing special yeah all right we've got another guest coming in to join us Let's go. Chess gains. Oh, hello, guys. Hello, senseis. 
Hello, Hello. hello. How you doing? Hi, Max. Getting Max in. Yep, I got him. Oh, Bishop B1 played. Ooh. Okay. Oh, that's that queen side move that we're thinking about. Yeah, that's what he wanted. Bishop B1. Okay, so Naka definitely still looking at the, the king side. Most obvious move for black is probably going to be knight of six. Wait, bishop b1 was the move? Yep. Mm -hmm. Play it on the board. Wow. Okay, so more complicated. Yeah. Yeah, you know. Like, there's no threats. What, what is your threat on h7 pawn? I, think I don't understand that. Like, bishop d3, rook e1. I mean, I think he's just kind of... I don't think Naka thinks he's better, right? I think he's just playing the position. Mm-hmm. At least bishop b4 had a point. This one doesn't have any point. Yeah. Yeah, black can play any move. Like knight f6 looks like the simplest. Like I can visualize a5 at some point for black to stop bishop b4. But then you really have to be saddled with a terrible bishop on c3. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I feel like Naka can, if he's careless in the next couple of moves, he can kind of slowly get outplayed. That's my feel. Because strategically, IQP is a serious long-term weakness. You can't just sit back and, and just play normal moves. You have to do something. Mm -hmm. All yeah. right, guys. I want to welcome Max into the broadcast uh, and thank him for joining us. It's exciting to, to have you here with us, Max. How are you doing? Yeah, great. My pleasure. I've been uh, following the stream for the last like thirty minutes while I was preparing to get on. Uh huh. So, okay. So you have an idea a where lot things of, uh, stand. Exciting stuff. <laughs> and have you been following the tournament much over the last couple of weeks? Oh yeah, of course, as much as possible. Um, yeah. I mean, sometimes like I'm teaching throughout uh, the times where the games are going, but yeah, whenever I can get a glimpse or like, especially catch some recaps later on. Mm-hmm. So is that a lot of chess teaching for you these days? Uh, yeah, a decent amount. Like yesterday, I mean, I wanted to come on, but I was just exhausted from, from teaching all morning. Okay. So, wow. uh, but yeah, no, this tournament's been a lot of fun. Definitely one of the most exciting as far as I can remember. And are you rooting for anybody? At this point, probably Fabi. Okay. I would definitely like to see. I mean, nothing against Nepo, but I... It would be nice to see someone else challenge for once. Yeah. Um, but I mean, you can't can uh, say that Gukesh isn't super impressive as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Eugene and Kostya yeah. are for uh, are for Hikaru. Okay. I no sense. way. I'm rooting for either American. And yeah, Kost yeah. I would say a whole American shirt on. So. As long as the, <laughs> there is an American flag on, either Hikaru or Fabi is okay. Yeah, no, I mean, I would like to see Hikaru as well, but yeah, looking at this position, it doesn't look too great. So I don't know about the, the winning chances, but we'll see. Max, were you in the first season of that show that we did with the Sansei? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you were not a national master, so congrats. You must have become national master recently. Yeah, yeah, just a couple months ago. Thank and you. And who was your Sansei in the first season? My boy David over here, yeah. <laughs> oh nice david good job yeah yeah good job, well, david. <laughs> well max did it he he's been grinding like crazy um at, yeah the winning team you know throughout from the uh from the from the season he was working hard and and thereafter he just kept going and he's played so many tournaments and you know worked his way mm -hmm. up yeah nice yeah. i think i was co uh, coaching two south african ladies J yep. jc february I don't know if they're still active, and uh, I forget the other lady. Yeah, yeah, I think Jesse's Rebecca, pretty active, um, right? Didn't she recently win some uh, some tournament? Yeah, mm -hmm. so Jesse February she won both the African Women's Championship oh, wow. overall and nice. South African Women's Championship with like an amazing score, like ten out of eleven, like both. Tournaments. Oh my god! So I must have done something right. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. And I think she recently <laughs> broke 
some rating i forgot exactly maybe 1900 or 2000 feet a like for the first time as well is jesse still a streamer or is she doing other things yeah. Yeah, yeah, she's still streaming. In fact, she uh, she joined us for one of the days for the commentary. Oh, nice. All right. Which so was fun. Good to hear that uh, people are still streaming. Yeah. 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 And Rebecca is working on her PhD. Yeah, I remember she was working. Nice. Okay. Oh, wow. Yeah. Dang, they're all grown up. <laughs> <laughs> well, Max is a titled player. He's out teaching his own students now. He's Max, he's... do you still play that crappy... Uh, I think it was the perk line. Philidor. <laughs> Philidor. Philidor, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, not only do I play it, but um, I'm working on some uh, teaching materials for it. We'll just leave uh, it at nice. that. So that's dedication right there, guys. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he was able to make it work. So next time he's on uh, next time he's on Ultimate Sensei, maybe he'll be a teacher instead of a student. Yeah, he knows. I remember I was prepping my students for that line. Yeah, yeah. Very nice. No, I mean, I I definitely have uh, diversified a little bit because you you have to these days. It's just uh, you're too much of a target if you just play one thing. But yeah, I agree. Still a staple. The great example of that was uh, Fabi MVL, Bishop G five Nidor from a few mm. years ago with the candidates. MVL was not able to diversify, play the same Nidorf, and got hit with this amazing novelty from Fabi's team and. He reacted okay, but then eventually he lost in the end game. Yeah. I mean, when a guy has a year to prepare, right, it's going to be pretty tough. <laughs> okay, so Rook C8's on the board. Yeah. Another maximalist move from Gukash. Inviting Bishop B4, the move that we wanted to play. Get rid of that stupid Bishop. Hmm. Yeah. but I, mean, I wanted to actually ask you guys... Do we know if Hikaru has like a... I mean, I know all these guys are good at playing every position, but I feel like it's so rare to see him play an IQP-type structure from what I've seen. That's a good Must question. Experience. Uh, just not recently. Year. Yeah, like re in recent games, I don't, I can't recall. Yeah, I did not see it recently. But in terms of general feel, they can play any position right. at a pretty high level. I mean, he played it against Fabi earlier this tournament. That was a really important game for him. Played the IQP. Yeah, that's true. Not only do I play it, there's a question. Do I play the crappy Hyper Solar yeah. Dragon? <laughs> Not only do I play it, but I'm working but on teaching guess material what, guys? on it. <laughs> there's yep. a chessable course. <laughs> and guess who played my line or my opening in this tournament? Naka against Go Oh, I shouldn't answer. I'll let Chad answer. Too late. Yeah. I think people kind of know. Yeah. Oh, Eugene, if you want to drop um, the link, let me. Oh yeah, yeah. Let me let put me the allow link you in the real chat. quick because it'll it'll block you otherwise. But let me uh, just give me one sec. Yeah, yeah my yeah. lines actually featured yeah. a little bit drop in the, the women's hand that it's uh, Salima Buzz played. Uh, yeah, yeah, I saw it. A, a couple yeah. times. Oh yeah, including there are some like G four lines. It, it might have been either today or yesterday. I think she played it. Mm -hmm. I think maybe even this round against Garyachkina. Yeah. Somebody said great, co great course. Oh, you know, guys, the funny sure, story about Eugene, my course. Sure, they did. So, <laughs> in my course, I sidestepped the Mar to bind with the knight of six move. Uh -huh. You know, after e4, c5, knight of three, g6, d4, c takes d4, knight takes d4. I play knight of six instead of the knight c6 move. Oh, okay. frisky. So, I'm trying to sidestep the c4, which is the Mar to bind. Mm hmm. And then I give two uh, options. After knight c3, I give the dragon dwarf, which is d6, followed by a6, bishop g7, and h5 setup. And uh, uh, Fabi Firuja was a dragon dwarf, slightly different line from the knight dwarf. Mm -hmm. And my recommendation for those who are not quite ready for the sharp stuff and they want to transpose back to the accelerate dragon is after knight f6, knight c3, play knight c6. Which of course allows the end game. And one of the review is like, how could he give us such a crappy line that the engine says after knight takes his six dc six queen d eight king d eight white is much better. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, uh, typical chessable criticism. <laughs> My analysis only begins in that position, and they're like, no, you can't give us the end game. I mean, what are you? 
What are you smoking? The end game? <laughs> um, my favorite review was on my I have a course with end game studies. Um, you know, like puzzles. And someone reviewed it poorly and was like you know, end game studies is about strategy and positional chess. You know, that's what studying the end game is all about. <laughs> <laughs> and they were like, no, you don't understand. End game studies, like very people responded, like it's a very specific thing. It means puzzles, like tactics. And right. dude's like, sure, you could define it like that if you want, but discarded <laughs> 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 it. Yeah, if you want to make end game study fun, you have to solve studies. That's the only way I made it fun for me. And I felt like my biggest jump in my chess career was doing the end game studies. Mm -hmm. I think I went from like an 1800 strength player to like a 2100 play player just doing studies, mostly studies. Yeah. Oh, wow, guys. Gukes just took on F3. I was just looking at that move. That's a big decision. Any snacks? Wow, he goes for the pawn. The pawn in a6 was looking really tender, right? I wasn't sure what he was going to do about it. Oh, wow. Uh, he protected it by threatening the bishop on d2, Mr. Concrete. And Hikaru just immediately played rook fd1. Yeah. Hmm. It's like, thank you for taking that pawn. I didn't like it anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Huh. The bishop. How many again. old school players would go for that pawn other than Korchnoi? Not too many. So I've definitely seen this like bishop f3 idea in positions, but not to take the pawn, but just to play like g6 and you just trade off the minor pieces and you're like super solid. Like know. establish a knight on d5, right? Yeah, yeah, and you kind of play against like maybe white's dark square bishop, or you play against the bishop pair. Um, but uh, he just took a pawn i kind of feel like naka is i don't know if he's happy about it but at least like position will be open he's got some bishops and a6 is under attack at the moment yeah, yeah. a6 Feels is like the white big could problem. get some initiative here because where do you move the queen I feel like you have to i think he might go to a4 to hold his a pawn mm. yeah i like queen on a4 it keeps all the squares Nice under control. A3 pawn is under watchful eye on some lands. Yeah. So it covers some of the approaches to your king on the fourth rank. It defends your A pawn and it hits D1. So when you go rook D8 and fight over the D file, that might help a little bit too. Yeah, I don't see any winning attempt after Queen A4. Yeah, he just played it, looks wow, like. Wow, played. Dang. David and Gukesh locked in. Maybe, uh, did we mention Queen E2? Not yet. Rook C6. Yeah, Queen E2 without any concrete threats after Rook C6, you just kind of double. Right. Hmm. Oh, Gukesh is extremely comfortable. He just, what, got up and started looking? <laughs> looking at, at the what? Other board. <laughs> at the Fabi board. He has been checking out the other game a bit. Yeah, I'm sorry to say. <laughs> the I... Nepo game looks like Nepo just long castled after 20 minutes. Yeah. Right. I don't know if you guys He's are... allowing Fabi to take on h5 here. Yeah. So he basically on. caught up on time just on that move. Last time we looked at this board, he played g4. We talked about the other game for 20 minutes and one move played, castles queenside. Um. Yeah, he allows the pawn on h5. This was the only line that I had mentioned before, by the way, because when they played g4, we were just getting ready to switch boards. And I'd said, okay, you know, h4 might be obvious, but he could probably castle, and then knight f6 would hit e4 and h5. This was our line from before. And, you know, it might be okay. And seems to be something he's going for. Right. But there's still bishop at five checks, so like gh5, knight f6, mm -hmm. bishop at five check, king b8, white has time maybe for h6. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know what's happening there. 
Um, Knight d5 looks mm-hmm. pretty decent. A little bit of a tempo, improves the knight. Queen could go to g5 or f6 next move with some threats. Mm. If yeah. you put your queen on the wrong square, knight e3 might be good as well. So yeah, e3, yeah, exactly. So... Maybe GH knight of six rook D one. GH knight of six what? Rook, rook D E one. Rook D E one. Just holding that. But then, if Black played rook takes H five, you've got bishop F five. Okay. 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 That's annoying, Kostya. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Good job. Yeah, so Nepo basically yeah. has to defend the slightly uncomfortable or maybe a lot more uncomfortable position. Um, Fabi has been pretty good technically in this tournament. Um, let's see if he still continues at the same level. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> yeah, somebody in chat was saying that they think D5 looks kind of winning, but... Um... We would be a little bit surprised by that because it felt like black could survive d5 before without white even playing a move on g4. So normally we were answering d5 with queen c5, right? Yeah, we were. Then like d takes c6. Oh, wait. Gukesh missed queen b7, guys. What do you mean missed it? I don't know if he saw it from a distance. Okay. Like even last move when he played uh, queen a4? Yeah. Okay. I didn't think this Maybe. was a big deal. I thought he could go rook d8. And then after Maybe it's not a big deal. white takes on a6, play rook to a8. Queen, queen, bishop, rook a8. And then and a3 is weak. Yeah. Maybe it's not a big take deal. Take a3. Can I play bishop takes a6? Instead, maybe. There's going to be a risk there as well. Let's see. So you go there. Let's say we go rook b8. Yeah, I have to play queen e7. I didn't notice my bishop was hanging. Oh my god. Could you have taken my bishop instead of the pawn on a6? <laughs> it's been hanging the whole time. Ay, ay, ay. Okay, yeah, queen a6. Yeah, there's also a juicer on d3. Yeah, lots of juicers. Queen a6, and then you can move the a pawn, huh? Ay, ay, ay. No, the juicer is the pawn. So I'm banking on queen e2 or something now. <laughs> I have no idea if I wanted this or not. At least it's like a little something. Probably black is completely fine. Yeah, I have a hard time imagining black is worse. Um, like 95 in the game queen, position. Queen 2 annoying ideas. Yeah. Hmm. So what was the move that you were saying here? Was it rook e8 for black? I thought rook fd8, but I didn't even realize why it was attacking the bishop on e7. So, um, Yeah, that's why I was confused. I thought you meant rook fd8. <laughs> no, I was, then I was thinking FD8. that if white takes on a6, they would have some bishop b5 at the end. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that would be very risky to put the rook there. And at this but point. rook fd8 is, is clever if it works, hitting the bishop on d3. Yeah. By the way, chat's saying that Fabi played d5 in this position instead of taking on h5. So, okay, very very principled. Yeah. Um, I like it, guys. The king is a little exposed on c8. 
but after queen c5, queens come off. And ah, but I snack on the h5 pawn. Instead so of then, the... I don't mind the queen trade. Oh, so you don't even necessarily take on c6, you take on h5, huh? Like something like no, I may insert dc6, of right. course, dc6, but, uh... queen c3, bc3, bc6. But in this position, you would take on h5 instead of on c6. Oh, nice. that's a much b right. yammier pawn, the h5 yeah. pawn, the that's, outside pass. That's potential. the detail. That's the point of the whole g4. Nice. Good yeah, this feels e4. like a technical win now. Well, mm. so we, we like d5. It, Fabi learned from the Nepo game yesterday. He pushed d5 mm -hmm. while he still had the chance. <laughs> Yeah, I guess this was another IQP, wasn't it? Right here. D5 with the IQP. Isn't it the crazy statistic that until yesterday, Nepo has led the candidates for yeah. 40 games? Yeah. yeah. Four years. That's insane. And four years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a tough statistic to beat. Uh, sure. Jerry asking if white could take with the rook instead of the pawn at the end of that line. And if we put that on the board, I think that is plausible as well, but let's just have a quick look. Rook takes h5 here. That looks fine. You don't make the outside passer, but your rook is super strong and it's threatening to go to f5, which would be a lot of damage. It's also taking away c5 and e5 from the knight at the moment. And if black Oh, trades this is an easy win. Yeah, rook h5 pawn, should have been an easy one. It makes your pawn even stronger. So yeah, I think rook h5 might even be looks even stronger than pawn takes h5 actually. Because if you trade pair of rooks and bishop f5, I just easy win. I push the h pawn. Wow. Yeah. So yeah, after d5, it's not obvious what should black play. <sighs> okay, so here's the live position. They're at move twenty-one. 40-some minutes each. Reasonable. Reasonable amount of time. And meanwhile, uh, Gokesh played bishop c5. Ooh. Did we consider that move at all? Nay. No. Nothing. He has some nice tactical ideas on the f2 pawn. Yeah. Right. Like while you take a6, up. he switches over queen h4, knight g4. Yeah, all of a sudden you get mated. Wow. What if black just wins this game and ends the turn on? Versatile queen. I well, then we cheer, Eugene. Then we celebrate. <laughs> then we party like a 17-year-old just became world champion. Yeah, Damon, I saw you were very hyped last night when Gukesh won. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not quite ready. I feel like uh, he is too young to uh, to take over all the old schoolers. That's the whole point. It's, it's historic. <laughs> it's historic. Right. We've never had a teenager just win the world championship it's un unprecedented yeah it would be pretty crazy all right let's watch hikaru's body language yeah oh, <laughs> fabi's, fabi's looking at the, the fabi's like hikaru don't let me down man yeah he's like come on Naka, you, just give it up <laughs> just make a draw <laughs> just make a draw <laughs> yeah fabi's not happy guys Bishop c5 doesn't look like a draw offer to me. I'm like, if if Naka wants a draw, this is looking pretty sharp. Right. Because, like, what's the bailout, right? You're supposed to take back your A-pawn. If you don't take back your A-pawn, you're down a pawn. If you do take back your A-pawn, then queen h4, and what's happening? Yeah, queen h4 is a nice little nuance. I Let's try bishop takes a6 first, maybe. That feels even worse. Even worse, okay. Queen? Because then you're removing one of the defenders of the e4 square. Well, if I take with the queen, I'm also removing a defender of e4. But then also my queen's not on the f3 and g2 squares to come defend. Right, at least your queen can come back to f3. And... Yeah, and the bishop will get a, a tempo on the rook at some point. But it's possible that rook b8's a problem here as well, right? Since there's no yep, good, I'm not hanging my bishop. Like rook b8, queen c7, bishop b8, f2, queen and... Queen c7. 
black is happy. Right. We don't have bishop b6 winning because of queen c4, huh? There's no just game over. But how about knight e4 with the bishop on a6 hanging? And we just... Exactly. Be better. Yeah. Just keep attacking. Ay, ay, ay. That looks like a massacre, that knight e4 move. Yeah, I don't like bishop a6 at all. That just feels so wrong. <laughs> so bishop, Maybe just play, play bishop, bishop c5 looking bishop at your e1. king again. Bishop a6, knight e4, bishop e1, maybe? Bishop a6. But I play rook b8 first, right? Queen c7, knight e4. If you go bishop uh, b1, rook b8 I, first, I just yeah. take the bishop now, yeah. Yeah, rook b8 first yeah. is more principled. Okay, let's try taking with the queen. Queen a6, yeah, it feels... Yeah, that feels more natural. Okay, we'll try the queen. Now, queen h4. But minimum, let's just say black has queen a6 and rook a8. To That's unwinnable for white. Yeah, but I think at this point, Gukesh is thinking about his winning chances. Yeah, that would bail for a draw. Let's try and finish it. Queen h4. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that should be a draw with the trade. Mm -hmm. Queen a6, queen h4. Let's go for it. Let's go for it. Mm, g3? Yeah, g3 feels natural, allowing bishop takes f2. Because bishop e3, black trades and plays knight g4, right? That's not a... Yeah. Okay, g3. Yeah, how scary is bishop takes f2? Can you just go king g2 maybe? Yeah, I think you go king g2. Then queen h5? Yeah, queen h5. Queen h5, I, I may have some intermezzo. Bishop e2. Bishop e2. Ah, yeah, bishop e2, yeah. So I'm not sure if you want to waste time with queen h5. Yeah, we don't want to waste time, but it's not easy. But black still has queen c5 there, so that, that feels like black. That, that was still good for black, I think. Yeah, maybe oh, yeah. allowing bishop mm -hmm. b4 is not that bad oh i didn't see that. Oh, I didn't see five there's always Still, another tactic that yeah. we didn't see <laughs> there's a lot of Maybe. tactics hmm. yeah. Oof. this okay. gets now not not on the territory that maybe black wants to be in yeah so there should be a simpler move so what do we want to do after g3 how about well, if we take how bad is it to take on f2 It, it mm. didn't seem to be working out just yet to take on f two king g two, so. Yeah, I mean king g two is just a safe option. Yeah, so here's the other line I was thinking of for black queen h three. Let's say yeah, we're threatening bishop f one. Let's say we're threatening knight g four. So bishop f one's obvious, and then we take on f two, because now if the king goes to h one, our bishop on f two is not under attack. So yep. we can sort of yeah, that feels more natural. We can uh, sort you of like knight g four. King takes. We check. King. Uh, bishop g2 has to block, and now knight e4 check. Oh, this way. We make sure we get the g3 pawn. It looks pleasant. It looks good. For a it looks peasant. good for black. At the very least, you're going to get uh, a lot of pawns. Yeah. Yeah, that looks uh, that looks good. Okay, let me look at Hikaru's body language. Oh, he's about to play some. And he's in the live position after bishop c5. He's played bishop e1, cowering in fear before the teenager. Yeah, bishop e1 is not, that would have been my choice. Wow. <laughs> yeah, a very yeah. solid move, yeah. <laughs> so knight g4. Adam... Adam is saying Gukesh has no reason to play this one. He can draw easily by exchanging queens. No, he does have a reason to play this, Adam. If um, if Fabi or Nepo wins, and right now it looks more likely that Fabi would win, if Fabi or Nepo wins, he would be in a tiebreak if he draws. So if he can put this game away when he's up a pawn, then he's made it. Then he's made it. Yeah, Gukesh don't want no tiebreak. Gukesh wants the whole thing. Yeah. 
Plus, I mean, we've seen when he's got a good position, like he just generally believes in himself, right? Oh, yeah. And I would switch our eval on this position to black, black is better black. from equal, right? Okay. Yeah, let's go. Mm, not quite ready to say black is better, but probably... Maybe slightly. Slightly, yeah. It feels like white should be able to bail out somehow with the two bishops once sure. the eight pawns are gone. Yeah. But in any case, in that case, black is always going to be slightly better too. Right. Like I, I believe white can still save the game, but you, if you choose which side of the board to sit down at, it's, certainly you choose black side, right? Mm-hmm. If someone in the chat is saying that Naka must have seen the whole sequence, I don't think that ne that's necessarily true. He just has a sense that it's better to just play it safe, not risk any kind of complications. Yeah, I mean, they're capable of calculating, he's capable of calculating the variation, but we don't know exactly when he uses his instinct versus his calculation, right? Like that's a very fine element of a player's thought process. Um, Usually it's a combination of the two. For me, it's a combination. Like if I am seeing too many options for my opponent i usually switch um to like a defensive move like bishop e1 well it looks like nepo is still thinking it's the time there well, the funny part is like mm -hmm. Hikaru is not even threatening queen takes a6 because I can always take in bishop rook a8 and take on a3. Mm -hmm. It feels like black has all the time in the world. Right. But what to do with all the time in the world? Ideally, win another pawn somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> or just play a5 and say, what's the big deal? Yeah. Yeah, like I'm certain black has multiple moves that are at least equal or, or better. Um Yeah. To me like rook f d eight is an obvious kind of move, improving the pieces. But you know, I also wonder about just bringing the queen over to h four already, preparing knight g four. Can I play uh, after rook fd8 some kind of bishop takes a6? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we start with rook b8 generally there. But then I can win the tempo by taking on d8. Oh, right. That's why, that's why you're doing it. Because I put my rook... You play the a5. Yeah, just to be safe. I like a5. Just to not worry about that a point. Okay. It's like, why does it have any threats? Why why bother with all this rook of d8? Sure. I'm, I mean, you call it to be safe, but it's also kind of aggressive at the same time, right? Because he's like saying, I'm holding on to my pawn. That's true, yeah. You know, a3 I'm, pawn is weak. <laughs> I'm trying to win this game because he could just leave the a pawn hanging on the theory that when white takes it, he plays rook a8 and, you know, he's got a very safe two-result endgame. All right, so Most queen b5. So now a big dilemma. Do we trade and try to make a draw? Or move the queen so, somewhere um, toward the kings. Lots of people are asking, I think we discussed this earlier, if the eight pawns came off and black just keeps an extra pawn, the eval of that end game, I think we were saying is pretty drosh for the mm -hmm. most part. Yeah. Two but bishops. An extra pawn. Two bishops against bishop and that should be a draw. Yeah. But one then... of the benefits of the bishop pair is that you can trade one of them for the knight, like the dark square bishop for the knight, which is a dead draw. Yeah. You oh, can wait, not to like... play queen b5? Yeah, you can try and hunt it for opposite colored bishops oh. as a drawing mechanism. Queen it's B5 like a silent he's... draw for it. He's shutting it down. Yeah, I mean, that's definitely no chances without queens. Not that he has many with queens but... well actually as long as there are a pawns on the board white has the possibility of winning the a pawn because it's so far away from the knight um, true i feel like, like there's white still plays a4 yeah i feel like there's still a touch of three results as long as there are a pawns on the board and actually when the a pawns come off that's when black is like really 
in the oh, clear. Oh, Gukesh took a look at the Nepo game. Oh, this is a situation where they start looking at the positions. This is going to mess up. Gukesh is now, he's starting to think, yeah, how bad is Nepo's <laughs> position? Do I need to push here? Oh, Nepo no. pushed the age pawn, by the way, folks, after another significant thing. 16 minutes, the move after 19 minutes. So he's rushing towards time trouble, and Fabi just took wow. back on c6 quite quickly. Um, no, you don't have any options. you got to take on c6 pretty fast. Do you but think Nepo Fabi's already trouble. figured out that if Nepo takes back, he could go queen c6 check and get an attack? <laughs> <laughs> Do you think yeah, he, he saw that in like 30 seconds? Yeah. Probably. <laughs> but this is a, a little bit of an attack. First time in Nepo's career, he's in uh, time trouble. What's Historic he supposed moment. to do here, by the way, since he can't take the pawn? Queen c5 loses a knight, so trading queens is not really the escape valve. What's he supposed to do next? Maybe knight c5 and king b8. Mm hmm. Nice Again, that looks like probably on the verge of losing, but at least something. Yeah. Oh, against knight c5, I want to play rook d7, you know, like put your piece in the square <laughs> they just emptied, but I don't think it quite works. <sighs> yeah, I don't get it at all. Well, the point is their rook is defending h8, right? No, just like uh, what Nepo has done. Oh, what Nepo has done. Like why he thought Forever played h4 giving this pawn. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. is, is he thinking now? Like, I don't... Yeah, he's back. Are we thinking that Fabi is winning Oh, now? no, he's, he's moving. So, okay, knight c5. That was the plan. We're thinking that Fabi's position looks very good. Yeah, knight c5 only moves. Does Fabi have alternative to take it on b7? Well, I wanted to play rook d7, Eugene, but I couldn't quite. Not quite. Yeah, I can just take. It, is it possible to go with some bishop f5 check first? Mm hmm. I was thinking to, to force the king away and then. And then? But I guess. If you go rook takes d8, the queen still holds the h4 pawn. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we don't pick that one up just yet. It feels like Fabio should find some kind of a big advantage. Mm -hmm. Winning advantage. Too. And luckily he's got more time. So yeah. he's still pretty comfortable. Pretty so this may affect Gukesh. He knows Fabi is winning, perhaps. Mm -hmm. He is maybe going to move some queen. G, well, queen g4, queen somewhere. Right, queen over queen to the king side. And just say, you know what, I'm just going to launch an attack. Right. So this is a difficult decision for the youngster. Yeah, I think so. Because the a pawn's totally gone if he does that. He's not getting the a3 pawn. It's super risky, but he doesn't really respond to risk. He just calculates. Oh, what again, he, thinks he looked he at do. the position, guys. Oh no! Little, uh oh! Little pressure. Now it's gonna. He's oh, cracking this. his uh, knuckles. Yeah, it's... it really looks like he's making a decision. Like, do I play for a win or like he's already calculated and evaluated both lines. Mm -hmm. He's like, do I risk it or not? Now he's just. But that he means that it's a risk, a right? That means that, how, uh, that means he didn't see something clear with queen h4, right? Like, to him, it's still somewhat of a gamble. If he knew it was good, then why look around? Or if he thought um, Fabi Nepo was going to be a draw, then he would just trade queens. Mm -hmm. That's true. If their game looked like right. a draw. So maybe he just spends a couple minutes <laughs> for that to clarify. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. he's got 39 minutes. He can easily afford five minutes. Yeah. Wait for Fabi to... It's like some kind of through. stalling in bug house. You're just waiting to see what goes on on the other board. Yeah, this is exactly like bug house. Yeah. And it happens in team events as well when yeah. you might have a 
key decision, but you want to see how the other boards uh, play out a bit. Mm -hmm. Okay, Maybe chat's wondering time. about rook d7. Let's just let's just try it quickly. Rook d7. <clears throat> the only piece that can take it is the knight. Oh. Then you take with the pawn on d7, and the king can't take it because of rook d1. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right? It can't go back to e8 because it hangs the rook, and it can't go to e6 because of mate on f5. So the king has to go to b8, and then you play rook d1. And now black can't take on d7 yet because of the rook on h8. So they could either play h3 or just move the rook off, like rook f8 or something. And um, then this is where, you know, one thing I saw, folks, was bishop f5, queen e3, taking the queen off the board, preventing any queen c8 things. And I don't know, you could go queen d4, trying to go queen d5 maybe? Maybe. Mm. But we can't just go to b3 or something because rook d7 covers yeah, the checkmate. So, so we have to defend that pawn and then look for an attack on b7 while the d pawn's splitting the board. Queen e6 might allow queen b4 because then black can't play rook d7. Yeah, actually, queen queen b4, queen b4, can black go queen b6? Queen b6, yeah. I was just going to show that b6, rook d6, and then white can take on b6 with checkmate. By the way, Gukesh, again, kept staring the other board. Mm -hmm. Extremely I, nervous. He can't make up his mind. <laughs> oh, that's a lot of tension now. Oh, and Abusov is still there. Oh, so they're still playing. How about that? <laughs> Queen so he's B6. just having a big dramatic game. <laughs> Queen B6 looks like a good defense. I would say like the best white would have would be equality here with the nice pass pawn on D7. If white trades queens there, do they have any... It just plays bishop f5? Well, they have no mechanism to win anymore. Plus, they need to keep an eye on the H pawn. Right. You just can't break through D8 without the queen. Without a second um, target, right? Which was B7 before. Yeah, if you replace the h4 pawn with the white pawn, maybe, then you win. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I think that pretty much excludes the rook d7 idea. Um, so then you could take on b7. Yeah, that's the most logical. King b8, and then you think. <laughs> and then you think. All right. I can see why Nepo would go for this. I mean, it looks very messy. And uh, Yeah, there's a always small chance of white messing this up with this H-pawn or some simplification. Mm -hmm. So this is a good practical decision. Yeah. Yeah, and he's got Fabi thinking for a while, which is also good, practically speaking. Yeah, move 22. White could play b4. Well, yeah, but black will take on e4. That's not a big problem for black. Rook d1 is possible, yes. And then I expect also black would perhaps trade on e4 and play queen b7. Oh, I have to watch out for rook b4, I guess. Yeah, I knew he was going to trade. Gukesh trades. Yeah. So this should be probably a draw. Because the other thing was a gamble, huh? Queen b5. How long did he hesitate on that? 10, 11 minutes. It's reasonable. Yeah. It doesn't make much sense for him to take too many risks. And just bishop b6. It's very solid. 
Rook C2 is the idea. Knight D5. Yeah, he's still a pawn up. I mean, it's not like he can't try in this position. With mm -hmm. the A-pawn still on the board, as David says, that always gives more winning chances. Yeah. For both sides. <laughs> For both sides, but still. <laughs> For both sides. So Hikaru will probably play four or Rook C1. I mean, we're inferring from Gukesh that Queen H4 was not good. Right? Yeah, unnecessary. Well, I think I think if he thought it was good but risky, there's a good chance he would have still gone for it. So I feel like he just didn't think it was working. Um, maybe it's as simple as H3, keeping the knight at bay, and and nothing really exciting for Black to do there. So Rook AC1 played by Hikaru. Now Black needs like a good solid move. Like what? Rook FD8 or Knight D5? Knight D5. Knight D5, yeah. I like Knight D5. Played. So Gukesh used that time to figure out how to play this end game. <laughs> <laughs> He's sped up a bit now. I don't think they're going to hit a huge time trouble. They only have to make 14 moves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but this position is not prone to time. Two minutes trouble. two minutes plus per move. Definitely. Yeah. Not terrible, but... You know, an intricacy can come up where you just work really hard if you are playing for a win. Oh, yeah. Fabi has been extremely accurate with his decisions. I think at every juncture he chose the most annoying move for Black. But this one, they got to make 18 moves, same 30 minutes each. And it's going to be, it's much sharper position. So, yeah. I think this Fabi game is going to just go down to the, the wire. Yeah, I agree with the chat. That's a two-result game for Gukesh. Mm -hmm. That's exactly where he wants to be. The probability of a tiebreak result at this point, somewhere around 50%. Is that an official statistic, David, or is that your just your that's, take? That's like a guess. <laughs> I think there's only like maybe a twenty percent chance that Gukesh wins the game versus an eighty percent chance of a draw, and mm -hmm. then and then to that you add sort of maybe a thirty percent chance that Nepo escapes from Fabi, and that game ends in a draw. Mm -hmm. It's reasonable. On each board, the most likely result. I would say as Fabi wins and Gukesh draws, but neither of them is like anywhere near guaranteed just yet. So, how do you calculate that? Do you multiply like eighty percent by seventy percent, and then you get like a like a fifty-six percent or something? Mm -hmm. Is that a thing you can do in that? <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> Point fifty-six. Oh, someone sent a YouTube chat. Let's go. Yeah. Hikaru seems pretty bored. He is ready for a draw. But I think he's like pretending rookie. like there's nothing here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why are you even making me play this out? Okay. Right. Twice your elder. It's disrespectful to even try. I got two bishops. You're not beating me here. Gukesh <laughs> Damaraju, 17 year old Indian superstar. <laughs> A4 from Naka. Mm -hmm. Good move. Fixing the board on A5. I like it. Wow, instant reply with King of Fate. Yeah, why get into time trouble, right? Do what you gotta yeah, very, do. Very good. Mm hmm. Yeah, Gukesh's technique against Abbasov was extremely impressive. The queen ending. 
No. Or the game no, with no. black. Oh, the bishop the and knight yeah. versus two yeah, bishops. Yeah, yeah, Where he did the zugzwang, remember, guys? Yeah, yeah. He did just win an endgame with bishop and knight against two bishops not that long ago. That was really well played. I mean, hasn't his endgame technique been overall, like, really, really good, Eugene? Both Abbasov I mean, games, he... the Ferruja game yesterday. Yeah, he is known as a maybe, like, a very good endgame player. I don't know. Hey, real quick, while we have a second, can we update the Prague game? Because sure. I, I would think Prague is doing well in that game. Okay. I'm just curious what you guys think. So we don't have to look at it for very long. Mr. King's Indian. All right, let's see. <laughs> I mean, the A4 pawn and B6 pawns both need to be defended, right? To some extent. Yeah, I'm now rethinking if Prague has anything. And his knight... Like, you might think good knight versus bad bishop, but his knight's not good yet, right? It's not attacking anything and no obvious outpost. I think maybe he'll go queen a7 and rook e8 right now. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe idea queen a5, b5. Yeah. Yeah. Also, mm. white's king is pretty weakened, which doesn't make me want to trade queens. Yeah, I like your idea, right. queen a7, rook e8. We could call it balanced if you want, Kostya. That's fine with me. Equal? Yeah. Yeah, maybe okay. around equal. Sounds good. Was this the first actual King's Indian of the tournament? <laughs> it was. At least in huh. the open, yeah. Is that the first King's Indian of the candidates? No. Right. Yeah. Well, not any about... candidates, but this candidate. No, of the... Because in Madrid, there was no King's Indian either, eh? Yeah, but I remember there was King's Indians before. Like, uh, I think it was like Grischuk Ding Loren or some game. Grischuk Aronian. Aronian Ding Loren. Oh, okay. I remember they had some, I think, yeah, they had some really That was like a while back. That's like Berlin. A couple candidates. years ago. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, this isn't exactly the most high stakes game, so it's probably not a great sign for King's Indian fans. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. He's yeah. he's 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 playing for real. But I mean, well, he's playing for a win. I mean, wants to finish the tournament well at least. Yeah, but uh, he didn't be play back it in a game where he was still in contention for <laughs> for first. Yeah. Well, in that game, he played the French right and got the exchange French. There have been a lot more e fours this tournament than d fours. A lot, lot, lot more. So we've been this seeing... round is all D4, I think, right? Uh, maybe so. Yesterday was E4. Yeah, yesterday E4. was E4 theme. Today's kind of D4 theme. E4. Okay, Fabi played Bishop F5 check. Interesting. Ooh. Deep think involved. Bishop F5 check. So... B8. King B8 forced. So Fabi's got to show us his idea next. King B1. Nepo just gave him a nod, like, yep. Wow. High class. Hmm. <laughs> I do like this. I thought of the idea of Bishop D5 to keep Bishop versus Knight on the board, right? But Bishop F5, just totally not caring about the C6 pawn. He almost rather have Jan have that weird pawn weakness than have it just open. And also, I think on BC, he wants queen B4 check and queen takes F4. Ah, okay. yeah, that's nice. Or queen B4 check and rook C1. Oh, yeah, rook C1 might be. Yeah, rook C1. Yeah. But then there's still rook D5, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Not super clear. There is rook d5, bishop e4. That's the end, though. That's the end. Mm. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Just the end. Gukesh has some slight winning chances, maybe Nordovic, rather small. What if you replace Gukesh with Magnus? Would he convert this one? Similar, small chances. You know, 15, 15 to 20%. 
You need to trade dark square bishops if you're Gukesh. But how? Yeah, not e easy. A5 is constantly hit. Yeah. I mean, the other thing you could do is if you could get rooks off the board, that might make it easier to use your king and then find a way to get your bishop to b4. Even there, it's not easy to get the king to b6. I agree. I agree. So, like, I don't see any winning ideas. Maybe, like, use the knight. I've got to move. Smart. I've got to move. Oh, but he's already played king e7. He's so fast. I was, I'm a move behind, but I was going to say rook c5. Um, and the point is to double rooks on the c file, right? And take over that file. It's the first opportunity I saw to do that. Um, and if take, take, you want. And if take. Well, if the a file spawn gets captured, you want 93. Exactly. It's the first moment I saw where I could do this operation mm -hmm. without without dropping yeah that's clever but he already didn't do that he played king e7 king e2 he F5. missed his chance you think so you think that was a mm -hmm. no well at least it was clever oh, at least f5 <laughs> and now he's gone f5 grabbing some light oh squares. f5 was what i would have played myself and it's a very space. typical space grabbing move yeah well the idea is you want to play g5 mm -hmm. g4 Fix the pawn on f2, and slowly start creeping your pawns up. Mm -hmm. And you're not scared of f4 fixing your e6 weakness because on the e3 square is too weak, I guess. Yeah. And the knight can get rerouted to e4, and then then I can play h6 g5, create h2 target. Like there, there's all these new possibilities. And white's just not on the attack, but generally here you would play h4 for Naka because in Eugene's plan, when the black pawn gets to g4 it also leaves h2 as a bit of a weakness and there's you know h5 h4 plans with threats on the h file or yeah generally the more pawns white trades the easier it is to hold mm -hmm. so h4 will help us with massive trades later he played rook c4 however mm, reasonable move he may want to double the rooks mm-hmm The first moment that he could do this, that his rook on d1 is finally defended, right? So. No, this is actually a clever idea. If rook takes, bishop takes, there's a rook b1 idea. That b, b, bishop on b6 is getting loose and rook b5. Yeah, I kind of like this idea. And then you want to double. Mm -hmm. mm, very good move by Hikaru. I really like that. All right, Guki, shut it down. Don't be a hero. <laughs> no, no, no. Don't be a hero. <laughs> you are a hero already, whether you like it or not. The crowds are <laughs> shouting your name. They're chanting it all across the world right now. Gukesh, Gukesh. So technically, Rook C7 might be playable. So at the moment, the most likely result is a draw and Guki game against yeah. Hikaru, and Fabi wins. Yeah. Yeah. Meanwhile, Nepo played b6. He's not touching that c6 pawn. Yep. And then they play a tie break. Okay, that's good for Americans. Bobby's position doesn't look, I mean, that obvious to me. Like to me, it just looks super complicated. Still, I would definitely take white, but mm -hmm. I wouldn't exactly. Uh... I don't I know. Mean... I think uh, that knight on c5 is not very very easily like b4 ideas at some point mm -hmm. what right. happens on b4 right here and my point of knight a4 I maybe i want to trade if i can trade everything like my goal is to trade the rooks queens and win the h-pawn somehow okay so b4 knight a4 let's say rook d8 yep so the point of rook takes d8, then c7. Wait. And then I take on it. How are you taking on d8 with the rook or the queen? Well, if rook takes d8 for black. Rook takes d8, okay. Then I want c7. C7, queen. Just to eliminate the queens. Queen. Yeah. And then take on h4 yeah. and claim that 
your f7 on the four are too weak. Yeah, but the move rook d2 is rook d2 at the end seems unpleasant. Probably right? drawing a resource. Bishop c2, rook f2, bishop a4, no. Still a little bit messy, but I feel I feel like Black's pretty active, and they're not really down a clear winning pawn or anything yet. Yeah, still it's a fight. If White can get the queens off, I think it's going to be easier. That's my feel. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Okay. Let's look at this again, because against Queen D eight, I think Queen E five is like completely winning. Immediately. Yeah. Right. The queen can't block because of the rook on H eight. Right. King goes to a8, you play either bishop e4 or c7 in one order or the other. So we just need something against rook d8 to knock him out. But I don't know, in that final position, is rook d2 really anything dangerous for black? Let's look at it, because it's kind of a very forcing line. Yeah, it's very forcing. Okay. Because we'll I agree, this b4 feels critical. So bishop c2. Two or something else? No, 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 no. You have no threats. Why? I have no threats. Okay, what do you want to play then? <laughs> mm, something aggressive like rook h7. Okay. This black girl like nine three check and rook f2. Mm -hmm. The man without a threat gives the check. I think, and, and then I take on f7, and my my g pawn gets kind of angry. But wait, I would put the rook on e2 to e2, set up yeah. the drawing mechanism. Yeah, that's the most famous drawing mechanism. All right, so I think I still have to take the pawn with check. Might as well. And now I have to deal with the drawing mechanism. But it is possible because White can get the rook to the c file. I hope. You have the amazing move, Bishop b1 now. <laughs> Very rare right. opportunity. Beats. Oh boy, what a line. Hmm. Bishop c2, knight takes a2 looks really sufficient for black. The drawing it... mechanism, for anyone who doesn't know it, is knight a2 check, king moves to d1 or b1, knight goes back to c3 check, king goes back to c1, knight goes back to a2. That's yeah, bishop mechanism. c2, David. Okay, knight is a2. Is this a draw? Knight a2. And then king somewhere, king d1. Knight c3. <laughs> Thanks for showing them. Yeah. King c1, knight a2. King b2, knight b4. Oh, why have you won rook d7? Hold on. Hold rook on. d1! Hold on. Rook d1! Rook d7? Yeah. Oh, boy. I said the move wrong, but I was thinking about the right move. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was wow. calculating this too before. That's amazing, 97 uh, CD yeah. and uh, you're in the Zugzwang. It's the same position we were going for before with the pawn on B6 instead of B7 and with the king already on B1 so there's no queen E3. Rook B7, oh man. It's a world championship move. Oh yeah, that's gonna be the highlight. Bobby, we gotta get a body language uh, reading right now. Has Nepo come back to the board yet? Oh, he's up. Okay, Nepo is not <laughs> happy. Josh says there's also the move c7, which might be more obvious. Instead of taking the knight now. Ay, ay, ay. Oh. He took with the rook. Wow. He took with the rook? He took with the rook. Nepo not impressed, huh? Oh, because here there's not pawn takes rook check to the king, right? So you can't pick up the two rooks. Right. So why couldn't you take with the knight earlier? Because of c7? Yeah. Ah, okay, got it. That just wins on the spot, okay. Yeah, if the king comes over, there's check mate. 
If he goes to c8, then you take double check and h8's hanging. Okay, yeah, but this is a this is a good simplification for white. Yeah, in fact, after rook d7, he could have played queen h8 check, rook d8, queen h4, right? And get the end game that you were talking about before. But black hasn't yet had time to collect the c-pawn or get the knight into position. There's no weakness on the white king. So he has to play rook d8 now. So, but he just played cd7, uh, rook d8 forced, it seems. And now if rook e1 trying to get e5 for the queen, there's queen d6. But if b4, how does black stop queen c8 check? Mm-hmm. That's oh, the knight, take, knight takes. Knight, knight takes, takes d7. Of course. Okay. Knight d7. Knight d7. So. And Rook even C1. there, like, like, black was barely holding on. C7 square is right. so weak. So how about Rook c1 preventing Knight d7? Like Coach yeah, Rook c1, exactly. Yeah, Rook c1, I can play either a5 or queen d6. Mm -hmm. so Rook c1 doesn't feel as strong. Queen d6. Oh, a5. But it feels like there should be a move that will make it easy. Okay. Let's see if there's an easier move then. My first thought was actually rook d1. Okay. Uh, implying that you can't take on d7 because of pins. Because of queen d4? Yeah. It's like black's king looks way too open. Uh-huh. And if you can't, while they can't move, you'll play queen f4 and switch over to a direct attack somewhere there. Queen f4 is in the air. Yeah, we got diagonals. Queen d5, bishop switching to d4. Diags. That looks pretty strong. So let's say black doesn't take. What might they play? a5 again, right? Fabi's on 18 minutes, by the way, with 14 moves to make. Mm -hmm. you know? So they weren't in dire time trouble, especially if he'd gone for one of the more technical solutions, but he's going for middle game knockout and that puts a lot of pressure on your clock. What Another you... idea for Fabi is just queen d4. Mm -hmm. With the idea queen takes f4 check. Ah, and if knight d7, same move as Kostya, rook d1 with the tie up. Mm -hmm. That might even be a better move order, Kostya. Mm -hmm. I agree. Because this is just queen, such a big threat. Queen d4 is centralization. We're taking all the squares from this queen immediately. Ooh, that's a pretty sweet move, Eugene. Yeah, that may be just curtains. Zugzwang. Should we say White's winning this? Yeah, I think Time so. To update. He yeah, I out. definitely think it's closer to win. Uh, here, Queen G four feels good. Hmm. Yeah, once we update the evals, that's when you know it's truly bad. <laughs> yeah, we're we're definitely going to be lagging, you know, half an hour behind the computer engine evals on other channels. <laughs> and meanwhile, in the other game, a pair of rooks came off. Ooh, let's see it. Let's just get a quick update over there. So rook c4, there was a trade. Oof. Oh, Gukas just offered a draw with knight b4. Yeah, that's a draw offer right there. Oh, wow. Wait a minute. Oh, yeah, you can take on d8 with the bishop. I was like, could white play rook d8, bishop e6, and just keep playing? Yeah. <laughs> Pick a pawn. Aye, uh, aye. Yeah. Okay, so that's equal. And Naka is now begrudgingly going to accept. Oh, I Naka's going to do the faces, guys. Yeah. He's shake like, his well, I, oh, I, have some I should be winning. You're so lucky you had this move. Right. <laughs> like, what a luck. Knight b4. Come on. Who has that move? <laughs> All right, Gukesh. I'll give you it. I'll be the nice guy. I'll yeah. give you a draw. Oh, queen d4 from Fabi. All right, we called that one. Oh, oh Fabi is my man. What a move. Queen Yo. d4. He played it quickly, too. Oh, man. Actually, it is an interesting moment in Naka's game because I feel like if he goes rook takes d8, 
that means he's team Fabi. And if he doesn't, that means he's team Naka. Oh, so Naka can lose? I mean, he's got Raiden? no winning chances, right? If he goes some um, Rook C1, Rook B1. Yeah, no, no. He's definitely going to take the draw. They're on move 32 over on that board. Five moves ahead, so they're in much less time pressure. But time pressure just stops mattering if the position clarifies before they run out of time, right? And it looks like Fabi's just clearly winning and the other game clearly drawn. Yeah, it doesn't, doesn't look good. Hikaru's doing the faces, guys. Oh, and Hikaru is like looking over at Fabi's board like a lot. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, uh, let me do. All right, he's like, Fabi, I make a draw, you win, you buy me a big gift. Yeah. Oh, so chat's asking, what even is the idea with queen d4, etc., right? Okay, so let's, we're here, let's talk, let's talk about it. So right. knight takes d7, rook to d1, and now mm -hmm. the knight can't move because of the d8 rook not being defended enough. Um, the knights attack three so you times. You play like king c seven or something. So you have I don't to defend it play. with the king. Um, so let's and play this king c seven. Somehow should be winning. Queen takes f four check. King c eight. Now the knight can't move. Wait, right? can you play uh, knight e five? Knight e five. Maybe so, yeah. At least you don't want to walk into a self pin. Okay. But the knight is also threatening to move because now the rook's defended enough times. Hmm. Yeah, is there a cleaner move than queen f4? And or did we say it's completely winning a moment too soon? I feel like it's winning, but I don't see like a super clear cut to make him resign. Yeah, Fabi was definitely watching Naka's game there for a minute. <laughs> like, come on, Naka. <laughs> be, a, be a pal. All right, so Knight what was played in the played. game? Knight d7, he took it. Someone's nice. asking, is Fabi winning three in a row? Well, he's won two in a row here and three of his last four with a draw. So, yeah, he's scoring like half his points in the last five games. <laughs> Naka still either thinking or just making faces without thinking, one or the other. Um, let's see if we can't crack knight d7 and some analysis here boys okay, have a rook d1 played yeah mm -hmm. predicted king should go to c7 oh queen c5 oh oh Napo. did we miss this yeah we some did trickery if um mm. if bishop takes d7 he can mm. trade and play king c7 and the bishop drops but what do you do against queen takes f4 check Let's see. Big question right now. Let's see. Uh, so very, right, that's the most uh, obvious move. I think king c7? Queen c7, I mean? I can renew the pin with queen d4 back. Yeah. And maybe queen c5 again. <laughs> ah, but maybe you allow me to take on d7 and just push the h pawn to h2 then. Mm -hmm. Right? And I'm on the self pin. This kind of yeah, that's the other idea of black cats. You can always throw h3. And just leave that bishop hanging out there. Now threatening to play rook takes d7, maybe. 
<laughs> oh, Naka didn't trade, by the way. Naka keeps the rooks. What? Yeah. They played rook b1. Rook b1, hmm. bishop c5. Dude, he's like, screw five. <laughs> now rook c1. I don't care. He's just trying to keep the game alive. Yeah. Oh, they're looking again. Now Gukesh is looking at others. <laughs> oh, it's just all too much. They're all feeling much. some kind of crazy. They're all having crazy thoughts about things not on their chessboards, huh? Yeah, maybe it's kind of similar to think to that Naka game against Ferruja. Maybe Naka is thinking like, okay, Gukesh probably thinks the game is over. He's allowing the draw. Let me play on and mess with him a bit. Mm -hmm. Wow, knight c6. Oh, that's not the move I predicted, but the idea is he wants bishop b4. Yeah. If you yeah, trade I mean, those bishops, then we start talking about winning chances. And put this knight on d4. He also defends against bishop takes e6 because he has knight d4. Mm -hmm. Knight d4, oh yeah, he has to come all the way around to defend the bishop on c5 here. Yeah, and knight e6, yeah. It looks insane putting both pieces hanging on the c-file. I, oh, my, Hikaru missed this move for my sure. My instinct was to defend the bishop on c5, guys. When I saw rook c1, I was like, let's do something about the hanging bishop. <laughs> it's like, and his response is, let's hang both of them. Bishop c3 played. Not preventing bishop b4 that I can see. Bishop g7, well, g7 rook d2. Yeah, that's the idea. King somewhere, oh man. Okay, but rook d2 is not game over not a big deal not a big deal okay okay and, and if you push the g-pawn then bishop b5 right just that tempo is important okay so gukish has bishop d4 bishop b4 as the main candidate moves i think Wow, surprise decision. Yeah, that 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 Naka kept this game going, huh? Wow. Queen f4, By the queen way, c7. The queen takes f4, queen c7 happened what we predicted. Yeah. Honestly. Yeah, I now a tough decision for Fabi. I still, Do you play queen d4 or no? I still don't see the win, and 12 minutes is not a lot. Oh, quick updates. Looks like Tan Zhongyi won her game. She just needed a draw to clinch oh, it. Oh, okay. So she, she clinched won. it. Yeah. So, okay. Super deserved winner. I think she's just like... Here's her current position. Really well. Looks like they're repeating, honestly, from what I can see. So I think she drew her game. Oh. But she was she a full point up because Lei yeah. lost yesterday. So, I mean... But if this is Draws a draw, them. which it looks like, then, um, yeah, then she is the candidate. And Leia was really going for it, I saw. I think she sacked the queen, but I'm not sure it really worked out. Oh, oh Fabi just played queen d2. And, and Nepo immediately played h3. He's doing that thing where he plays he's fast. He's my plan to put the port on h2. <laughs> aye, aye. Yeah, Naka's looking at Fabi's game, and then Gukesh is like turned and also was looking. <laughs> <laughs> They're so bored. Oh man. Yeah, I mean, this is a, such a sneaky pawn on H two, guys. If you have eleven minutes. Yeah. Ah, uh, maybe uh, the winning idea is Queen D five, Bishop E four. Mm hmm. That looks scary. So queen d5, h2, bishop e4, how do you stop mate? Right. So queen d5, probably like queen c5 or something. They go king c8. Now then there's rook c1 maybe. Oh, wow. Well, queen d5, queen c5 is sneaky because I can't quite trade yet, right? Queen d5, h2, bishop e4 mating. What about king... C8, not mated. <laughs> okay. Queen AA check. 
I block with queen. Queen a8, queen b8. If rook c1, I have knight c5, I think. Uh-huh. Wait, what if huh. we don't give a check, but we just play like f4? Oh, f4, brilliant. Yeah, I love Covering it. Covering the h-pawn and just <laughs> leaving just it leave all Just leave it on hanging. h2. Yeah, we just say yeah. bishop good. <laughs> oh, that's so brilliant. I love it. <laughs> and then you'll take the time to play b4 next, huh? In, in general, this concept is good. Just put the pawn on a four, leave the bishop on e four, and just slow they suffocate. Yeah, yeah that's a brilliant concept. Nine minutes for Fabi. He has to make ten moves. Yeah, it's less than one minute per move. This is the this last is his position, chance. folks. H3 played. This is his chance now. Got this weird queen d5 suggestion going for mate, finally. And what did we I play after f4 queen d5? Is a, it's also a chance. Um, but yeah, we can keep on queen d5. Yeah, what did we play after queen d5, queen c5 also? Oh yeah, we didn't figure that one out. I thought that was okay for black. Oh, okay. Queen d5, queen d5, can you take the queen and play rook h1? Yeah, you at the very least. Queen takes queen. The pawn must take. Rook h1, collecting the mm. h pawn. Nice solution. Like the, the lazy, okay, the lazy simple, solution yeah. works good <laughs> enough. <laughs> no, but yeah, totally good enough. Can do. That's very, simple. very good. That option. Ay, 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 queen d5. Okay, so queen d5 is back on the menu for Fabi. Uh, Nordovic, in your line, you're moving the knight from d7 to c5 when your king's on c8, mm. which is e He started with bishop e4. Lethal. Bishop e4, same exact idea, queen d5. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, maybe even better, because he avoids the... Uh... All the queens. And so oh, the, queen c5 the idea of queen c5, queen h2 check, guys. Mm -hmm. You can pick up the pawn that way. Keeps the queen more flexible on d2. Mm -hmm. Oh, maybe um, another way to stop mate is like a5, king to a7. which also potentially gets the c5 square for the knight when white uses the c-file. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a5 is clever. Jan using some of his 20 minutes instead of blitzing. Gukesh played g5, leaving all the pieces hanging and trying to grab that space. But isn't bishop b5 in the Gukesh? Yeah, not to play bishop b5 and... Now you can't avoid the trades, right? Uh, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't see moves other than like knight b4, which allows opposite colored bishops. Mm -hmm. But at least black in this case keeps the rooks. Mm -hmm. Which is, I mean, bishop a3. Wow, I did not see that one. Oh my lord. Oh boy. Oh boy. Hmm. Madness. Absolute so madness. Risky. Dude, yeah, he wants rook a1, bishop b4, but still, I'm like... Right, oh. and then bishop c6, bishop c3, and that endgame you can squeeze, because you still have the rooks, and you're getting g4 with the h2 targets still, and f2 targets, you know? What if we just go rook c2? Yeah, good question. Yeah, play it in the game, rook c2, good call. That suggests that Gukesh is maybe flailing a little bit here. <laughs> oh yeah, what a round. Yeah, he'll probably just play knight d4 and mm -hmm. Yeah. These games have really not disappointed. <laughs> no. So tense. Knight d4 check. I mean, Kikar's he's... looking at the other game. He still can't lose at least. In the 
Nepo game after a5, queen d5, king a7, I can just pick up the pawn, right? After what? Uh, your idea, a5, queen d5, king a7. Mm -hmm. I can just pick up the pawn on f7. Yeah, you can. It's yours. Ooh, a5 played. David you defending can. like Nepo. Bobby looks locked and loaded for his next move. This stuff is all pinned and cross pinned and whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah. Don't yeah, because the pawn on h2 is nothing if you play f4, right? Yeah. We just kind of like let it sit there. Mm hmm. Yeah, there's no hope. And you're just all pinned up everywhere. Yeah, very nice. So queen d5 played. Threatening that mate. I mean, there's nothing, there's not a lot of moves here. He's stopping and thinking, huh? Ah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Josh saying f4, g5 coming. No, it looks golden. This oh, bishop. Yeah. You guys remember Fabi's bishop takes e4? What a concept. Mm -hmm. the, it all started from bishop takes e4. <laughs> That's yeah. brilliant, yeah. Fabi is like Nepo, on the board. Nepo missed it. He, after queen f7, his eyes just like went crazy. Fabi's play in the second half has been everything that people expected of him. Oh my god, the like, level is insane. Yeah, yeah, just every game, the tiny advantages he can squeeze, the full control of everything. Yeah, I, yeah it's everything yeah, we've I... wanted for like several candidates now. <laughs> he, he's he's living up. feeling the pain of not pressing Bobby harder with the white pieces. Right. Just felt like when he took that, I mean, I guess it was kind of the opening, but he didn't really press for much you could kind of tell he would regret it later yeah it's interesting for a while everybody nepo was in the lead and he was not pressing people and it was like oh brilliant you know he plays like so solidly he lets people over press against him he never loses a game mm -hmm. you know what a what a tournament strategy it's completely counter to his normal reputation as a player but then as soon as you don't win the tournament it's like oh you must be regretting all those games you squandered when you didn't press <laughs> Yeah, I mean, black in the last round against Fabi, that's a nightmare. Something to, yeah, to have been careful of from the beginning. Fabi mm -hmm. got seven minutes. Oh, boy. Six minutes now, Counting. So He's getting a little nervous. Over, oh, seven the most, huh? Come on, F4, quick. Man, guys, my heart is like beating fast. <laughs> <laughs> There's no increment, remember. I didn't know. Oh, Seven man. moves. Oh, he checked how many moves left to make time control. Bobby, just go F4 for the team. Okay, queen move. Queen H7 is safe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, his stuff's pretty well defended here. Yep, queen H7 played. Checking over as here, knight d4, knight rook d4, rook h7, all of this happened. Yeah, this was a position we could see coming. Looks quite equal. Naka has recovered his minus pawn. Okay, our evaluation shows equal, so that's accurate. Yeah, like rook c7 now I would play for white there. Stop and, the bishop from coming to c5. And they are at move 40. So they've got all that extra time. So that that game we can just leave simmering while these yeah. guys are in time Rook trouble C7 now. Rook C7 is the simplest, just to stop Bishop C5 concept. Mm -hmm. Right? And just the draw. Maybe there's more than one way, but that's the easiest. All right, so Naka's going to slow down Gukesh. Mm -hmm. And Fabi is winning easily. Yeah, I mean... Maybe he doesn't even need f4. Maybe he just starts pushing the g-pawn. Or maybe just bishop f5. Yeah, so many winning ideas. How does Fabi make progress now? Yeah, so a couple ideas. One is to push the g-pawn down the board. Another is at some point to play bishop d7 and win this knight. Another Even would... pragmatic rook h1. <laughs> just take it. <laughs> Another would be... Nepo just can't move. 
four or rook yeah. h one to take off. It's the like H4. a total zugzwang, guys. So you king b eight. That's logical. Yeah, and at the least two breaks one of the pins. Jump. Okay, and so now the question is, what's the simplest way? You can still play rook h one. But rook h one maybe like knight f six is black's idea. And then queen h2, you've got rook d1, huh? Let's show this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I have to trade and then take, and then you take on e4. And uh, maybe some hope on the rook and put end game then. Yeah, I'm right. I mean, best case scenario for black is some pawn down rook end game. You know? <laughs> so let's see if there's anything cleaner than that. Definitely some nerves here for Fabi. You got six moves left. But that endgame should be winning, right? Because, I mean, like, even if you just keep the G pawn. Yeah. So far, right, for the bot king. Yeah, it should be winning. Should be winning. Rook behind put the, the rook, rook behind and push, push. But Fabi wants more. But, yeah, if there's a simpler way, maybe he'll find it. Although, with the five minutes left... Yeah, you can go, you go for queen e7 to keep the opponent tied up. Mm, clever. f4 right now is a mistake, though, for the first time, I think, because if queen takes f4, and then it's just not a good time. For rook d7, rook d7, your bishop's hanging on e4. Yeah, queen e7, and if you play rook h8, f4 then. But then queen takes f4, no, not super clear. You're saying rook h8, f4, queen f4. Yeah, if you your move queen e7 for white, then yeah, yeah this line, not super clear. Mm -hmm. Maybe bishop h1. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Bishop h1 looks very clear. <laughs> very, very nice. <laughs> Beautiful. Domination. Actually, this is kind of a nice checkmate. Like knight c5 almost covering things, right? Yeah, exactly. rook d8, queen a8, and then, yeah, queen eight, eight, and then, yeah okay. very nice. Beautiful. That's not an easy one to calculate. No. Uh, not easy. He's made a move, though, and it was move? simple a3. This move okay. was on my on my list of things I wanted to do with white. <laughs> if, like, yeah, black could really do nothing. He's asking himself a question what is black's next move? Mm -hmm. uh, knight e5, you'll just block your own. Queen, knight mm -hmm. c5. Yeah. Also. Knight c5, then I take and take with check. Take and take with well, check. Well, no, any knight moves is rook d8 and queen b7. Oh, oh, yeah. Well, knight c5 covers b7. but. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. But then yeah, I take yeah. one h2, which check. Yeah. Mm -hmm. H2, exactly. Uh, so actually, you're in zugzang. A3 move says you're in zugzang. Yeah. Very cla Oh, very classic move. I like A3. <laughs> And Cosine claims that Nepo looks surprised every single time. Every one uh, of his maybe, opponents makes maybe a move. Maybe he has some um, queen f4. Yeah, I was thinking that's maybe only chance. To try to stop this f4 ideas. But then if white switches queen e7. Uh, his stuff is really hanging. Oops. It's playoff season. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> go, Fabi. And then if queen back to c7. Ah, uh, okay. Then f4. <laughs> ah, you go. Yeah. Yeah, a3 is a very classy move, guys. This is a move like uh, I've got everything under control. No need to panic. <laughs> queen f4, king a2. <laughs> yeah, from Friedel. Friedel's plan is to take on d7 and let you queen on h1. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that's, that's Kasparovian. Yeah, Kasparovian, but with sort of like an endgame twist almost. Fabi has less than one minute per move. Right, pretty low. No increment, folks. Got to get to move 40. He's and on And you 35. can't do pre-moves. There is no mouse. So as long as you can physically make a move, I think you should win. <laughs> But it's also so hard for white to mess this up, right? I mean... 
because like Black just has no moves. Yeah, as long as he doesn't just totally lose his mind, <laughs> I think so. Oh boy. Nepo is not happy. Yeah, if you take a position that's interesting to you and you go and try and play it out from the winning side or the better or the side that has the advantage, that's a pretty good exercise. And if it's from a position or a game you care about, you know, you're more invested in it and uh, you're more likely to remember what you do and what you learn. We got a move. Queen e5. Mm. Now against king a2, he's got queen e6. He's like, take that, Friedel. <laughs> mm, queen e5 is clever. Mm -hmm. Stops queen e7, stops f4. Stops king a2. Stays in the game a little longer. <sighs> oh, maybe even rook h8 could be played in some scenario. Like here, rook h8, queen d7, h1 queens, queen b7, mate. There's mate. Mm -hmm. What if we go f4, just give the pawn, and then go king a2? Yeah, f4 is always a good move. Mm-hmm. Uh, just to not worry about those H pawn tricks. Yeah, we don't need two pawns to win these positions. Just deal with it. Because black is so paralyzed. Who cares about the F pawn? Mm -hmm. I but looked... it's also a little bit difficult psychologically to play a move like that. I had looked at queen H4, and then that walks into rook H8, right? Mm -hmm. So that's showing that we have to be careful. Friedel suggests queen h6 instead, really inviting rook h8, because what Friedel wants to do is slip across. Queen h6 is six. Uh, pretty sneaky. Also, it stops knight c5. Yeah. Any knight moves. Oh, played. Queen played! H6. Oh my god, that's such that's, an amazing move. That's an evil Nepo move. Nepo again surprised, yeah. <laughs> is oh. Nepo surprised by that too? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's a brilliant move right there. Ooh. Queen c6. Sneak in there. He's okay, not so quite threatening rook d7. Back. Then can we even go just rook c1? We just force yeah, our queen way. c6 is probably forced, right? Or queen c7, rook c1, there's still knight c5. Mm -hmm. How about queen c7, f4? f4, yeah. Now knight c5. Two minutes though for four moves. Jeez. Oh, yeah, the Yojimbo, Yojimbo, we got to stick on the Fabi Nepo game here because they're under time pressure, still trying to make move 40. So, yeah. Whatever so. Gukesh and Nock are doing, we're going to miss out for the moment. And we'll we'll recap. We'll look over it later on in our show. Speaking of, recap's going to be late tonight. Like, I can't walk away. <laughs> <laughs> I just got to stay till the game's in. Mm. Your employer might, you know, employers generally don't take excuses. Yeah, but it's a religious thing, so. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> you'll, you'll have quotes from Jesse in, in the court case. <laughs> oh, yeah, of course. Absolutely, it's a religion. Yeah, classical chess. And queen h6. Queen c7, I think. Played. Yeah. Finally gonna go f4, maybe? Mm-hmm. F4 is the simplest. At this point, like, why overthink? Yeah, five, you got two minutes. A four knight c five. Maybe. Mm -hmm. Still yeah, some. That's why I, feel like, I feel like he doesn't want to hang. I think g five. Yeah, lead. Goes up. 
I'm pumped for you. <laughs> <laughs> wow, G5. I just have a feeling like he just doesn't want to leave his bishop hanging. <laughs> just no chance. Yeah, and he's just making sure if black ever moves the knight, then h2 will bundle tang at the end. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Good check. Okay, yeah, this is a very strong move. I like this. Yeah, a3, queen h6, and g5, I feel like are extremely classy. Mm -hmm. Technical chess, like zero risk, total paralysis. Beautiful. Plus with, you know, one and a half, two, three minutes on the clock as he's making these moves. Man. Yeah. That bishop's still on e4. What a game. Yeah. Showed the power of that bishop for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, domination of bishop overnight. Now Bo just has to find <clears throat> some trick in these last three moves, otherwise just completely over. Yeah, if you give Fabi another thirty minutes. That's it. Yeah, it's guaranteed. Okay. Think he moved the rook. Rook G eight. That's his chance. Okay, there's Queen E six. Maybe rook g5. How about g6? Yeah, I was then the knight's g4. free, huh? g6, a horse, and the knight gets free. Maybe knight. Oh, one minute, Fabi, you gotta make a move. Queen h7 forces the rook back. Maybe f4 now. It's queen f4, queen c6. Oh, rook mm -hmm. h1 played. Okay. Really? Good enough. At least that's a move. Yeah, there was huh. a suggestion for rook takes d7, queen h2 in the chat looked possible. Yeah, I looked at that and I didn't really see the point slash follow up. Yeah, like maybe it's just to play g6 and win down in exchange because your bishop and pawns are good enough, which I believe. But to me, queen h7 was a really clean move, like just re tying black up and advancing the g pawn further. And with this but move, I guess he's just going to clean up h Maybe black could take on g5. Yeah, yeah. Have, yeah, queen h7 or g5. Because there's h1 tricks. Oh, because you can't... Because you're still tied to the pawn, huh? Yeah, this is the cleanest. I like this. Seems safe. Yeah. So queen h7, rook g5, f4 would have won, though. But you'd have to calculate. Live position, knight c5 Apple. was just played. Knight c5. Two moves to make in 46 seconds. I would definitely try to leave myself 10 seconds to make my move. <laughs> <laughs> well, we only have to make two moves. Okay, so hard right is probably here. off the charts. I mean, bishop c2? Bishop h7. Oh. Mm -hmm. Bishop h7 is not bad. Oh, okay. And now he has 30 seconds to play g6 next move. Yeah, or queen h2 first. Yeah, know, just the take rook, the pawn. If the rook queen wanders h2. away, he can go queen h2, mm -hmm. get queens off the board, and he's already got control of the square for the pawn. 30 mm -hmm. seconds left to play one move. Seems doable. So let's Finally, let's he's in control. He's got his 30-second increment. <laughs> rook d8, queen h2, rook d1, check. Rook d8, queen uh -huh. h2, rook d1, king a2. Queen of seven. Queen of seven. Well, yeah. it's pinned. So it's can... pinned. Rook takes oh. h1. Yeah. And then queen you have f7. to go rook h1 first and then queen f7. And then we uh -huh. can come back to b1 and. Yeah, still win. No worries. Oh, boy. Okay, don't miss it, Fabi. It's pinned. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Holy moly. Chat wondering about rook takes g5, queen takes g5, queen h7. Yeah, it's a little bit of a chance, but presumably still winning for white with a passed f pawn and the h pawn covered. Something yeah, else should win. Rook versus knight, I think, too good. 
After queen, eight, if in the rook takes g5 line, queen h7 is check, so white can't do queen g3 or anything to clean up just yet. Uh, they should avoid king c1, knight b3, uh, and play something like king a1. Yeah, king a1, knight b3, king a2. And knight b3, king a2. And then queen f7. Oh, he does take on g5. Game goes on. Rook g5 played. Oh. Yeah, he played it. Yeah. Feels like that's his best chance. All right, five to take the rook. Yeah, there's nothing else. If it was a few moves earlier, it could have given Fabia a scare, but at this point, he has no choice. Mm hmm. All right, 40 moves played. Can't lose the game now on time. So they make time control. Whew. Okay, can we just quickly figure this out? So what's happening here in that like king a1, knight b3 line? Um, yeah. Like so an like, encounter play or knight b3, king a2, or... queen f7. <laughs> I think yeah. is the idea. But and what's the threat really? Maybe some perpetual, but you have a move. Uh, in theory, if it were black's move, they could go knight c1, king b1, queen a2. Queen a1, right. take the rook. I but think what, you, what you're wondering H2? is, can we just take h2, right? That's right. what you want to know. Yeah, rook h2 is important because it also covers the h7 square. Because black could have this idea to go like knight d2 check, king a1, knight b3 back, king b1, and then the queen has no squares on this diagonal. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, rook h2 because you're all starting your own stuff now. So Rick H2 is... All right, once we find a clean win for Fabi, I'll go get ready for the recap. <laughs> yeah, this is an easy win. Okay, good. Yeah. One more question. Rook takes H2. Oh, yeah, I think I already solved this before. If Queen takes F3, removing our passed pawn on that side of the board, Queen D8 check, and Rook H7 with mate in a little bit. Yeah, or you also have Queen G8 check. Pick up the knight. Oh, and take the knight? Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, so guys, who who do you think is going to win the tie break? Fabi or Gukesh? That's the big What's the format even? How many games do they play? I think it's two rapid games, then two blitz games or something like that. Uh, yeah, okay. I have to look up the... Uh... 15 plus 10, I think. It's a 1-3-0 game. <laughs> <laughs> Two fifteen ten. Kukesh game e five played. They've only played one move in that entire time scramble. <laughs> <laughs> They're just looking over the whole time. So now Gukesh is gonna push here for a while because Ah, oh, there's nothing to push. There's nothing to push. I, th <laughs> I think a tie break between Fabi and Gukesh is Probably like 5% in Fabi's favor, but pretty much pretty close. You know, maybe 55, 45. I think a bit more than that. Yeah, Fabi I definitely is, think it's uh, Fabi who is favorite. I don't know by how much. He's really improved his rapid. And I feel like he's had so many playoffs now. Like he's just got a lot of experience. Mm -hmm. But all psychologically, he like almost had no chances. And now with all all of these wins in a row, he's like flying. Yeah, the I self confidence think the is also very much in his favor. The mm -hmm. self confidence is through the roof. Yeah, but all those factors. I mean, how how much do you ever think they add up to? You know, like people still have whatever their class is, right? And you've got a tough opponent. It's not like it's not like he's a hundred points above his opponent or two hundred <laughs> points above him. That's true, yeah. It's hard to say what the number is like. So, King A1 was played here, like we expected. Um, Let me see their head, head to head. Uh, Chat wants to know if Kostya could win this position as white against Nepo or Karyakin. With his eyes closed. 
Um, let's just say no. <laughs> <laughs> so more this. Yeah. So Caruana against Gukesh. Mm -hmm. Um, Caruana lost to him with White and the Olympiad. Mm -hmm. All right. Then he beat him in Tata Steel 2023. Then he beat him again in Norway Blitz. Then he lost to Armageddon Blitz. And then he beat him. He beat him again in, in Rapid. He beat him in Blitz. He lost in Blitz. So they've played Rapid before. Yeah. So it looks like he's uh he's got the better the better record. But he has definitely lost to him. Mm-hmm. Well, and also, I mean, most of those games are from a year ago. Uh, two years ago, but mostly one ago. year ago. Yeah. Right. And Gukesh is already way better than he was a year ago, right? He's better than he was. I feel six like he's way better than he was a tournament ago. <laughs> yeah. He's like considerably better than he was at Wake on Zay, right? So, um, yeah, I mean, or, I think... or at the Prague or whatever that was the last the Prague tournament. Prague Masters yeah. last month. Yeah. yeah last month. <laughs> yeah. So I think I think like you know what what what's a reasonable assessment if somebody says it's like 70 30 I think they're just like crazy that would be like the assessment if if he were playing somebody 125 points below him Yeah plus like I feel like even though Caruana is in great shape after all Gukesh is younger mm -hmm. and in the faster time controls I feel like if your brain is slightly slower mm -hmm. I feel like that's also not great. So there is this uh, age. While we can give Caruana the benefit of the experience, but Gukesh has the benefit of the age and maybe a little bit sharper. So sure. they may cancel each other out. And like he's in good form too, right? So they're both. Oh yeah, in good he's form. in Gukesh is in great form. Yeah. Yeah. So it's almost like who wakes up better <laughs> and better. Maybe preparation has a little bit of mm -hmm. who is gonna have a little bit better prepared. Who sleeps better on a particular day? Yeah, so like the non-tangibles. All right, so Friedel asking, what about an idea queen c2 here, sort of covering h2 and encroaching on the king? And one idea I'll just demonstrate would be that if white checked and went and took the h-pawn, then black has knight b3, king a2, knight c1 with a perpetual. Yep, well, you can give you a rook, but then... Yeah. But our queen's even dangling, right? Wait, how did this happen? I uh, just tried queen c2. And then I just showed the idea that if white uses checks to go take on h2 with the queen, it's a mistake. Ah, oh, right. Yeah, okay. So how do we stop knight b3? We could go queen g8 check ourselves and put the king on a2. Or is it possible to go queen d8, queen d1? Yeah, that might be three, king a2, black doesn't have any more check. Yeah, that may be an idea as well. But then maybe they move the queen somewhere else. It's like back to the C3. queen on d1 feels a little bit odd with the rook on h1. I mean, maybe it's still win. Like this, huh? Yeah, Jan would still rather take a perpetual than just lose. That's for sure. There's no value in losing. Maybe like some queen f2, queen g2 move. Oh, there's a good suggestion in the chat that after queen takes, rook takes, knight b3, and then knight d2. That How is... do you push f4 there? That's insane. Trying to take this f pawn, 
It's got to run. Good call, Max. I think we just go F4, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, F4. Knight F4. of 3, rook H1. Right, knight of 3, rook H1. Or maybe knight of 3, rook D7, rook H7 is more accurate. Ooh. Yeah, you don't want to put your rook on the passive square. you got to be active. Okay, but black can play king c6 to take away that square. f5, knight f3, f6, knight g1, f7. That would be winning for white, right? Easy win, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, seems very kind of obsessive, but... What was the other move we were you suggested, David? Oh, against queen, queen c2? two. I was saying queen g8 check, king queen moves, G8, queen, and uh, king a2, and right? then king a2, just covering, just covering that move. I suppose then, black's wanting to try something like a4. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, and the question is, how do you get rid of the h2 pawn? Mm-hmm. And yeah, so they want to bring the tricks. knight. They want to bring the knight to b3 now. Yeah, that book could still drag this out for a while. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like what is white's winning plan? There is, I don't even see one. <laughs> it's so, so well, hard. I was thinking I'd go queen d5. And push the pawn. Queen c2 was played, by the way. Yeah, and then I was, depending where black goes, I was thinking maybe I'd start pushing the f-pawn. The f-pawn is the key. Mm-hmm. Um, knight b3, knight c1, maybe is my idea. Yeah, this is gonna take a while to convert, not as easy as I thought it would be. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, I think I have to run, but uh, right. yeah, I'm gonna call it a Fabi win with some uh, technique. So far, he's been playing fantastic, and then. Mm -hmm. Gukesh, Naka, probably just a draw. I don't see any hope. Yeah. Or black to try anything. Yeah. And then we... exciting uh, playoff tomorrow, right? Mm hmm. Yeah. All right. Thank you, guys. It's been oh, a yeah. pleasure. Thanks for being here, Eugene. Yeah. Bye, Eugene. All right. Bye. Oh, and Kosti is gone right now, huh? He's. Uh... Yeah, he snuck out. He's changing. I think generally is what he does at this time. So let me just fix this video real quick, folks. Guess cam, why cam, Jesse cam. Jesse hasn't popped on at any point this weekend, has he? No, he's playing a tournament himself yeah, this weekend. Yeah, I, I know so. actually a couple of my friends are playing that same tournament. Oh, cool. Yeah. Jesse's trying to scrap it out with all the youngsters. Yeah, apparently he's having a tough time of it today. That's what I heard. All right, so I've seen folks in chat saying all this engine stuff. Look, um, it's, it's not kind of you to come into our place and do something that we've asked you not to do here. It's very unkind. You can go talk about the engine basically anywhere else without bothering and ruining things for hundreds of people here who have come here because they prefer it without the engines. You have to understand, like, whatever, the 800 people who are here, they have voted that this was what they wanted right so you're you're just being mean to all those people you're coming into their space and their place in order to ruin things for them with absolutely nothing to gain for you if you want to tell us that we're wrong to do engine without commentary you can do it at any other time and give your give your reasons somewhere else about it, right? We've had open discussions. We brought a guest on with your incorrect opinion to argue it with us. You can argue it in the comments sections, etc. But 
I'm not going to argue with you right now about whether or not to do it. I'm just telling you it's unkind and we'd like you to not do it. Okay? Thank you. And now we're going to get back to looking at this, at these games. And you guys are welcome to go somewhere else if you think that their stream is better than ours, you know? That's totally fine. And you don't even have to tell us why. You can just tell us, I think that other stream's better. I'm leaving. Great. I mean, not great because we were trying to do a good job, but that's fine. We wouldn't be offended by that. Okay. Yeah. So back to our position. We've got Hikaru against Gukesh here with e4 played by Gukesh. A trade happens. Bishop comes to b5. Gukesh plays bishop e7, trying to maybe make Naka fight for his rook's position. Um, yes, plays king e3. H4. And... Yeah, king e3 could be played as well. H4. Against king e3, I don't know for sure what black would play. Either bishop c5 or rook b4, I guess. Can you be able to push him back? H4, I like that. Yeah, move, I was honestly. thinking right before, and then I like it. Five next. Yeah. That guy's just trying to trade some juicers. Yeah, and so now there's like an H pawn and an E pawn. Honestly, if either of them lost their pawn, it would still be a draw because of you know the bishop's ability to blockade. But with rooks on the board, it's better not to. Um, position looks very very equal you know perfect perfect play from naka in the end game here yeah well i'll just say folks like if black were able to you know maybe establish the pawn on g4 and freeze two pawns with one that could be a small advantage um but honestly i can't even really say if gukesh were to play in where hikaru played h4 how he would really try to advance or improve his position the white kings on a light square stopping this pawn you can't quite trap a rook. It's got too much space. Like you go king g6, the rook takes your bishop. Um, and uh, yeah, there's not really anything that I see that he could try to do to try and squeeze here. I mean, would you have any ideas, Max, of what you would try and do if you were playing a must-win situation or a weaker opponent or just felt like making some more moves. <laughs> to try to play this as a win as black? Yeah. Mm. I mean, the only way I can see is if you can get your king to like F4 and, and push the white king back. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, you have to move the bishop first, so like maybe bishop C5. Mm-hmm. I mean, white should be able to just bring their rook around to stop that. Yeah. Yeah, rook b4, bishop c5 would be the one way to try and take away mm -hmm. the squares around the white king and push it back with rook b2, etc. So yeah, I mean, be... if you can get bishop c5, rook b2, force the king to the back rank and bring your own king in, you know, there's still some back yeah. rank stuff. Yeah, if your pawn gets strong enough and white's king is badly placed, you can even forget about your g-pawn, right? And you just rush your king in as the last attacker, play for checkmate. Because that is what um that is what obstacle bishops are good for, right? It's playing for checkmate, not queening pawns. Um, yeah. I want to say thanks to all the uh, computer engine people for having desisted after my plea. Or left, one or the other, but either way, I appreciate it. We all do. Yeah. Okay. Boop the engine folks. <laughs> so we played h4. Boop. Traded, traded. Rook b4. I begged them while you were away, Kostya. No, I heard. I heard. Yeah. Um, I also I thought it was kind of funny how many people like basically told on themselves <laughs> on, on King A1 because they're like, uh oh. <laughs> they're like, hmm, is it still winning? Uh <laughs> yeah. Okay, so now what Naka's done is he's cut off the black king from its past pawn. Uh, and he's stopping the move bishop c5. So, yeah. So he seems to be 
Yeah, he seems to be more or less stopping any active plan for Gukesh here. Um, then on the other board, we had Queen C2 played and Queen G8 check King A7, King A2, which was my suggestion to, suggestion to stop Knight B3. I would expect A4 still trying to get near the white king. But actually, I didn't even look at Knight D3. Knight D3, Queen B3, there's Knight C1, right? Yeah, and why might even lose there? Uh, yeah, we never cleaned up the H-pawn yet. Um, so hang on. So King A2 is the live position. I just assumed A4. This is my first time noticing Knight D3 as a candidate. Hmm. Yeah, that's concerning. How many moves stop checkmate? I guess any queen... I mean, we could play queen h8 and it would cover the mate. We could go queen g7 check first if we wanted, king a6, and then queen h8. So we're covering the checkmate. And we're covering the h-pawn. And we've got queen a8 coming. But now black delivers the whole knight c1 thing, right? I was so yeah, busy. Yeah, we just have to go for the queen end game. Because going through d3 instead of b3, it has the same knight c1, b3 pattern without going through b3. Oh, Friel says we can get to c3 instead of h8. Okay, that looks more hopeful. Mm. Yeah, that actually maybe does something. And even on queen g2, take the knight with check and then mop up. Okay, queen c3. Queen c3. Hmm, that seems to do it. Yeah. Zirk confirms queen c3 stops knight c1. Zirk and Friedel used to stream together, and now they're in two different platforms. They're they're like ships <laughs> passing in the night, one of them commenting on YouTube, one on, on Twitch. <laughs> okay, so Friedel saying maybe knight a4 instead of knight d3 to not allow this, but from a4, the knight's got no other roots either, right? So hang on, king a2, knight a4. Um, but now we can go to b3 instead of c3, right? That, that'll, that'll be okay. Like queen g2 maybe? Queen g2. Annoying. Very annoying. You gotta go for that same rook end game, right? All I see is rook h2. Unless there's some kind of mating construction. A4 played. What was played? A4? A4. A4. Okay. My first assumption. What if, David, here you go rook d1? I was thinking you can go rook d1 and go for mate. Okay, give me, it sorry, give me work. the line. It's the knight a4 line. Queen b3, queen g2, rook d1. Okay, so black queens, and then you go rook d7. If king a6, you definitely have a checkmate right here. Boop, ba doop, ba doop. You just walk around all the black pieces like you're skipping around. Yep. And if the king goes to the back rank, a8, there's queen d5 and mate, so f8. Yeah, you don't have queen g8. That's unfortunate. Yeah. And any preparatory move, black has queen b2 check. Ay, ay, ay. There's one way. This this looks like not mate. This one option here. Maybe queen f7 instead would do it, though. King a6. King a6 because of rook d8 otherwise, right? Queen check. Now if the king comes back, our queen has c7 square. So rook d7 is mate. So it has to be b5. And we go queen c8. And that's checkmate, right? Woo! Classic plan. Looks like it. Good idea, rook d1. So that's really good calculation, folks. But irrelevant now because a4 was played. But it gives us a sense, like if you're trying to calculate knight d3, a4, knight a4, and you've got 10 move variations, um, most of us just can't make it through all of those variations fast enough. At least that's what I find lately. It's like I can calculate the lines, but not all of them fast enough. 
It's weird that they're still playing. I thought um, once the engine says equal, the arbiter just stops the clock and forces the players to agree to a draw. <laughs> but no, game continues. Amazing. <laughs> Max, Oski boys or Oski boy boy is asking if you played the Bradley Open. Bradley Open. I don't think I played that one, but maybe a different tournament. Okay, so a four rather than knight d three. So if I can try and remember what my plan was against a four long ago, the knight's coming to b three. I wanted to. Or it could even go to d3 because we don't have queen b3 anymore. <sighs> can Fabi get the h2 pawn and avoid perpetual? That's the world championship spot question, casual player. We assumed he could. Eugene guaranteed Kostyad that with his eyes closed, he could win this position against Nepo. He that promised was, me. That was the Eugene guarantee slash promise. Yeah. Oh, man. Uh, chess for noobs. The statuses, I think, are accurate. Let's see. Abasov and Prague are still playing. Um, Naka and Gukesh, let's see if they're still playing. I mean, yeah, they're still playing, I guess. <laughs> so yeah, it's all still accurate. Uh, basically, the two key games to decide are, right, Fabi, Nepo, and Naka versus Gukesh. I mean, Naka versus Gukesh, someone would have to have a heart attack for it not to end in a draw. This one is like... Because there's all kinds of equal, right? There's equal and anybody could win. Three results. Equal and it's sharp. Equal and it's boring. This one's really, really likely to be a draw. So uh, then it's on Fabi to win this to force a tie break. He's got Rook against Knight. But hasn't been able to clean up the H2 pawn yet. And there's weird mating slash perpetual attacks with Queens and Knights. As many people know, those two pieces can just whip up a huge storm with just two little pieces. Bobby Nepo, though, maybe we should downgrade to white better. To white better? Yeah. Okay. We're still kind of assuming it's winning somehow. Uh, I'll believe it when I see it. <laughs> Gukesh is a bit low on the clock and is looking a little bit nervous this round. You know, I didn't... People said that he would be under pressure and would crack, and I didn't say that 100% he wouldn't. I just said we don't know for sure if he will or won't. And I can say that he played part of the game really well and really energetically. I think he played fine in the opening, middle game. And then at some point, as the result was really like right in grasp, he did seem to start freaking out a little bit, spending a lot of time looking at the other board. So if there's a playoff tomorrow, he'll have to uh, calm down by then. <laughs> I expect he will. Okay, so back to calculating this super, super mess, right, folks? Um, Fabi 17 minutes they've got a 30 second increment from here till forever Nepo 24 what was I don't even remember my original plan against A4 so if we go for that same queen g7 queen c3 it's mm -hmm. different here though right because the knight on c5 blocks things mm -hmm. right so we wouldn't be threatening mate against queen g2 so if we go check here queen c3 queen g2 for example Rook d1 is not going to be any kind of mating attack. It doesn't even look like a threat, right? <laughs> so yeah. we would now need something like queen c4 check, king a7, queen f1. But then I think black just swings back to c2, right? And we never have time to encircle this pawn. Our queen just has to go too far away from the action. Yeah. 
right? We have to play moves like queen back to d1, queen back to g2. Ay, ay, ay. I mean, we could play something sneaky. Queen b1 is sneaky. But knight d3 maybe even. I'm trying to be sneaky by threatening queen h7. And if you think you're sneaky with king a6, I go queen f1. <laughs> Probably king b8 is okay. I don't really believe in this prone first rank defense, honestly. Yeah. Yeah, pushing our f pawn might be a move if we're ever frozen to push the f pawn and see if that can release the pressure. If black can be forced to go chase it down and we could collect the h pawn, that would be amazing. Oh, queen g8 here. Queen g8 where? After queen b1. Oh, shoot. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, that's going to hurt. Yeah, okay, we don't have that. King a1, knight b3. My analysis just now, it was so good, it caused somebody to realize that if Fabi loses this game, we would get a <laughs> Nepo Gugash tiebreak, and possibly Nepo Ding is still in the cards. <laughs> it's not out of the question that he loses. Like, in a normal situation, I think... That would be unlikely. Yeah, I mean, if I could blunder it, anybody could. No. Sorry. So, so A4. I'm going to cheat and one. scroll up and see if I had any good an analysis on A4 before. Nope, nothing too useful. <laughs> sure, oh, boy. Push the f-pawn and make a queen is once again the suggestion, yeah. Um, let's see, can he just push the f-pawn here with his queen in contact with this right now? Let's let's try it since we're asking, right? Since they're asking, let's try it. Knight right. d3. f4. Knight d3 or b3? d3, right? More threatening. Because you threaten a mate and this thing. Oh yeah, uh, this one. Queen g7, king a... I don't know, king a8. Yeah, king a6 looks most natural. Yeah. I played the not natural move now, and queen comes back to c3 here. Hmm. Okay. Again, this looks like it worked out for white, right? So if queen g2, that's what we were saying before, right? Mm-hmm. Is there something? There's rook h2. Oh, but now the f pawn's hanging, unfortunately. Yeah, like you can pick up the a4 pawn, but that looks... Well, we can pick up everything, actually. Take b6 with check. Oh, the a4 ah, pawn's yeah, defended. Jesus, Louise. Oh, a4 is defended, yeah. Oh, yeah. my God. Ah, we can't quite win this, I don't think. No. Wait, but can you go? Yeah. In that line, can you go queen before at the end? Oh, but there's queen f7 check, right? Okay. Oh, I see what you want to say. So you want to go here, 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 and then play queen before to try and force black's hand on the a pawn, and then they have to go queen f7. They have to go queen f7, yeah. Yeah. Hey guys, I should I should start making my way over to the club for the recap. Okay. Um, let me just uh, well, I guess let me cover both bases. All right. Yeah. Let me first uh, first potentially congratulate Gukesh on an amazing <laughs> win. Uh <-huh. laughs> Might happen if that does. I mean, absolutely sensational. All credit to the kid. And uh, otherwise, I will see everyone here tomorrow for the playoff. <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen, but uh -huh. one of those two things, obviously. In the Gukesh game, they've traded one more pawn. Yeah. So now Can it's rook and one pawn one. instead of rook and two. Aye, aye, aye. 
Okay, so Kosi, you you're just going to go over there and watch the end of the Fabi game and then record, right? You're not going to pop back into our Zoom, or? Yeah, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm too invested now. Actually, this game is too painful. To it's watch. driving you too crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I won't be of much help. I'm just like, come on, Fabi, get him. Get yes, him. come on, Fabi, get him. That's the full commentary. <laughs> come on, Fabi, get That's him. My... That's my thought process. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, not too different so... than with engine uh, commentary, where they just say, "Find the engines move." Can you find the engine's move? He will find the engine's move. Might he find the engine move? <laughs> exactly. Um, All right. Yeah, guys, it's been fun. Uh, what yeah. a great day. Uh, dramatic. Max, great seeing you. Thanks for coming on. Yeah, it's your ghost, Jim. We'll see you all. Take care, folks. All right. So how are you feeling, Max? Um, are you planning to like stick around to the end, or are you tired? Yeah, I mean, I, I was hoping that it would just be over soon, yeah. <laughs> but now it's dragging out. I sometimes hit that point where I'm like, maybe they, like, I'm having so much fun, but maybe they could finish now. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'll stick it out for a little longer at least. Okay. Cool. Well, you're free to do whatever you want. We're happy to have... I'm very happy to have you here. Um, but, yeah. Yeah, I know it gets tiring. Good, man. If he doesn't win this, like, I'll cry. Like, what does it take to win a game? Yeah. Especially against Nepo, right? It's just... That guy is, like, the hardest to kill. Yeah, I mean, he really does have nine lives. All right, so Gukesh has finally forced White's king to a bad square. I mean, he's just playing on forever, Gukesh. Yeah, they're just keeping this going so they have an excuse to watch the other game. You think so? I mean, they could also finish and watch, no? Or would and they be they? kicked? They'd I mean, be kicked out of the hall. Yeah, I mean that they become spectators at that point and they get booted. Oh, so they'd have you know fifteen minutes in the balcony or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's happened to me like in tournaments you know you don't want to stick around and watch your friends play and then the, the the director goes wait are you still playing uh no it's like oh you're a spectator get out aye, aye, aye. that's that's harsh <laughs> okay so maybe gukesh is trying to win and maybe he just wants to watch a little bit longer Do I think it's Gukesh who plays on? I think they've both been trying to play on, Naka and Gukesh. But, you know, the opposite-colored bishop situation has been a little bit inexorable with equal pawns. But technically, Gukesh's pawn is one step further advanced, and Naka's king is on the first rank. So right now, it would be Gukesh symbolically wanting to play on. It's really, really drawish here. In the meantime, Fabi played f4 after a 14-minute think. Yeah, okay, so f4. So that was, ooh, and now he's, you know, now he's under 10. So 14 minutes And how spent. much added time do they get? 30 seconds a move. Oh, so they get 30 now, okay. Yeah. It's it's enough to, you know, well, I've got a lot of experience playing endgames like that now. It's enough to not do anything, like, completely stupid, but it's not enough to really accurately figure out any study like moves uh, obviously they're better than me i mean yeah. I've, seen, I've seen magnus solve an end game study in 30 seconds but i don't I mean, think that's normal it's it's just like still so tricky here you have to really watch out yeah with the queen and knight here there's all kinds of combinations still so he played the very interesting move f4 we had a line that was going knight d3 white bringing the queen to c3 black going queen g2 we had a long line there. Um, yeah, Nordovic was on was on the F4 team of those going for this. Um, Yeah, if somehow Fabi can't convert this, it's going to be one of the more shocking escapes we've witnessed 
and Nepo's had like three or four of them this tournament. And uh, I don't know what to say. I mean, he, he almost couldn't move during that whole middle game we were watching. And he was down material. It's like, what? Yeah. It's ridiculous. <sighs> no, it reminds me I've had plenty of games like that where it's like, you're like low on time before control, before move 40. And then you think like, okay, I'll just make some moves and then I'll have a lot of time after and I'll convert. And then you're looking at it after the time controller. Like, how do I win this now? I must have messed it up. Oh, yeah, it's definitely skill from Nepo. Like, you know, when it's multiple times per tournament and it's not happening for anybody else, it's skill. In general, all these players are hard to beat, right? They all, it feels like you have to beat them 10 times in one game to score a point. But Nepo is is in a special category of his own here. If the F and H pawns traded here, interesting question. Because somebody was asking, what's the point of F4? And I said, well, one point would be to queen it. The other point would be to make black, you know, go capture it, distract their pieces so that you could get the H2 pawn off the board. And then, of course, good question is, well, if those pawns came off the board, what's that scenario? So which line were we more annoyed about again? Is it the knight d3 or the it was the knight d3 line, right? Yeah, the knight d3 line is what we looked at more and we reached kind of a draw against knight b3. I think we just haven't looked at it as deeply recently, so I don't know. <laughs> yeah, we should look at knight b3 as well, I think, because I think we only really looked at knight d3. Mm -hmm. um, because, yeah, it's going to have this advantage someone just mentioned in chat um, that with the knight on b3, if we try and control c1 by going queen g7, king here, queen c3, the knight's not hanging on d3. It's defended on b3. So then queen g2... We could go back to the first rank. Yeah, I guess. It just looks so passive. Queen one, I guess. Threatening queen f one. Like, does black have knight e two? After queen e one. Yeah. Trying to basically trap white's pieces there on the first rank. Yeah, and you have some queen d5 ideas as well. Right, so you stop queen f1. You've got a queen d5, knight b3 idea maybe. And you might even have like a knight f3, knight g1 idea. Right. If you trap that rook on h1, then obviously white's not winning. Same. <laughs> uh, um, judo chess, the, the chances of Hikaru or Gukesh winning their game are less than 1%. And Nepo just played at knight b3. Okay, he went for knight b3 just now? Yeah. And he still kept a bit more time on his clock. That idea of yours with knight d2 was pretty strong. That was, that was evil. <laughs> So here the threat is knight c1. And it, against knight c1, like if I just play some waiting move, well, not a waiting move, rookie one's pretty punchy, right? Trying to checkmate. Um, knight c1, king a1, knight b3. So I can't get away with just the king. So I have to sack the exchange. Then I can win the h2 pawn. The problem is, yeah, even when you take the h2 pawn with the pawn on a4, there's just so many perpetual ideas. Exactly. So there's just check, k4, 
king here. They immediately come after the king like this. Check here. Check. You can't keep going along the second rank because of queen b2. So you have to go like king e1. And then I think black and... No! Oh, don't encroach like that. Ay, ay, ay. Queen endings are... are a mess. Actually, white still gets oh, to play okay. this position, huh? Okay, we have one trick. <laughs> yeah. Something. Well, and our queen's covering both pawns, and we didn't immediately get perpetualed. Maybe instead of queen f1, I should have started here. But here, I mean, still coming out eventually. You know, and the queen can block as well. Huh. Ah, you could still play this queen ending in that line. But, okay, he didn't even go rookie one. We've got a move already. Fabi played queen g7, check. So, presumably to transfer the queen to c3, like we talked about, and then there's queen g2 and so on. Oh, and in the meantime, we totally forgot, but the Prague game is still going. Right, Abbasov and Prague down. still going. It's down to a rook ending with an extra pawn for Prague, so we can update the evaluation there for anyone. I mean, Prague's mom is probably still watching that game. But anybody watching that game instead of the two we are watching, Prague is better. He's up a pawn. All right, back to Fabi. Naka. Um, threatening bishop h4 check or bishop d2. He's threatening to win this bishop. Nice move, king e2. Yeah, that's clever. Because now bishop h4 is not check, and if you go to d2, he can just play a6 because rook takes, king takes. Yeah. Abdul predicts rook d2, king e1, rook back to d5 now. They've been doing it for a while. Bishop d2 instead. Jeez, he won't quit. That's crazy. What was the idea if Hikaru played a6? Yeah, good question. So a6, check. King e2, rook takes h5, a7. <laughs> Ow. Oh, and still a draw. I guess still a draw, but then white wins black's rook, right? Yeah, and black has to defend. Bishop d2, this is craziness. What is he doing with this instead of repeating? I mean, a6 is very simple here. Yeah, in the Nepo game, we're seeing all the things we were looking at. Queen oh, yeah? c3, queen g2. Okay, queen g7. King there, queen c3, queen g2. And here, the only move we'd looked at so far was queen e1, where Max had this idea knight d2, which looked really evil. Um, there's also queen c4, b5, queen f1. Hmm. Or queen d3 is the same thing, yeah. Queen c8, king a7, playable too, but at some point you have to go help this rook, right? Oh, you maybe want to go rook d1 at some point, right? If you go, sorry, if you go queen c8, king here, you could go rook d1. Oh no, black and queen maybe? And just... Why queen just, c4? Just defend. Okay, you went queen c4. All right, 
So he shouldn't hang the A pawn. B5. If he opens up the king too much, white can, you know, let the pawn queen in some cases, right? So that's what, that's something Nepo has to be careful about is, you know, moving B5 and just opening up the king more and more. Mm -hmm. But also, I mean, king A5, well, king A5 if rook D1, then you queen, right? So king A5, maybe rook E1. Well, I was thinking even king A5, maybe queen B4 and pick up the A4 pawn. Oh, yeah, sorry. That's GG immediately. Nice. Yeah, that's winning. So, king b7, rook e1, queens, rook check, and that's mate. <sighs> okay, I don't see Nepo's move yet here. Queen c4. It looks like we're winning against king a5, king a7, and king b7. All of them, right? So B5, that's the only one we haven't looked at? Only one we haven't looked at yet. Um, now, the queen is stopping queen c6, unfortunately for us. Because ideally, we would go queen c6, king here, queen check, king here, you know, and then bring the rook. Although even there, they can double their queens, right, to start blocking? No, they can't, because the queen's on c6. King here, queen check. Do you think there's mate? I think there's probably mate, honestly. Even with the two queens on the diagonal here. Because um, like king here, check, block, and mate, for example. I know that queen c6 hangs the queen in that other line I showed Oski. I was just saying we would want to play queen here. But we're prevented. So Nepo went king b7. He went king b7? Yeah. Does this not lose to rookie one? Uh, rookie one, queen. Is there some way he can seven, come back? Mate. Rookie one, knight c1, queen takes c1, defends h1. That's it. Oh, um, a blue thing, rookie one, knight c5. Oh my god, retreating the knight? Okay, that prolongs things. Let's see. I mean, rookie one, knight c5, check, king c6, maybe? Ay, ay. Live position is king b7's been played. Get filled to fish. And here, I thought that rookie one would checkmate, but black can retreat the knight and maybe still cover some squares. Why not queen f7 here? I don't know, maybe queen f7 here. There is a 30 second increment, yep. But what if we go queen f1 now? Queen f1 here, right, we didn't talk about that. That's a move too. And then one option is queen d5 for black, right? Mm, yeah, that's that's a good option. We can't go to b1 because of knight d2. It's unfortunate for a moment the square our queen is on. Can't take on h2 because there's again knight d2. Yeah, can't take on h2 because of knight d2. So you have to play like queen d1. Have to make a queen move to avoid the queen Then it's still knight d2 and maybe black has and maybe still knight d2 and here. Or at the very least, they have knight c1. Although knight c1, king b1. Okay, so we're here, good. knight c1, king b1. Oh, and Nepo are um, Naka against Gukesh. Looks like it's going to be that rook against bishop thing. Jesus. Gukesh, this was insane. Although he's going to play e3, and that's an automatic draw. But there's rook check and, and, and queening. 
Oh, you're saying he's going like to anchor the bishop and pawn here? Three, right? I don't know. I don't know. Why did he do this? Oh, why did he do this? If you go e3, I mean, white's king can just move around it. Right, but then you're going to have to watch over the pawn. Should still be a draw. Ideally, he wants his bishop like on d4 and the bishop and pawn on different color squares, honestly. And you just stop all the approaches and, and things. But he played e3. And rookie one ninety five happened in the above the game. Oh, the drama! Oh, the drama, folks. There's only minutes left after two weeks of hours and hours of play and prep. Honestly, you know, a couple months of prep before coming to the tournament. But they've been working at such a hard pace for the last two weeks, and now it's like you know five ten minutes left plus the thirty second increment. Ay yeah yeah. All right, so here we got this knight c5. I don't see a checkmate for Fabi with the whole rook c7 thing. He goes back to f1 with the queen, covering h1. Okay, he does something else. Probably queen d5. Probably queen d5. Is there some way to escape the checks, though? Because king b1, there's queen f5. I lose a draw. Oh, it looks like the pieces came off in this Gukesh game, even though it's not officially showing a draw. It's king versus king. So yeah. that game might be over. Might be officially over. Um, so we'll just... I'll just go update the standings if that's correct, and then we'll keep looking at the other game. I know the other game might be made or not made right now as we're speaking. It's just, if I don't do this, people will tell me my standings are wrong and everything. And Okay, so let's get back to it. Did they ever put official? Not really. Fide candidates. Candidates. They're showing an official draw there. Okay, back to Nepo. And Fabi, queen f1, queen d5 played, king here. Right, he could not go to a1 because the queen's on that unfortunate f1 square. Knight b3 would have done it, right? So queen yeah. d5, king b1. And now what? And now what? We don't know. Queen f5? Queen f5? It would be king a1, knight b3, king a2, queen back to d5. I don't know. I don't know. Queen f5, king c1 looks super dicey. Because there's knight b3 or knight d3. Mm-hmm. Queen f5 played. Friedel says we wouldn't be able to go back to d5 in that other position because of queen h1. Good call. If black did this, good question, Isaac. Queen here, queen here, knight here, rook h1, knight f4, rook h2. You're asking, isn't it dead drawn? I don't know. I think you lose. I think you lose. Because your rook is going to cut the king off from like defending the a4 pawn, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, there's cracks in this pawn structure. The king can come up. You push the other king back with the rook, and then at some point you could even sack an exchange if you're not directly winning one of these pawns. Yeah, no, It'll I definitely think be a dead. super tough hold. Um, I've had it with two pawns against three. And I couldn't win. Rook and two? Yeah, rook and two against knight and three, with the three being like really good, like like healthy. And I couldn't win. 
Um, but it was so tough. I was playing a GM. It was so tough. At some point, they messed up, and I was winning, and then I messed up, and it was drawing again. Um, so, yeah. So that's not an escape for black. I did see that same line as you, um, Isaac, so it's a good question. Okay, king a1 played, Nepo thinking. So what, what somebody pointed out to us was that on knight check, king here, queen d5, white would have queen h1. And you can't go on your rampage because the queens get traded. Yeah, so maybe Fabi's made slight progress in that regard. So what does Nepo still have here? He always has another little something. What, can he just move his king to like a7? Like, do we have a threat? Mm, King a7, rook e7 looks scary. Yeah, Is king, king b8 almost better coming out now? Because we can't leave the last rank with rook and queen. No. If we give rook e7, king b8, we have to maneuver our queen on the first rank, right? Something like queen e1 or d1. Yeah. But Nepo went queen c2. Hmm, okay, just coming back in. So from here, he's maybe threatening knight d3. White's got the h pawn covered when both pieces are in the first rank, but it's hard to win it when both pieces are in the first rank, right? Because they can't attack, only one of them can attack the h2 pawn at a time, right? So it's very hard to make progress when you're just defending like this. Also the queen I feel is like a little more supple for defending b2 and other squares over here than the rook. So I don't know that switching the order is improved, but I mean, it is ha it does have these mating ideas. Now it's hard to go for mate though, because even with one piece off the first rank, there's knight b3, knight c1. Five minutes for Fabi, but bear in mind, he's got the 30 second increment. So he's not going to like lose on time or anything. He goes F5. Yeah, push the pawn whenever you can, Fabi. Oh, he pushed. Holy can I mean, it's it's not nothing every time he pushes this pawn, right? If they maneuver around, like it's not... If the knight and queen keep doing like... They find a three or four move sequence of making threats that you have to defend. And then they have to rearrange for one move and you push the F pawn, right? And they do it again, and you push it again. I mean, yep. it is really difficult. Okay, so this move, I think, I was assuming rook b1 here. But I didn't look at rook e2, really. <laughs> rook e2, queen e2. Now I've looked at it enough. <laughs> <laughs> That's sufficient. And this pawn, queens. Rook b1, knight c5 probably is his idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, his idea, rook b1 just played. His idea is probably to go knight c5. But what does that even do? Knight b3, king here. What if oh, he yeah, just he keeps going? He's like, cool. Keep going back and forth, buddy. Yeah. If it were a bullet game, I would be very scared of your knight. <laughs> um... Watch Hikaru game. The game's over, GM Gorkali. It was a draw. Naka Gukesh. Is the Abbasov game over? Yes, Prague won. This is the only game still going here. He's just driving the F-pawn. I, I just added a few moves of analysis there, folks. The live position is just uh, Rook B1 here, but... We don't currently have he just played it. an idea for Nepo. He's played, no, he hasn't played anything yet. Played rook b1, I mean. Yeah, rook b1 has been played. Maybe there's knight f2 here for Nepo? Knight Is that something? Knight f2? Like trying to queen the pawn? But well, you can give check and take. Yeah, queen right? two. Just take, yeah. And just take it, yeah. Although then black can take on f5, but that should be winning for us. Mm -hmm. mm, but black keeps us working there. 
I don't know. Yeah, but at least then the knight is just so knight far away. Knight c5 played. Okay, so I was wondering if he could just keep going f6 here. There's knight b3, knight d2. But remember, our queen can always make a check, right? And if the f-pawn's far enough, we let the knight take our rook or our queen, right? And we just queen the f-pawn. So f6, knight b3, king a2, knight d2, queen h1 check. King a7, f7. But then there's queen takes b1, queen takes... Oh, there's queen c4, too, in that position. So, um, so like f6, we said, right? Check here, knight d2. I have to play moves so people can see it. Check. King a7, and you said f7 here, right? Yeah, but, but we should probably just move the rook. There's Maybe queen c4. Can we go rook c1? It's because I think f7, exactly. this doesn't look good. Yeah, we want to move our rook here instead. Or actually, we're getting mated. Yeah. Yeah. So here, we've also got our queen on this h2 thing, right? So blacks. Yeah, it's not clear what black's yeah, doing. This is oh, happening yeah. as we speak. We've got moves coming. f6 happened. Knight check. King a2. Oh my gosh. And we can see Fabi actually, he's been playing the last several moves very quickly. He's he's maintained himself right around six minutes. So he's spending only about you know 30 seconds per move consistently here. Knight d2 played, so now queen h1. Yep. And Nepo's time has been ticking down a little bit. He can't he can't quite make it work, right? He's twirling around with the queen and knight. Like, they should be doing evil things. Yeah. How many times have the knight and queen done evil things, right? And it seems like impossible to contain them. And now suddenly they're not doing anything. We think rook c1 is the idea. Oishine, we don't know for sure. Oishine, sorry. We think rook c1 is the idea. Yeah, king a6 looks probably bad because it gives up the a8 square. I would expect king a7, but he's having a full-on thinkaroo. Think a jig There's king a7, as we expected. That's just showing his lack of uh, being confident anymore or having like a specific line planned. But now rook c1 even threatens rook c7. Uh-huh. I don't know if the king gets out. And h2 is hanging. It sort of looks like he's winning. Yeah, what do you do after rook c1? If you have queen b3 check and knight c4? Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, actually, in that case, if white plays rook c4 and queen h2, take there's, on h2, there's queen f1 taking the f6 pawn. So so he would need to def he would need to take a move to defend there, to defend b2. But queen h2, I think, defends it, right? That's what I was thinking earlier when I saw this. On knight a3, pawn takes, queen check, king b1. Queen check, king there, queen check, queen there. Yeah, I think knight c4, queen h2 wins for white. Oh, you were calculating knight a3 there. Mm-hmm, yeah. But we can even go, like, queen c7, maybe? Mm-hmm. And then queen c3 or something like that? Yeah, we could maybe even like ignore it and go check wherever this goes, f7 maybe. I don't know. But but I think it also just doesn't work. Like yeah. You can take, step over here, bring the queen over. Honestly, that's probably not even the best way to win. Your b-pawn, you're right, is probably better just have it play queen c7 and attack the king. Yeah, I wouldn't even just wouldn't bother. Queen c7 here, f7. <laughs> Game over. Knight's not really doing anything more. White's just queening. King a1, there was some move played. Queen e6. On the surface, hopeless. Idea is knight b3, but it's allowing rook c7. And then the king's scrambling out to b5. He's allowing his king to be hunted. Did I predict 3.5 for Abbasov? I don't remember my exact point by points. I think I may have predicted 4 for him. I did work it all out to specific points. Rook c7, king a6, queen a8, king b5. 
Uh, yeah, the Queen on E6 covers a lot of checks. Yeah. If we overcommit, there's a checkmate, Queen E1, Queen B1. Also, we really want to get rid of this H pawn, right? Rather than go wandering too far. Uh, we don't really want to give up this and keep working. Ay, ay, ay. I don't know what's happening at all, folks. Queen takes H2. Still so If we go rook c7 first, it's worse because queen e1's mate. It's better to hang our rook, right? Than to like go check here and grab this pawn. Do you guys see this mating pattern is a real problem? Oh, Abdul's just suggesting this for white. So we'll just complete it to make sure it's clear. Um, so queen e6, we can also take, and then there's check uh, here. Oh my god, he doesn't even have to take the rook, Max? No, the queen's on c2. Okay. Okay, never yeah, mind. Yeah, just yeah. take the rook, take on it. So take the rook. And then... But maybe again, there's still a chance for white here with like check. Oh, so like queen c7 or f7? f7. But knight, the knight stuff to escape perpetual. Knight b3. And queens check here. Check. That's that volatile. Here. Check. Here. Oh, it's, it's not even mate. a perpetual. It's just literally a checkmate. That's the evil that queen and knights do. Somebody's quoting me from another day saying queen and knight are good at giving checkmate. Yeah. Gosh. They are. They are. I stand by what I said. It's weird that somehow they suddenly stopped working for Jan like a couple moves ago. Because <laughs> for a long time it looked like they were working. Um, okay, so I think rook c7 is bad. I think queen h2 immediately. Knight check here. Here this variation. Can we go like queen c7, queen e7? Does that offer any sort of prospects? Nice idea. Queen e7. Ooh, that's a heck of a square. Because then they kind of have to give check, right? Well, if they give check, we take the knight, right? Well, what else? Queen c4? Queen c4 was the move I was thinking. Oh, and F7, but again, like knight b3. All right, so F7, we again go for mate. We've got a live move, so let's you want rook c7. see it. So I have to recatch the live position, folks. Queen e6, rook c7 played. Oh my god, Fabi's going hunting! He's giving up on his own king here and just going for Jan's king. Maybe a move like rook e7 doesn't allow the checkmate. Oh, but it'll allow h1. <gasps> pushes why didn't I consider Bears. him just pushing here we have a knight b3 and knight back to d2 oh does he want to play king he's, c2 he's coming out he's coming out to b1 and everywhere holy smokes so as far as I can tell queen f5 you know, king a2, and black's just going back and forth, right? They're not really, they're just wasting time little by little. Maybe he should have gone queen g6 to g1. Why didn't he do that? Do you see anything wrong with that? Uh, queen, wait, do we have queen b7 and, or queen a8 and queen c6? Uh-huh, and he just Something? goes, oh yeah, and then you've got a4 and you unwind the thing. But there's still knight a5, right? Right, but you've unwound the mating net, 
So now you play with lots of queens, and you you're not afraid. <laughs> yeah, now you promote. You're not afraid. And there's queen c8 mate. Holy moly! In the game, king a2, knight c5 played. Is is h2 just takeable here? That's a question. Queen d5, queen d1, queen d5, queen d1. I fear it is not. I fear the taking is not doable. Can he check and then queen? He'd be opening up queen d5 again. No, his queen would still be on a8. Queen e6. Ay, ay, ay. If queen well, a8 and queen, he queens, queen takes h2, queen d5, queen d1. Yeah, Friedel, hilarious line, says queen check, king here and make a knight and you don't allow the queen e6 perpetual huh yeah pretty silly yeah. pretty silly um yeah i don't know black could play queen f8 queen f8 h1 queen and the game would go on That's as well there takes. has there been a move no knight c5 oh, yeah. live Two minutes left for Fabi. It's, yeah, it's a difficult game. It's a difficult game. Good Lord. Yeah, I don't think the actual world championship match is going to be as close or as exciting as the candidates tournament was, folks. Don't get your hopes up for anything after this event. <laughs> I don't know, Chess Tickles. I don't know if Queen A8 worked before. It didn't seem to checkmate, at least. I thought this F7 was a really cool idea from Fabi. But now what he's noticing is queen h2, queen d No, he notices a million times more than this. What we're noticing is that there's no queen h2 yet. There's no queening yet. Queen e8 doesn't seem to work. Down to a minute. Wait, but can we go queen a8 and then queen e8? The chances that Nepo wins this game from here with one minute on Fabi's clock, about 2 to 3%. It is possible that white blunder like a checkmate. It is possible, not completely unheard of. When you're this low and you're trying desperately to win, it can happen. You're tired. You've been playing for what? Five and a half hours? Yeah, you want queen a8. Yeah, because don't you go queen e8 after and then promote? Um. Okay, so you're saying king b5, queen e8 check, king back, and you promote stopping queen f1, right? Or he won queen c6, but actually. There's, but there's queen d5, right? So that's why he doesn't go to e8. You see? Queen oh, right, e8, okay, king queen. here, queen. All the queens can't stop this perpetual. Yeah. Yeah, so queen c6, c6 played. And he's got a minute and a half now after a second quick move. Nepo goes here. So if he queens, Nepo takes it. Does he have rook c8 as a move? Queen f7 is check, so no. I mean, he's got nobody defending his king here. What's the follow-up? Wait, if rook c8, what were you saying? Queen f7. That's the check then. Oh, shoot. On the body of your f-pawn that was supposed to win the game. Fabi the f-pawn. Yeah. He could go queen a8 to c6 again, right? To get more time. Is there some maneuver like queen e8, queen e2? Queen e8, and then if we played king a6, queen e2, yeah. And then and then I'm crushed. Wait a minute. And then I was thinking, so queen e8. The last time I did this, right, move? in analysis, and you could do this. Queen a8, king b5's been played. Okay. You have to go b5, right? So you go queen e2. And I have to play b5, really? Ooh. And then I was thinking, can I go rook takes knight? Maybe. I would take here with check, though. Oh, but you're going to take on f7. And queen with check as and well. And then promote. Shucks. Live position, queen c6, king here, rook e7's been played. He's trying to rook cover seven. all the checks. And if black goes like queen c2, 
Yeah, the queen can always come back to c2 or d3, right? Two options. d3 is maybe a little bit better here because you're controlling a couple squares. I don't know. Black almost in Tsugsvang, Oishine saying, <laughs> maybe, again. He was really in Tsugsvang in the middle game. This is crazy that it's still going. Queen d3 is the move I see. Fabi back up almost to two minutes, so he's he's in it, calculating his head off. Would Nepo take a repetition if he had the chance? Maybe. I mean, I'm scared that Fabi's going to like say. even let the king out somehow. Yeah. Right, like you, you commit too heavily with the checks and the king runs out to c4 or something, right? And then you can't handle the h-pawn. It's nice that his pawn's a step away from queening. I mean, you can see these f-pawn moves were brilliant. I mean, I don't know if they're like computer brilliant, but like time scramble human 2800, they're great, right? Yeah. Because every step along the way with the f-pawn, he got a little closer to, to diffusing Black's position. It's huge progress. That pawn was at f3. It's gone a long way. They're just getting 30 seconds of move, Friars, from here on out. That's the increment. 30 seconds of move, no third time control, no extra time at move 80 or 100 or anything. Why does queen f1 not win? For black or for white? For black? You can't see how white stops queening. Well, one thing white can do is they can just give checks. Queen a8, queen c6. Oh, they can't go back to c6 anymore. Okay. Great yeah, like the question. king might be able to run out to c4 in some case. Yeah. So threatening to just queen. Very good question. He's just played it too. Queen f1. Oh my god. Let's see if I can explain it before Fabi explains it. Um, queen c8, king b5, queen e8. Ay, ay, ay. Okay, here's the thing. You're not really threatening h1 because he can just take and make a new queen. So you're not threatening to win. You're asking about winning, right? Like he could just play queen d5, stopping queen c4. And against h1 queen, I mean, he just can't lose, right? He just takes, takes, and queens. But he's playing moves. So let's yeah, see what he's done. Queen a8, queen e8. Queen a8, king b5, queen e8. That kind of commits his queen behind his rook. Um, so how's he stopping queen c4? Maybe he's coming back is, rookie is one. Run out to c4 to reconquer the first rank. No, he went back to a6. Back to a6. I wonder if there was something wrong with c4. So again, the big question is it. rookie one h1 queen takes takes white queens queen c4 check king b1. Queen d3 check, and I think black gives a perpetual again with the queen, despite white having the double queens on the eighth Because yeah, you can't go king c1 because there's knight b3 mate. Friedel asks if he's got rook e4 now. What the heck kind of move is that? It stops queen c4. It, prominently, it hangs the rook to the knight. <laughs> and it yeah, allows I mean... queening. That's also a prominent feature of the move. What does Friedel want to do? Sack the rook on a4, I assume. Like, imagine trying to calculate in this position takes, on one minute of time after takes, having played for five and a half hours. I don't get it, Friedel. Rook e4, h1, queen looks um, solid for black to me. Queen a8, check some combination. Queen a8 and rook b4 is mate. Oh my lord. I didn't even, yeah, I can't even see mate in two. Friedel. But okay. well, what if they just take the rook? Rook e4. If they just take it, he's got a plan. Queen a4, check. And he picks up the knight with check. Okay. And then gets back to doing other things, you know? I don't know. But, you know, he's gotten rid of the a-pawn, so there's not all those perpetuals anymore. Fabi's played a move. Queen a8. One queen a8 again. So that's one... Repetition again here, maybe. Um, that rookie four move from Friedel is literally insane. I mean, that's a move where you don't even expect, you know, Fabi or Magnus or anyone to find it in 30 seconds necessarily. Like, they might notice it, but there's so many lines to calculate to be certain. I don't know. A move like that's risking losing. 
You see how the rookie four move, it it blocks this h1 queen from covering queen a8? That's just disturbing. Disturbing. Queen e8, king a6 played. So here's the position where rookie four may or may not be possible. He's got 30 seconds to play. Does he have other moves? f8, queen, queen c4 is a draw. Rookie one we talked about. And I thought h1 queen was maybe still playable. He's played something. Rookie four! He played it? He played it. I don't oh, know if it smoke. works. Friedel, does it work? Are you just hoping or what? <laughs> no. No possible way. So if knight takes, queen takes. Knight queen takes, he goes queen a4. Queen a4, king b7, queen e4, king a7, queen e7, promote. But then you aren't you still going to have a, a queen end game, two against one? Yeah. And if black just moves the king, let's say, to avoid all Friedel's machinations, he queens and the rook's covering queen c4. Nepo did his classic, like, frown at the move. But you do have queen takes, queen takes, queen, right? And the game goes on in that kind of position. Not yeah, disputed. Josh, I, I is, like Josh is a grandmaster, I know. So he's he's just coming up with stuff on his own. So now Nepo's going to use some of his 12 minutes. Yeah, if Jesse were here, he'd be talking about Fabi's coconuts right now. He'd be making you wonder. He'd be making you wonder why he was so interested. <sighs> okay, folks. So one variation here is like knight takes, queen takes here, queen takes here black still threatening this thing check here oh but if we queen black just goes back to queen c4 so we need to be careful where we put this piece right mm. Mm, i don't have any more checks there okay let me be careful from this position already right now my queen's covering the perpetuals but i can't play f8 yet you want queen a4, queen d7 instead. Okay. Queen a4. I mean, the good thing about rookie four is that it's such an unexpected queen move for seven. Nepo that it buys Bobby some time. And then he goes queen c8. Man, Friedel. And what about king b8, Friedel? Yeah, he took it. They're He's taking the rook. Line. We're going down this kind of a path. So I'm suggesting maybe we go king b8 if we're Nepo. Um, oh, but there's queen d6 and take h2, which is at least that two on one, same thing. Yeah. And we get the same end game. Oh my lord. Do I think either of them wants to draw? I mean, Nepo at this point, since he's got just no pieces with which to win. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. That queen ending on the 30-second increment, yeah, it could be another hour for sure. Uh, Wired Retro asking if two-on-one is a draw, typically... I mean, theoretically speaking, it's a draw. As Paul says, rookie four was the fanciest pawn trade in history. <laughs> yeah, outrageous. So in theory, two versus one is a draw. In practice, um, in practice, this, the better side probably wins reasonably often.
So here's where Fabi's gonna make the queen. Nepo reconciled Fabi's himself to what was going it on. Up with... First, to gain some time. What's that? Said he was just giving some checks. Yeah. Giving some time on the clock. But he hasn't been able to gain much, right? They have to keep score, by the way, folks. They've got the 30 second increment, but they're forced to keep score because of that increment. Um, so it's not that much time when you have to like write down your move, play it physically, hit the clock, and the other person's doing it too. It's it's not that much time. You see, that was a long series of checks, and he's gone from you know one minute fifty up to three minutes seventeen. It's not a ton. Um, and interesting that Jan accepted what was going on with rookie four rather quickly, right? Like after rookie four. He could have thought forever double checking this thing, right? But he convinced himself of all the variations within two minutes and then just went for this and decided to leave some time on his clock for defending the, the queen ending. It's a good practical decision if you can calculate that fast. And this is a surprising starting decision, A4. I mean, he didn't even start by centralizing his queen or giving more checks. That was a weird move by Fabi, A4. Yeah. That was a really weird move. What happened there? I'm sorry, that is, it's mind boggling. First of all, you could give some checks for his clock, right? Check, 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 check. But second of all, you're looking to put your queen on one of these two squares. Right? Stop queen d5 and stuff like that. Or even just f7, get on the diagonal with your king. Wow. He advances the whole thing and there's no perpetual. Yeah, I just... For queen d4, like, I don't know how you're going to make progress as white. But that was so confident by him. He figured that out so fast. I'm just perpetually in awe of everything that these guys do. It's 2 a.m. in France right now. Long game. Long game. We've been up late for the last at least three three rounds in a row while Fabi was winning every single game and Gukesh won one or two long games as well towards the end. Yeah. Yeah, Gukesh had these two long end games against Abbasov and Faruja uh, on two previous rounds at the same time that uh, that Fabi had his two long games against Vidit and Prague that he ground out both of those. This was like two epic rounds in a row that they both won those games. Okay, now he's given some checks. He's got five minutes on the clock. Very, very comfortable amount of time. It is basically impossible now for Nepo to win. I agree with that assessment it looks like we're not going to get trump biden the rematch this time yeah nobody threw anything everybody played hard and well here Queen d7 check russian roulette oh my god <laughs> oh man i mean in a blitz game for sure. Fabi's chances now. Um, I don't know what his chances are now. Maybe, maybe 50-50? I, I sure hope we have a 17-year-old world champ, Paul. Well, actually, he'll turn 18 by the, by the time of the world championship match. But yeah, I sure hope we do. That would be, that would be just a record for, for history. I don't think anyone's ever going to beat that that record. Friedel says less than 20% chance for White to convert this. It's true that if you think, like, with mortals, 
Okay, with mere mortals, I don't play with these kind of guys. For mere mortals, white probably wins like half the time. But it's Nepo playing black. Nepo who has like survived 10 million horrible positions. So I guess, yeah, the odds are going to be pretty small against Nepo maybe. It's so difficult to like make progress with dodging all the checks. It's true that without Magnus being bored playing Nepo, and I mean not playing Nepo, it's the preparing for the match thing that you know he couldn't stomach. If Magnus hadn't gotten tired of doing three months of opening prep before World Championship matches, then there's basically no world in which. Gukesh would have be, been world champion yet this year. It's a good, Mordovic has a good question, David. Is table base allowed in chat? <laughs> no. <laughs> well, I think we know that table base would say it's a draw. So, I mean, I think that basically known. But but what's the point in, in leaning on other resources? We're trying to just be on our own here. VJ, you think one day somebody will become world champion younger than 17? No way. I think that record will stand forever. Forever. You can come back in 200 years and argue with me about whether I was right. But I think if he becomes world champion... I mean, he'd be 18. I could imagine it's an outside possibility for somebody to match that. Yeah, I could imagine a world champion at 18, but... <laughs> live board? Is this not live? No record stands forever. Sure, they do. Some records stand forever. All right, Agostia has got a good question. If you trade queens, is the king upon ending winning? I mean, if it wasn't, then Bobby probably wouldn't be playing anymore. Hmm. I'm not. Compl I'm not instantly certain. But it should be an answerable question. I mean, Bobby's certainly hoping it is, but Nebo doesn't ever have to go for it. He definitely does not have to. Yeah. I think Gukesh's parents are, are reasonably, are moderately chill. Yeah, so Friedel echoing what I was sort of suspecting, which is I, sus I was starting to suspect it was a draw as I was calculating it, but it's impractical for Nepo to calculate it, right? So as Friedel says, he's just not even gonna calculate it because he knows the queen ending is a draw and that king and pawn ending to calculate it with complete certainty, you, you know, I would need, I don't know, five minutes. Nepo might need one minute or two minutes if he's double, I don't know. He's double checking or whatever. It's just like not a good use of his time. Like the only time he would definitely trade would be if it results in a position where white king is on c4, black king is on c6, and he can play b5 check. Mm -hmm. Yeah, something that he can calculate in 10 seconds or, or, or so, he'll definitely go for. If it's something he can calculate in less than a minute, he might stop and check and spend the time, but he doesn't want to invest too much. Karyakin played for a world championship at 19. He wasn't 19 when he played his match with Magnus. Him and Magnus are like the same age. Yeah. Bobby's got lots of time on the clock, but so does Jan, which is the bad news. I mean, as white, you kind of need black to slip up at some point. So you don't want black playing 
at a medium speed where they're just keeping time on the clock, but also Oh checking. boy, he's trying to bring the king now. Operation, get the king to a6. Yeah, bringing the king is a good idea. Got to try, but against queen c6, you can't yeah. sack the a pawn, can you? No shot. So you just have to go back. Queen e5 was the choice, though. Oh, this is painful to watch. I guess it's hard for him to really go all the way with the king because both pawns are undefended, right? There's always going to be queen checks that attack both. Queen d6, what do you do? Hikaru was out the moment his game with Gukesh was drawn. Yeah. Yeah, how many moves have they been playing this end game? B4 was the last move towards the 50 move rule. That was 10 moves ago. It's way too early to start thinking about the 50 move rule. But this check's going to force the king back in. I'm a bit tired, Jose. It also it like wears over time, you know? Because for me, I'm doing these broadcasts until 2, 3 a.m. And then, then I eat dinner, clean the kitchen, go to bed at 3.30 or 4 a.m., my kids get me up at like 6 a.m., 6.30, 7 if I'm lucky. Jeez, David, you're a trooper. <laughs> so, so it's really fun, but you do gradually get tired. And we just crossed the 100 move mark. Yeah, he's pushed the white king back to defend its pawns. And Fabi is going to rearrange the queen again to maybe cover the pawns and allow the king to try and come out a second time. Uh, Lumbra, yeah, that's cool. I think maybe if you whisper it to me or discord it to me, then I can share the link. Um, oh, thanks, Jason. That's really sweet. <laughs> In other news, the Maryland tournament has finished. I can report that Jesse at least won his last round. Yes. How do you how do you catch that? How do you know? They have their uh, live standings updated. Okay. All right, so here's a link from Lumbra to a thread with information about the youngest candidates and all that from the past. So good job to Jesse winning the last round there. He was able to win it faster than, than Fabi and Nepo could finish their 100-move queen ending. So maybe he could still come come join us before the tournament's over. <laughs> yeah, who knows? He's not completely exhausted. It's totally crazy. Totally crazy. But my friend who is 2,200 feet, I actually won ahead of four GMs. So that's pretty good. At this Maryland tournament just now? Yeah. Dang. That's a huge result to finish ahead of GMs. Yeah. And win a tournament. Oh, that's what it's all about. Is this somebody that you practice with or train with? Uh, a little bit. I mean, I've played him a couple times over the board mm -hmm. and just like roomed at a few tournaments. Nice. That's awesome. Not for the four washed up grandmasters, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah Fabi's been playing super long games everybody we have to be very aware of how long he's been playing I'm just kidding they're GMs they're bosses they're always good forever
just so unfortunate because neither guy is going to be happy after. Like, a draw isn't good for either of them, so they're both just going to be miserable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I could see Nepo getting some kind of uh, <laughs> satisfaction out of surviving another yeah, dead game. Yeah, but he'll also be exhausted and yeah. know that he didn't win the candidates. Right. Yeah. We don't have adjournments anymore in chess, no matter how long the games go, because people can go home and check with their computers now. It's just impossible to to police, I guess, or whatever, to for everyone to have faith and confidence. So adjournments are gone. And the rule, Isaac, would be a 50 moves without a capture or a pawn move would be a way the game could eventually end in a draw. But even right now, I think they've only made like 16 moves since uh, White played B4, so it's it's a long way off. Queen D4 allows this A5 move against the B6 pawn. I thought that he was going to, you know, move his king to A7 or something. But uh, I'm sure he's calculated with great confidence that Queen C3 leads to a perpetual here. There's just nowhere for this king to get out. So no A5 right now. King B3 played. Um, can he check the king? Check the king. King goes to C3. Check the king. Here, the queen can block, and then just head back. That's one option, yeah. I'm not seeing any really good ideas for white to threaten or torment black, despite my claim that white might have good practical chances. I haven't actually found them. Yeah, I mean, as soon as you move your queen in, like Fabi just did, I mean, there's going to be a million checks coming your way. Sorry, did I miss another good question from DJ? If Ding doesn't play, will Nepo, Hikaru, and Fabi have a playoff? I don't know what Fide will do in some future scenario if, if Ding doesn't show up for the World Championship match. If, if they'll go back and... Now king a7. So how many moves has it been since the last pawn move? You played b4 on move 18. 89. Yeah. 18 moves. I got my IM title, I think, when I was about 24. Are you still playing OTB a bit over there in France? I, I heard you were playing some league games, David. Yeah, I'm actually playing more here than I was playing in the U.S. Um, I play, like, in the U.S., since I had my first kid at a, you know, over a period of nine years, I played maybe three or four tournaments. And they were mm -hmm. little local weekend tournaments, mostly, you know, with mm -hmm. no, no high-rated players. And then mm -hmm. one time it was the National Open, but... I could right. only find babysitting coverage to show up like three rounds late, like in round four. Uh, okay. So I played, you know, two thirds of a national open and a couple little local uh -huh. things. But here I played a full 10 day, uh, 10 round uh, tournament as well. Game uh -huh. has ended in a draw here. Um,. And I've also played the league. So I've played like 15 tournament games here. Uh, and I'm going to play one more tournament before I go. So it's it's a lot for me. Um, my condolences to any and all disappointed fans. I know that today the fans of Fabi, Jan, and Hikaru all had hopes uh, for their 
favorite or one of their favorite players to go to the world championship match. And we knew that the tournament was so close that, you know, three people's hearts would only be broken on the final day. So I'm sorry to all of you. I'm going to contain all my joy for later. There will be no gloating on stream. Um, I, I'm i sorry. I know it's heartbreaking. It's really, it's really tough. And the tournament was so exciting. With the excitement building, we get more and more invested in what we want. And the, the players we're fans of. So we can say this at least. All these players played really, really well. You know, and that's how chess should be. You know, we can't all win. It's unreasonable to demand and hope that we all win every game, every tournament, or that the players we are fans of win every game and every tournament. But we can hope that, you know, they play well within their capabilities and that they can feel, you know, satisfied and proud of how they've played. And I think that that's the case for basically everybody at this tournament the overall level i think was higher than the average rating of the tournament i think the players really came in fantastic form uh it was just really really great yeah yeah what an exhausting event but yeah a lot of excitement all right, we're going to update our standings one last time. Sure. So we get Nepo, 8.5. I mean, our, our production folks, you know, everything's being done by us, by hand, on stream as we do it. So it's never going to be so fancy. Um, but there you have, we've got some version of standings and our human evaluation bar, which now has results filled in as the games end. And uh, last move of the tournament, 109. Move 109. King to B3, played by Fabi. He had a great run, folks. He was a little slow to warm up. I do think he's the best player in the world after Magnus. Uh, if they were to start the tournament again next week, I would predict him to win it again um but again it's by percentages you know a couple percent ahead of the next favorite and the next favorite because they're all really they're all really good you know and he found his form in the second half for sure the form that that is basically second best in the world and uh if you if you just look at his game against Vidit from two days ago oh my god what a game i've got it saved in my browser here, you know, to be able to look at it more. Fabi versus Vidit. Incredible game. Incredible game. So, um, you know, I don't I don't think Fabi fans should be like sad, sad or anything like that. It was a great, great event for him. Yeah, thanks everybody also for analyzing. As you are thanking us at the dojo we we thank we thank you um you know especially like our guests like max here and um you know eugene and our tours and jesse february and alex lenderman and everybody who came in and joined us and then in the chat as well um great suggestions from from grandmasters and beginners alike thanks to those of you asking questions where you were afraid like, oh, this may be a silly question, but what about this? I guarantee you that every one of those questions you asked when we answered it, there were other people who were grateful that you had asked those questions. So um, well done to all of you on that. And um, maybe one of the last things that Kosti or Jesse would want me to say is today is probably the last day to get the candidates discount on the Chess Dojo training program. Let me see if I can trigger that message here. 20% off and today would be the last day for it, I think. So I'm gonna try and send that message to YouTube as well. Um, don't worry, I'm not gonna do a whole infomercial or anything like that. You guys are all free to do whatever you want, but it's a cool thing, our training program. 
And uh, anyway, there it is. Um, yeah, I think I sent you the code just now. No, did I not? I tried to. Maybe I didn't. There is a code. It's probably something like candidates. Coasted, do you I think you're lurking. Do you want to tell them the code? Yeah, it's candidates. Just candidates. I got it. It's candidates. That's the code. Um All right. So, now we send a raid somewhere where you can watch maybe an interview of Fabio or Nepo, right? Like um Yeah, maybe the feed HS channel. Maybe the feed HS channel. Okay, we'll try rating them. Feed A underscore chess. Thanks for the raid. <laughs> We're rating too. <laughs> so let's all do it together. Let's go over to feed HS and that's the official channel. They should they should have an interview with with Fabi and or Nepo or somebody. Should be cool. Um, and here at the dojo, we'll be back to normal dojo stuff. You know, training ourselves in the coming days. Jesse, Kosti, and I trying to get better ourselves. So yeah, take care, everybody. Be well. Be happy. All right.